living separate lives. They're not technically divorced, but they've been living separately since 2016. So this morning, we turn our attention to that Oscar slap heard around the world. On Oscar night 2022, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock after Chris made a crack about Jada's hair. I could tell it bothered you. You, you did an eye roll. Like. Right. Yeah, and I did that eye roll not so much for me. And I think this is really important, but the fact that there could be a jab at alopecia. Will then went on a profane tirade warning Chris not to mention his wife's name. Jada couldn't believe what she was hearing. What is going on? Now, first of all, I'm really shocked because, mind you, I'm not there. We haven't called each other husband and wife yeah. in a long time. But I'm like, what is going on I right keep now? keep my wife's, wife's name. name out of your yes. mouth, yes. right? And I'm yes. like, but now I'm really worried for Will because I don't know what's going mm-hmm. on. What viewers did not see at the time while Oscar clips were being shown was Chris Rock leaning over the stage to talk to Jada. And Chris looks to me and he says, Jada, I meant you, I meant no harm. Now, I, I'm just out of it because i yeah. really worried about and Will. what's Will doing? He's just sitting there? And Will's still talking. He's like, oh. he's still, because now he's mad because Chris is talking to me. And I go, Chris, this is about some old sh-. That's all I could think to say, yeah. right? And I couldn't really take in his apology. How unusual for Will, a guy who, I mean, on that kind of stage to do something so insane. Absolutely. It's totally it's out of not character. not him whatsoever. And to Jada's surprise, she was also blamed. You became the bad guy. Look yeah. what Jada made him do. Jada rolled her eyes and look what he did. He ran up there and hit Chris. Yeah. Poor Will. That's what the narrative became. Yeah. She says that's because two years earlier, Jada discussed what she called an entanglement on her show, Red Table Talk. My honest opinion about that is that narrative had more to do with the false narrative that I helped to create on the red table. So poor Will because of, of the... The adulterous in- wife. Yeah. Who forced him to go to the table and sit there, you know what I mean? And now look at what she's done. She has the power with an eye roll to make him go up and slap somebody on stage. Hmm. So that was from her point of view, and she says that there was bad blood between Chris Rock and uh, Will from before. But she said she actually thought it was like a bit because she said she watched them storm up and Will had been up and down throughout the Oscars. And then, um, you know, no one asked them to leave. No one said you've got to I feel like I don't understand it at all. Uh I still don't. They had been together for seven years Uh at that point. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Or whatever, six, yeah. five, six, seven years. And then she, she's shocked because he's like, don't well, talk about my wife that way. And she's like... Well, because she was... Yeah. Well, he invited her because he thought this was his crowning moment sure. in Hollywood. And he wanted her there, even though they weren't together. Yeah, she, she was, was a part one. of his rise. Yeah. So okay. she, and then for him to say, my wife, I think that surprised her. And then it was a ripple effect. But and none of it, that matters when it triggers violence. I mean, yeah. at yeah. the end of the day, of like, Will hit Chris. That's, yeah. That's yeah. And I think she, she sort of felt like she was the heavy. If you watch Will's acceptance speech, he says... It, you know, as he's crying, he says the things we do for love, as, right. as as if that's well, what that's he was doing. That's why he's protecting her. It yeah. kind of puts right. it on her. Yeah, it kind of did. To this what? day, I still thought when it first started, like she said, I thought it was a bit. We all yeah. did. I thought, yeah. okay, yeah. he's coming said, up oh, to guys, classic. Wolf people were Luke. texting me, and I'm like, oh no, this yeah, is, it's all. She'll yeah. add a lot more context okay. to this conversation well. tonight. Okay. Um, there's a lot, a lot of the details. This was kind of like just a little tease, but there's a lot more coming up in our Jada story. That's tonight at eight seven central, right here on NBC. And Jada will actually be here. Live on Monday morning ahead of the release of her memoir, Worthy. I know what I'm doing tonight. Yeah, I know. I love the way you talk to her because it's exactly yeah. like a- yeah. anybody yeah. would. You yeah. just are, you have yeah. like no notes. Yeah. You just yeah. like, I have so many questions. I know. It's just too so back and forth. It's, it's yeah. really just a matter of like, just help us understand. Right. You know, right. yeah, I know it's going to yeah. be a fascinating mm-hmm. interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're the perfect person to have that yep. conversation.
time for a Friday pop star. Okay. We're going to start with some uh, some sad news in the music world. Rudolph Isley, the world remembering the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, passed away at the age of 84. Of course, the iconic musician was known as the founding member, one of them of the beloved Isley Brothers, topping charts with hits like This Old Heart of Mine, Shout, of course, and It's Your Thing. Rudolph did leave the group back in 1989. That was three years after the sudden death of O'Kelly Isley to become a Christian minister in a statement on social media, his brother Ronald writing, Heaven has gained another angel. Our hearts are heavy as we announce the passing of our beloved brother, Rudolph Isley. We will miss our brother, but we know he's in a better place. You know they had music six decades? Yes. Wow. Oh, yes. They had a charted song on Billboard for six decades. That's right. And almost every artist has talked about how the Isley yes. brothers impacted mm-hmm. them from the British invasion on. Right. Incredible. Next up is Suits. Over the summer, the legal drama drama became a major streaming success after it dropped on Netflix. The show that premiered back in 2011 has spent a whopping 11 weeks in the streamers top 10 in the last few months and now it just might be coming back in a brand new show. Yesterday, Deadline reporting that the series creator Aaron Korsh is in talks to develop a Suits offshoot for our parent company, NBC Universal. And I'm not going to use the word reboot because it's looking like that's not really the case. The source reporting this new project said it would live, the, the Suits would be like a universe, sort of like what they do with CSI. The suits universe. The Suits universe, <laughs> where shows exist apart from each other. Suit. Of Business course, casual. This is the show that made Meghan Markle a household name before she ever became royal. No word on casting uh, yet or when we're going to see it. It's going to be leisure suits. <laughs> leisure suits, right. Pants suits. Track suits. Uh, next up, Good Burger 2, Uncle Al. We got a pop star exclusive sneak peek at the official trailer for Keenan and Kel's upcoming sequel before Paramount Plus releases it at uh, the New York Comic Con on Sunday. And nearly three decades later, it looks like the guys still got it. Are you using a plunger to unclog the shake machine as in the same plunger we used to unclog the toilet? Uh, no. We're going to be opening mega good burgers in cities all over the world. Whoa. Megacorp wants to replace everybody with robots. We gotta do something. Here's your burger. That's not soap, by the way. It's maple syrup. Why? (laughs) (laughs) And we know somebody who's been up close and personal with the Good Burger guys. Uncle Al, you over the summer were on the set. That's right. I I had a great time driving the burger mobile. Is there a cameo? Uh, There is is a bit of a cameo. Oh, wow. uh, Al. Yeah, it was fun. It was a, they, they, I mean, it's like these guys have not missed a beat. And they've got right. age. Remember when you were in Sharknado? That was good, too. <laughs> yeah, and the Simpsons. He's an icon. Al, you're an icon. icon. Seinfeld. Yeah. That's right. Good icon. Burger Simpsons. 2 premieres Wednesday, November 22nd on Paramount+. Plus. Have you seen the trailer for Wonka? No. No. Oh, my gosh. The new trailer for the musical. This is a prequel to the beloved character. Timothy Chalamet is channeling his best younger Gene Wilder for the Willy Wonka movie, which is set to explore how Willy broke into the candy business in the beginning. It's so interesting and how he discovered the Oompa Loompas and all of that, played by Hugh Grant. Take a look. Get out. Good night, sir. You should stand up to those bullies. Give them the old one, two. I got an idea. Where do we start? Making chocolate, of course. Every good thing in this world started with a dream. So you hold on to yours. I mean, it looks really good. Oh, yeah. It looks like this epic yeah. beginning. Yeah. I mean, I love oh, the yeah. G Wilder Willy too. Wonka. Ugh. Um, and, and Johnny Depp, I thought, did a good yeah. I like that movie. Although but. that original with Gene Wilder was a little dark. Yeah, yeah. there are. <laughs> yes, definitely. The Ooh. tunnel scene with the mm-hmm. chicken and all kinds of stuff. And that kid blowing kid. up. I yeah, mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Those kids did well, not do well. And the chocolate river? Well, yeah, you, you can't drink the chocolate river. No, I'm yeah. telling you. What's going on? Wonka <laughs> hits no. theaters December 15th. Well, you and I should go see that one together. <laughs> right, yes. Finally, Jack Antonoff, the musician and record producer, is latest to sit down with uh, our buddy Willie Geist for Sunday today. Jack's currently working on his fourth studio album for his band Bleachers. That's slated to be out early next year. Their single, Modern Girl, just came out a few weeks ago. And then during the chat with Willie, the Jersey-born Grammy winner, known for producing music with Taylor Swift, revealed why the two work so well together. So why do you think you and Taylor work so well together? What's the magic there? Um, she vacationed on the Jersey Shore, I think, when she was a kid. So that's, so there's a sense of, no, I'm kidding. That's forever. Uh, I don't know. 
I could quantify our relationship in very reductive ways about the things we agree on, the sounds we like, but the truth is we've just grown together. And Jack and Taylor are certainly a perfect pair. They've won multiple Grammys together for 1989 and Folklore. More on Jack's conversations. You can tune in this weekend, Sunday today, with a Willie Guys. All right, Carson, All right. thank nice. you. Let's move to one of our favorite parts of Friday morning. Friday morning lights. Yes, they do it. are ready, guys. We've already featured amazing schools in Illinois, Texas, and North Carolina today. Let's go to Kokomo High in Indiana. All right. It is senior night. Coach Austin Colby standing by with Dominic Miranda from 13 News. Hey, guys, good morning. Morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to America's Heartland, the great state of Indiana. We're here at Kokomo High School, and we are so happy to have you join us for Operation Football. You can probably see me from New York. Operation Football, 30 years, and we're here highlighting Kokomo High School, the fifth-ranked team in classification 4A here in Indiana. Coach Austin Colby, the handsome man right beside me. Coach, I want you to tell America about Indiana high school football, Kokomo high school football. Your dad coached here for yep. over a decade, and now you're here 38 and 10 in just four years at the helm. I'm no mathematician, 75% win percentage. Coach, tell America about Indiana high school football. Yeah, Why it's so special? Absolutely. Indiana high school football has been great. Um, Jim Irsay has done a great job the last few years and, and really helping to grow the sport here in Indiana. It's known as a basketball state, but uh, Indiana high school football is one of the best in the nation. Kokomo in, in general is, is just a huge family atmosphere. I get my dad and my brother to coach with me every Friday night, so uh, it's a lot of fun. I know these guys feel a part of the family, and that's what we wanted about. Build that brotherhood, build that teamliness, and uh, uh, that's when the success comes. So. Yeah, absolutely. Coach, you had a great year last year. Final four in the state of Indiana. You want more this year, right? You're 7-1, and one, ranked fifth in Class 4A. What's special about this team? 16 seniors yeah. on this team, and it's senior night. How about it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, they, they, these guys are so special. They've, they're my first class I've seen all the way through. Uh, they met the standards that we put on them. There's no doubt that they uh, deserve everything that they've had given at them, and, and uh, they're so, so uh, such a special group. I'm, I'm just proud to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, thank you for having us here. We're going to take cats, you out Eddie. with the Kokomo Cats. High School Let's marching band. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see it. Friday night. There, Coco stands up. Coming up, we're going to tailgate, have some food. Oh, yeah. All right. Ooh.
Heroes Among Us is sponsored by the Progressive Keys to Progress program, celebrating 1,000 vehicles gifted to veterans in need. We are back now. It is 743 with more of our ongoing series, Heroes Among Us. And this morning, we're spotlighting a remarkable veteran who served in the Army for nearly a decade. Since leaving active duty, he has faced serious challenges, and he's sharing his story now because he wants to help others. And Chanel, you've been talking about this one ever since you got back yeah. from this Nashville. Was, this was a good one. I met up with Ricky Andrews at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. It's a venue that works with Create Events, a nonprofit that helps veterans struggling with PTSD and other mental health issues. It started out as a job for Ricky, but then became his own place of healing. We wanted to honor his service and dedication to his work. So we asked his five-year-old goddaughter, Poppy, to help us with a big surprise. At 40 years old, Ricky Andrews has lived a lifetime. Growing up in Longview, Texas, he had big dreams of playing pro baseball. But in college, the first baseman injured his shoulder and life took him down a different path. In 2007, he joined the U.S. Air Force, deploying to Afghanistan and Kurdistan. You've probably seen things that the rest of us can't even imagine. What was, I'd say, maybe the most rewarding part of it and what was the most challenging or the scariest? We did a lot of uh, humanitarian type stuff, um, so that was probably one of the best rewarding uh, aspects of it. But what were some of the harder times? I was a military cop, so um, if you can kind of take that mindset of what um, police officers and first responders deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, multiply that by, you know, 10 times. Those memories would stay with Ricky. He left active duty after serving eight years. As he was ending his final deployment and returning home, he faced what he couldn't have imagined. One of the hardest times was my last deployment coming back home. My dad passed away. Ricky never got to say goodbye. The last memory that I have was the memory before I even left. Ricky mourned his father, even as he turned to civilian life. He says he had a hard time adjusting. He moved to Nashville, eventually taking a job as an outreach coordinator with a nonprofit called Creative Vets, an organization that works to heal veterans with service-related trauma through art, including creative writing, visual arts, and songwriting. What we do for the songwriting, for the music program that we have, is so we'll actually fly the veterans out to Nashville. They get to go backstage at the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. Um, they get to write with two hit songwriters and a veteran mentor that's already been through the program, so they're not alone. Four months later, Ricky faced his own darkest day. I actually had a suicide attempt. I had everything planned out. I had the letter written, had the pills lined up, and had everything ready to go. I have some friends of mine that play down, down on Broadway every weekend. So I went to go hear them. That night, they, they opened up with the national anthem. So it was something that reached out and grabbed me. And then I have a five-year-old goddaughter of mine that is basically like my biological daughter. And the week after this would have been her fifth birthday. After that, I was like, this doesn't need to happen. Just weeks later, he signed up to take a songwriting program at Creative Vets. That four hours was better than any other therapy session that I've been through in the eight years that I've been out of the military. Super, super therapeutic. And his goddaughter, Poppy, who calls him dad, helped open his eyes in a new way. I was supposed to take her to the park one day, um, and I was just not feeling like it. And she looked at me and she said, Dad, a promise is a promise. And I was like, man, um, that really hit. Because um, when I, on my last deployment, when I was, uh, before I left, my dad always told me, say, hey, you come back. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, a promise is a promise. Their conversation inspired Ricky's song. Dad, I'm worth it. Yeah, life has torn you down, but I need you to stick around. We got so much to do. Dad, I heard it when you told me that you love me and love don't choose to leave, then leave somebody you miss. Dad, I promise is a promise. Oh so my goodness. there's a little clip it that I had her mom send me. A promise is a promise. So every morning I always listen to it. It gets me through the day. Just a few months ago, Ricky's car was stolen. He serves as a caretaker for his mother and has been using her car to get to work with the veterans. But on this morning, we had a little surprise for oh, him. Okay. Hang on a second. I'm gonna tell you something. A lot of people care about you. A lot of people care about you. Oh, so Poppy wants to give you 
the keys to this car. Wait, what? Yeah. Uh, so here's the deal. Yeah. Our sponsor, Progressive, is part of their Keys to Progress program. Uh, they support veterans like yourself. And I can't think of a more deserving person to get this new car. Oh my God. All thank the best. Thank you. Can you say thank you? That was the best. You want to take a look at your new car, my yeah. friend? Yeah. Let's go look. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, look. How do you feel? Shocked. Like 110%. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to this one right here. She gets me through every day. So, <laughs> dude. I mean, I love that story. Uh, he was such, he's such uh, a deserving man. He's such a good guy, good father, you know, son to his, uh, his mother. And I said, you know, I heard your car was sold. And he's like, yeah. And he said, yeah, I'm going to try to get one, you know, yeah. one paycheck at a time. I'm, I'm going to try. And in my head, I'm sitting there thinking, oh. Oh, you know, let me not mess this up the surprise. So. Wow. God bless you, Ricky. Oh, in I'm that moment. I got a shout out to Richard Casper, my buddy, who started that program, Creative Vets in Nashville. Uh, wow. Form, he's a former Marine. Mm. Yeah, he served in Iraq uh, and started that program of bringing songwriters together with creative it's people amazing. as an outlet for their help. Wow. It is. Well, he said it's better than any therapy any he ever therapy, has. The way music and art yeah. can heal yeah. a soul the way that sometimes words can't. Yes. Yeah, you know? great, job. great story. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank Guys, you. coming up, we're ready to eat now that we feel yes. so good. Yay yeah. yeah, yeah, is here, especially football feast for Sunday night's big clash between the Giants and Bills. We got hot dogs. Yeah. We got hot dog jokes from Uncle Al. Oh, we got yeah. hot dishes. We got tater tots. Oh, got the whole thing. But first, this is today on NBC. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're back with today. Food loves football and the perfect spread for Sunday night's big game. It's a New York battle. The Bills taking on the Giants. For menu ideas, we turn to turn to one of our absolute favorite chefs, Molly Ye. She's in town for the Food Network and Cooking Channel New York City Wine and Food Festival. That sounds delicious. It's so delicious. It's so much fun. And they do really incredible work for a great organization called In God's Love We Deliver. Beautiful. Which delivers meals to people living with sickness. So it's a really wow. wonderful time. And great food, great wine for a great cause. For There's sure. nothing yeah, better than 100%. that. 100%. All right, so let's get into it. We got a New York battle. Let's start with the Giants. What do you got okay, here? Okay, we are making my pretzel holla bagel dogs. Okay. Oh. What's that? Holla. Holla. And we're going to start with the dough. So this is my super basic holla dough. Really easy. I've got all the dry ingredients in the stand okay. mixer. Flour, sugar, salt, and instant yeast, which I love because you don't have to proof it like active yeast in yep. a separate bowl. Pour in the wet ingredients, just water, eggs, and oil so the dough is super nice and this moist. This looks intimidating, but that you're making gets, it sound like it's pretty easy. It's so easy, okay. and with the sugar and the oil and the eggs in it, it's Cheers. just so moist and delicious. It's gotcha. hard to screw up. A great first yeast of dough. That gets kneaded for yep. 7 to 10 minutes. It rises. You can also rise it overnight. And now this is the fun part. Do you want to yeah, shave let's do some it. with me? Okay. Absolutely. So we've got the hot dogs and the dough here and you just wrap it around kind of like a mummy okay so you can use these for Halloween in a couple of how weeks much is, is this like working with puff pastry is it gonna like rise about the same amount or um it, it actually rises a little bit more than puff pastry okay. so these are really nice you can shape these the night before and yeah because when you know and you right cover now, the whole dog Molly? You, you cover the whole dog you want to huh? get a nice tight wrap and lock in that 
hot dog so it doesn't fall out. Huh? So now Perfect. those Good rice. Carson. Nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. Challah. Okay. Now, uh, so we've got the challah. <laughs> what makes it into a pretzel yeah. is they take a little dunk in a baking soda bath. Yep. This is one cup of baking soda that yep. I've baked for an hour at 250 degrees and that intensifies the baking soda so you get more pretzel flavor. Mm. So delicious. These just go right in for a couple of minutes. And then once you get them fully coated, you can pat them off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you got the hala, you got the pretzel, and now we're going to add the bagel God, elements. That's like therapy, that's wrapping that dog like that. So that is so fun. <laughs> I'll tell you, the number one reason why I watch football is so that I can have an excuse to make these. Oh, my gosh, Ooh. yes. <laughs> or to make anything like this that yeah. we're not supposed to be eating every day. It's so fun. Okay. All right, so a little egg wash here at the end. Egg wash makes it shiny. It's also a little the glue everything seasoning. that holds on the everything, everything seasoning. bagel seasoning. Do a lot Love of it because it's so good. Okay, are you yeah. ketchup or mustard? Um, I'm more ketchup than mustard. Really? Me yeah. Too. Interesting. I love that. That. There we okay. go. Touchdown. Okay. Touchdown. Done. Good breakfast. How was it? Uh, how was it? Delicious. Right, right? Of course. Okay. Now we're in Buffalo. Now we're in Buffalo. Which you say is the gateway to the Midwest. I'm not sure if that's true. But it, that's is true. true. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Absolutely true. Okay. We're making my buffalo chicken hot dish, which oh is gosh. all of the elements of a buffalo wing, but oh, in casserole oh form. Gosh. And no so bones. A hot no dish. Bones, no bones frying. You can oh my, eat it with a spoon. It's so good. No, talk slow. We're starting <laughs> with the requisite. Obviously, you have to have a carrot stick and a celery stick mm -hmm. when you're having a wing, right? So, so that's chopped up. That's oh, softening in here. Celery in there. It's healthy. Oh, with yeah. an onion, garlic, obviously some oh. butter. And I like this, it all comes together in one dish. Do you want to sprinkle in the flour there? So all the flour it. will combine with the butter to create a roux. Okay. And you want to cook that off for just a couple of minutes to eliminate that flour flavor. Pour in the milk, let that thicken, and now you've got the base for This your is important. This is the base of the whole sauce. thing right this here. This is the base of the whole thing. And now we've got three cheese. <coughs> Excuse me. So cream cheese. Yep. That tang and that oh, creaminess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta pile it in. I'll hand them to you. Mm -hmm. Blue cheese, obviously. Like we're doing surgery you here. <laughs> Doctor? Cheddar. Sharp cheddar. <laughs> cheddar for meltiness. And Weezers. chicken. Chicken. Paddles. <laughs> oh, my number one. Oh, and you're forgetting the most important part. It's, uh, the buffalo sauce. The buffalo, the, yeah. The hot oh, sauce. the hot sauce, yeah. Not too spicy, but it has Stir that it. vinegar flavor. Okay, And then we're dipping it, it using tater tots and as the dip. And then you cover it with tater tots. That's oh. Sunday's the food festival in the New York area for a great cause. Be sure and check it out. You're going to be great at it. Today.com slash food. You want these recipes. Don't forget the battle. Bill's Giants yeah. Sunday night. NBC and Peacock starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. Molly, thank you. You're the best. Thanks, Carson. Thank uh, you. All right. We'll see you. But a quick check. Your local news and weather first. This morning on the third hour of today, dire warning. Israel telling one million people in northern Gaza to leave their homes immediately as the country prepares to ramp up its war with Hamas. We're live in the region. Plus, Taylor's time. Another big week for Taylor Swift. She is here, everybody. Spotted cheering on the Kansas City Chiefs again after launching her Errors Tour movie that's set to be a record breaker. Then later, an early gift in our Consumer Confidential, a preview of the holiday travel season and why the time to buy is approaching fast. And then in She Made It, a company rooted in Latin American culture. It's a way for me to embrace my natural beauty. Meet the entrepreneur mom trying to change your hair care routine. Today, Friday, October 13th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today for a Friday morning. I'm Al, along with Chanel and Dylan. Craig has the, the day off, and unfortunately, the tensions are just ratcheting up right. in the Middle East. Overnight, Israel dropping leaflets over northern Gaza, telling more than uh. one million people, get out, head south, by midnight tonight. The United Nations saying that's impossible. This all coming as Israel's tanks and troops are amassing at the northern border with Gaza. Meantime, there are growing concerns over the fate of the hostages taken by Hamas. Hamas is now claiming that 13 of them died in Israeli airstrikes. NBC News has not verified that claim. 14 Americans, as of this hour, are still unaccounted for in Israel. This story is obviously changing rapidly. And once again, we have NBC's Kelly Kobier live in Israel. She's made her way now to Jerusalem. Kelly, good morning. Tell us more about this order to evacuate. 
Yeah, good morning to you. The United Nations is warning of, of catastrophic uh, humanitarian consequences if all of these people are forced to move uh, by midnight tonight. 1.1 million people in the north of Gaza. Uh, people are frantically packing up. They're trying to get out, trying to get south uh, after those leaflets were dropped on the population of Gaza, urging people to leave. But here's the problem. Fuel is in short supply because of that blockade, which has been in place for the past six days, and there aren't enough taxis to carry all of the people of Gaza down to the south. What's more, the largest hospital in Gaza is in Gaza City in the north. Doctors say there are patients on life support there, there are babies in incubators, and it's simply impossible to move them all within that time frame. But the Israeli Defense Forces are saying this evacuation must be carried out as soon as possible for civilians safety guys so so kelly the former head of hamas has called for a global day of rage today so obviously that's got people on edge how, how are folks preparing for that yeah, that's right. And that's globally as well. So security has been stepped up across uh, cities and countries around the world. Uh, Jewish communities and Israeli communities being told to be extra vigilant today. Here in uh, Jerusalem, security has been massively ramped up. Some 2,500 security officers on the streets today. Of course, Friday prayers are always a potential flashpoint. So today, uh, worshipers who are younger than 50 were told to stay away. Actually, uh, men younger than 50 were banned from praying in the old city at Al-Aqsa Mosque. And uh, there's a very tight cordon and presence around this city. There were, were some sk uh, skirmishes, but nothing uh, widespread, all in all relatively quiet. Uh, there was an incident in Beijing earlier today. The Israeli foreign ministry saying that one of their embassy staff was stabbed. He's now in the hospital. But guys, this is a, a warning. And uh, that goes out uh, to people around the world. Yeah, Kelly Cobiella, thank you so much. I mean, it, uh, just in my neighborhood, I've seen an in increased police presence Absolutely. around a couple of the synagogues. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and this is obviously multiplied all across the country and around the world. Mm. Mm. Oh, well. Of course, you can stay with NBC News for continuing coverage of this conflict. We want to take a little bit of a turn. I think, yeah. Chanel, you have a story that we all really needed this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. You got to surprise a deserving veteran. And deserving he was. Let me tell you, you know, we travel a lot for this business, right? And sometimes I'll read my notes, I sit down, we do the interviews, and they're mm -hmm. fine. For a, another person to make me cry when mm -hmm. I'm doing the interviewing, it lets you know. I mean, he was... I was so honored to talk with Ricky Andrews. He's an Air Force vet who's now an outreach coordinator with the nonprofit. It's called Creative Vets. They help veterans heal through art, including songwriting. And on top of all of that, he's also a caretaker for his mother. So a few months ago, someone stole his car. So with help from his goddaughter, Poppy, and our sponsor, Progressive, we surprised him. He did not see it coming with a brand new car. <laughs> little Poppy had the keys in her cute little pocket. <laughs> so she pulls out the keys. He's like, yeah, yeah. And, like, and he's like, wait, what? He saw the car and still didn't connect. Oh, this is yours, my friend. So this uh, is all part of Progressive's Keys to the uh, to Progress program. And he has changed so many lives of others. And he's even talked about how this program has helped him heal through songwriting. Uh, listen, I think it goes without saying he's seen a lot of lows mm -hmm. yeah. um, fighting overseas. And so it was so wonderful to be able to to support him. Well, you so. brought us some highs yeah. there with that story. We needed that. Right. And now let's uh, go to another high. If you're <laughs> a big so many. Taylor Swift fan, <laughs> this is her autumn to remember. The pop star showing up at the Kansas City Chiefs game last night. Oh, yeah, there was a game. Uh, once again, cheering on Travis Kelsey next to his mom, Donna. I mean, meantime, the Taylor takeover is coming to a theater near you. The Eras Tour movie debuted, and it's already expected to go down in the record books. To Taylor Swift. She is here, everybody. That magical Taylor touch. Once again, the pop superstar on site, cheering the Chiefs to victory over the Broncos Thursday night. This Swift's third appearance at a game, intensifying attention on her relationship with Kansas City tight end Travis Kelsey. It is just astonishing. It was the icing on a very sweet week for the pop superstar. Enchanting fans on the red carpet at her Eras Tour movie premiere Wednesday. I've never had a fraction of the amount of fun I had 
on the Eras tour. Swift then opening the film Thursday night, a day early, due to unprecedented demand. I'm going to go to this movie at least 13 times. As soon as I found out, I was like, we have to go like today. Audiences bringing that Swifty spirit inside, dancing and singing in their seats, just like Taylor did at the premiere. What did you say? The film already breaking records, earning more than $100 million worldwide in advanced ticket sales, making it the best opening ever for a concert film and projected to be among the highest grossing movies of the year. Of course, there's been concert films before, but never like at the level of Taylor. Instead of using a major studio to shoot and release the movie, Swift blazing another new trail going directly to AMC theaters to distribute the film. An unheard of move. The blockbuster film coming on top of her live tour, the most successful in history, predicted to earn a staggering $4 billion. With her movie spreading to even more screens today, one thing's for sure, Swift's not so cruel summer is turning into a red hot fall. Well, in case you missed it, AMC gave us some tickets to the Eras Tour concert film. So this morning, we surprised some fans on the plaza. They just came to the to the plaza with a Taylor Swift poster because they love her. Yeah, they're dressing up, you know, of, uh, for they're, Halloween. Fact, yeah, for as a uh, different Taylor Eras. <laughs> so, kind of You're all full of surprises I'm today, just saying, right? I'm, you know what? Like handing out surprises. We need a little, love to we need a little love today. like a tooth fairy. There I love you it. Go. <laughs> I only got like a quarter. Tooth? I only got a quarter. Yeah, exactly. All right, anyway, for you. clearly Taylor Swift has football fever, and if it's Friday, that means it's time for Friday Football Fever. Ooh. Every week we try to answer some NFL trivia as we count down to Sunday night football, and this okay. week the question comes from Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio. He's also an NFL insider for NBC's Football Night in America. Take a look. Hello, everybody. I've got your Friday trivia question here. Until the arrival of quarterback Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills had quite a long playoff drought. But back in the 1990s, they went to four consecutive Super Bowls from 1991 through 1994. Which, if any of the four, did they win? A, Super Bowl 25 against the Giants. B, Super Bowl 26 against Washington. C, Super Bowl 27 against Dallas. D, Super Bowl 28 against Dallas. E, none of the above. Uh, I'm going with I'm going, C. I'm going with E. I have no idea. <laughs> like, if I was taking Just a test. one. They say the answer is always C. All right, so two for e. C, one for E. All right. All right, the answer is? And the answer is E, none of the above. The Hall of Fame quarterback Jim Kelly led the team to four straight Super Bowls in a row, but unfortunately, they came up short every time, and they are still looking for their first ever NFL championship. I did know that because remember Harry Smith did a story and he went out there and he with all the fans and they talked about that part of it. Well, if you knew you it. I, I forgot. You should have used that knowledge. Know. That helps knowledge out. is power. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> So like, Can I no redo it? I was hoping it wasn't E, just for the sake of that's pretty sad. Um, all right, so be sure to tune in to Sunday Night Football, the Giants taking on the Buffalo Bills. Coverage begins oh, Sunday there. night at 7 on NBC Didn't and Peacock. I didn't, I didn't live, live in, in Buffalo. Buffalo. I lived in Oswego. Yeah. Buffalo's oh. to the way. Hey, it's a big state. Oh. Don't start Oswego saying. Oswego gets way more snow. <laughs> you know. Right, what Dylan said. Usually. That's got nothing to do with anything. I know. I just tried to Coming divert. Up, no, no diversion. <laughs> All right. You're ticking off New Yorkers left and right. <laughs> anyway, coming up, our Consumer Confidential Vicky Wynn is taking, talking about holiday travel, when to book, when to fly, most, most importantly, how to save some money. Then in She Made It, the CEO making waves in the hair care business by creating a company that also celebrates her heritage. Uh -huh. Third hour of today. We'll be right back.
this morning in our Consumer Confidential, we're already planning that holiday getaway. The travel app Hopper says the best deals are usually booked by October 14th. Mm. That's tomorrow. <laughs> NBC News senior consumer investigative correspondent Vicki Wynn is going to help us figure out our travel plans. Good morning, hey, Vicki. Good morning. Good morning so I feel like this could raise a red flag for a lot of people like, oh, I didn't book my flight. I'm not really ready to book my flight right now, but how much time is left? I know. So the travel experts at Hopper, as you said, said tomorrow is sort of the best time if you're looking for maximum availability of flights and best pricing. We are 40 days right now from Thanksgiving. It's sort of hard to believe. Um, and Haley Berg over at Hopper says after mid-October, prices for airfare start to go up 5 to 10 percent every day. Oh. So if you're trying to book for Thanksgiving tomorrow, is your best bet. And then for Christmas, if you can book 50 days in advance of any time that you travel, generally that's the best time. Jake Bouvier says that uh, I, from Kayak. I see a lot of down arrows here. That's a good sign, right? Are the prices actually going down? Yes. So overall, according to Kayak, compared to last year, airfare on average is down 5% for the mm -hmm. winter holidays. And for uh, things like car rentals and hotels, which were so expensive in yeah. years past, those are down 16%. Wow. So we can talk about the average round trip prices. We're starting with Christmas but I think we had one for Thanksgiving. Christmas, it's going to cost you $400 round trip if you're traveling within the United States. Uh -huh. But that is down 12%, which is great. If you're going to Europe, it's going to be right around $1,000. And Asia, double that, uh, almost $2,000. And both of those international flights on average are up. Okay, so we're starting to book. We're thinking about booking something for our, us, our families. Yeah. What are some of the tools, some of the things we can do to get those airfares and get them as cheaply as possible? The most important thing you can do right now, Al, is start watching prices and allow emails to alert you when prices change. So there are multiple mm. avenues to do that. With Hopper, they have something called the watch tool. That's easy to remember. You plug in your destination mm. and your point of origin, and then you just wait for them to tell you, okay, the prices are up or down. Mm. They also have this price freeze feature. You pay a fee for it, but it allows you to lock in a price, mm. think about it, shop around for a certain amount of time, and then you can go back and buy it for that price, because odds are the prices are going to continue creeping mm -hmm. up as we get closer to these holidays. Um, over at Kayak, they have something called best time to travel. So that means you plug in your to and from, and let's say you've got seven days, but you don't care if it's you you know, range, this seven days, right. you have a range, they'll give you literally the best time to travel based on prices. Google Flights has something called Explore. And so you put in all the places you're willing to go, uh -huh. and then they will send you back a list of, hey, these are the cheapest airfares That's of your cool. destinations, like which mm -hmm. is super helpful. Yeah. And as we know, AAA says Tuesdays, Wednesdays, best times to fly. Consider going somewhere on one airline and flying back on another. That's another way you oh, can so save the mix money. And match. Absolutely mm -hmm. mixing and matching works, Sal. And then finally, if you've been saving those points and miles, use them. Sometimes they expire, but you can use them towards a full-on flight, not just for upgrades. Mm -hmm. you know, it makes me nervous delays and cancellations because yeah. I'm such a tight window. A lot of us don't have a lot of vacation right. days, right? So you're going from Thursday to Sunday or Friday to Monday. I mean, so it's so tight if you miss a flight. I know. Sunday after Thanksgiving, frankly, is the worst time to fly. <laughs> it's going to be the busiest. If you can fly on Sunday after Thanksgiving, yeah, the Monday after Thanksgiving, you're better off. And if you can leave on the Monday before Thanksgiving, that's generally a great time. You'll save 20% uh, per ticket if you depart on November 16th. That's actually the Thursday mm -hmm. before Thanksgiving. But if you leave on the Monday, and you come back any weekday after that, those are going to be the Makes lowest sense. prices. Um, and then you were saying just in terms of getting to the airport, yeah. first flight out of the day is always mm -hmm. your best bet to deal with weather, yeah. uh, staffing issues, you know, all the things that can build up over the mm -hmm. course of a day. Leaving early is important. What about Christmas? Christmas oh. is the Monday or Tuesday before Christmas are the best time. So that's the 18th or the 19th. Mm -hmm. And if you can fly home on Christmas or there on Christmas morning and do your festivities in the day, you'll save 26% mm. off of the highest prices. Same thing from Thanksgiving. If you can fly the morning of Thanksgiving, get there in time for the mm -hmm. turkey, that's, you're going to save a lot and of money that way. somebody else do the cooking. So that's it's, right. it's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. What, about, what, about, well, what about weather, uh, other issues? you got to deal about with delays and cancellations. What's your plan there? So you have to have the airline's flight app. You always have that on mm. your phone with you. And also download the MyTSA app. That will actually mm. tell you the wait times for TSA, which is always mm. helpful. And the second you sniff a delay or cancellation, you're standing physically in line. You are online. Yeah. You are on the phone. Delegate with your family members. You want Trevor's a multi-prong approach yeah. to get to that uh, customer Human service being. agent. Yes, exactly. first. And it's agent, agent, agent. We've talked yes. about that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Zero doesn't get you exactly. anywhere. Right. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Vicky, thank you so much. All right, coming up, it's She Made It. Meet the mom behind a groundbreaking hair care line built on Latin American beauty secrets. We'll be right back.
We are back with a great She Made It in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. The Hair Care Line Ceremonia is Sephora's first Latina-owned hair care brand. It's the brainchild of a mom and entrepreneur whose parents came to the U.S. from Chile. Today, lifestyle and commerce contributor Jill Martin Brooks met up with her at the company's new flagship store here in New York City. With Ceremonia, it's my homecoming. It's a way for me to embrace my natural beauty. A lot of people think that everyone in Latin America has brown hair, but we have redheads, blondes, we have all. Baba Rivera is the founder of Ceremonia, a clean hair care brand designed to help protect, revitalize, and style a diverse body of tresses. We became the first Latina founded hair brand to enter Sephora nationwide this year, and that just speaks volumes for the untapped opportunity. Ceremonia was influenced by Baba's unique Latinx heritage, memories of being raised in Sweden, and quality time spent with her father. Tell me about your brand and what your focus was when you began and what it's evolved into. We're all about hair wellness. And I think for me, it's interesting because I grew up with a hairdresser dad from Chile. And I basically feel like I grew up with a front row seat to all the secrets of Latin American beauty. He would give me scalp massages, he would oil my hair. And as a kid, I appreciated it. But then when I went into my teenage years, I thought it was super embarrassing. And I started to get my beauty inspiration from the magazines. Baba says that the messaging she saw reflected traditional beauty standards, not her own culture and identity. I had really beautiful hair as a child, and then I started bleaching it, I straightened it every day, and I was constantly fighting the frizz, and I ended up in this vicious cycle of trying to fit in. And years later, after relocating to the United States and building a career in marketing, Baba felt inspired to return to her roots. Embracing lessons learned at an early age about keeping her hair healthy, she launched Ceremonia in October 2020 after the birth of her oldest daughter. At first, self-funding its formation. A scalp oil is the signature item that started it all. We're really famous for our aceite de mosca. It's super lightweight. You apply it directly on your scalp and you give yourself a little massage with oh, our wow. massager. It helps to combat flakes, greasy roots, helps to remove itching, and also to remove product buildup. Growing up, you didn't see people like you who you can model yourself after. How important is that? Representation matters so much to me because now that I'm an adult and a mom of two young daughters, I realized that growing up, I never saw anyone with my heritage do big things. And I think for me, representation is at the core of self-esteem and also believing that you can. Who is the ceremonia person? The Hispanic audience, for sure, and especially second, third generation, who for the first time are seeing themselves represented in a modern way that doesn't feel stereotypical. We play a lot with Spanglish in our copy and we celebrate the richness of our culture in an aspirational way that feels global and inclusive. But then on the other hand, we have this non-Hispanic customer that is just very savvy when it comes to sustainability and clean formulas. Within a few years, Ceremonia has expanded to about 20 products. Papaya scalp scrub and guava leave-in conditioner are top sellers. We also like to just elevate everyday rituals, turning wash days into a joy instead of a chore. I think many women with textured hair, thick hair, frizzy hair, kind of like are dreading the wash day because it takes hours to dry and then you need to style it and all of these things. And we're trying to flip that script. While Baba celebrates the success of her business, raising the visibility of a vast, rich community might be what she is most proud of. This is a big moment for us. We really want to broaden people's perspective of what Latin American culture has to offer. Well, in Let's fact, we've got it. a few products here. Are they yeah. sulfate-free, paraben-free, and contain natural ingredients? Love Love a that. beach wave. Mm -hmm. A beach wave? A beach wave, yes. Oh. A you texturizer? Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and it <laughs> smells delightful. There you go. Yeah. Delightful. 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 It is. It's very fresh. All right, just ahead in oh, our nice. series, Pink Power. It's a beautiful sight. We are going it. to tell you the incredibly important reason landmarks around the world are lighting up tonight. Then later, we are going to show you how to bring some beautiful fall flowers into your home and create the perfect centerpiece for the season. Love this. The third hour of today will be right back.
We're back with our series Pink Power on this Metastatic Breast Cancer Awareness Day, also known as MBC or Stage 4. It occurs when breast cancer spreads to other parts of the body. Well, this morning we are joined by Tammy Eagle Bowling, a motivational speaker and Stage 4 thriver, and Matt DeAngelis, a Broadway performer who lost his mom, Janice, to MBC last year. They are quite literally helping shine a light on the disease through a virtual benefit tonight. More than 300 landmarks and buildings around the world will take part in the Light Up NBC campaign. Tammy and Matt, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. You, good morning. Tammy, I'll start with you. You are giving so much people hope, so thank you for sharing your, your cancer journey with this. You've been living with NBC, metastatic breast cancer, for eight years. So people yeah. will see you now and think, oh, but she looks fine. How has this journey been over the last eight years? Yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. You know, I was had no history of breast cancer in my family. I went for a routine mammogram at 41, which was the second mammogram of my life. And to my shock, it revealed breast cancer. Um, and I thought that was horrible, but then they found out that it spread to my liver, mm. which is what makes it incurable. And I'm so grateful for science that has allowed me to be on treatments because originally I was given a two to three year life oh expectancy mm. and my kids were just two and four years old at the time. And um, now, like you said, it's eight years later wow. and I am living with purpose. I go for scans every three to four months to check for progression, um, but I keep the hope alive and keep my faith stronger than my fear. Mm. After you were diagnosed, you got involved with a lot of nonprofit organizations to raise money, you know, funds for research, yeah. and now you are the global campaign director for Light Up NBC Live. So tell yeah. us more about the event and how someone like Matt is getting involved. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like you said, we had 166 cities illuminating tonight. Mm -hmm. It was inspired by Jessica Moore, who passed away at the age of 36, and uh, she wanted a landmark to light in more than just pink to really be inclusive of the colors of the Stage 4 community, which are pink, teal, and green. Mm -hmm. And tonight, I'll host a show, Light Up NBC Live, where people can hear from patients at these landmarks and um, experience musical performances by people like Bianca Merican and Mark Robert and of course the amazingly talented Matt DeAngelis. Mm -hmm. yeah, in fact we'll talk about that Broadway connection in a second Matt but you know you, you lost your mom to this disease last year uh, and you're honoring her memory in a, in a special way. Tell us about that. Actually, yes, Tammy and I met through this other um, <clears throat> thing that I'm doing. Uh, my mother passed in uh, June of 2022, and she was kind of the Broadway mom. She was so, so thrilled that I was an actor, and she was friends with a lot of my Broadway friends and friendships that didn't even include me. I always said she's the queen of everybody gets a Valentine, and we Aww, decided to, so we decided to start me and my wife, and who's a Broadway performer as well, uh, decided to start this charity called the Janus Jam, um, and we raised twenty-seven thousand dollars in our first year for breast cancer um, research and for services for women who can't afford care for themselves. And we had people from Wicked and uh, Omar Cardona from The Voice, and a bunch of people jumped in to help and we raised a whole bunch of money and we're going to do one next year as well. Wow, you know, you and I share a, a certain bond in that we were both in Waitress, sadly not at the same I time, <laughs> but I shared a, a dressing room with your best buddy, oh, Benny Ellidge. My golf buddy, yeah. yeah. I mean, I love Benny. I miss him. But tell me what it is about the Broadway community that that they when there's something that's that, that needs changing, they jump in feet first. Yeah, I, I, I was so moved um, all I've ever wanted was to be a part of the Broadway community. It's what I've given 20 years of my life to. And uh, my mom was so important to so many people in the community as well. And, and I'd like to think that I am. And it was so wonderful that when I called, everybody said yes. Mm. Everybody jumped on and pulled on the same rope. And we did something really special in year one. And we just got the official Janice Jam, uh, at official Janice Jam Instagram handle. Mm. And we're moving forward oh, with plans for That's next amazing. year. So we're really excited about it. Oh, my goodness. It. Yeah. So before you go, we wanted to try to do something special here in the studio, something we haven't done. Um, in Studio 1A. We wanted to light up our studio in the NBC colors. So we wanted to make it teal, <gasps> as you mentioned, green and pink. So if you wow. look around the studio, we oh. plan wow. this out. It is so beautiful. It's God bless you. Thank you. These colors represent hope for the medicine community. I was community. just about to say, what did you say? And faith over fear. Faith over fear and just, you know, hope that as more people understand, um, more research will come. Yeah, wow. my goodness. Yeah. Thank you. Thank guys. you. Thank, Thank you. So much. you. Thank All right. You Beautiful. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thank All you. All right. So much. You can, by the way, you can stream Light Up NBC live tonight at 8 30 Eastern on metaviver.org.
All right, coming up, Mum's the Word, when we show you how to bring some fall flowers into your home. Then later, Joy Bauer is here with a breakfast super quiz in this morning's Superfood Friday. It's well, we don't a competition, have any food. guys. There's no food. But there's a competition. Use right. your brain we'll power. We'll be right back. <laughs> This morning we are falling into a whole new season of flowers, bringing that autumn look into our homes and creating beautiful centerpieces. So here to show us how is one of our good buds, Christina Stemble, the founder and CEO of flower delivery company Farm Girl Flowers. Christina, we always love when you're here. Thank you for having me again. So I'm let's, so excited. Let's start off with the fall. I mean, I was joking during the commercial break, your leaves even look prettier than any leaves I have. They look better than the ones we have on the West Coast. These are definitely East Coast leaves, beautiful. I think, right? They're beautiful. So, but what but flowers are in season? right now. Fall is the best season for flowers. It's my absolute favorite. It really, everything matches. You just mm -hmm. do some jewel tones, you do some pastels, everything. You can mix warm with cool. Mm -hmm. We have foliage, ties it all together, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And one of my favorites for fall, too, is, okay. is celosia. Look at oh, this. It's a brain really flower. Cool. Oh, Isn't yeah. that cute? So you can, and the Good great thing that. about foliage is you can just go to your backyard and cut it, too. Okay. So, and then today we are going to make, I'm so excited, we're going to make my favorite style of arrangement. It's a loaf arrangement. Okay. And so I have a, a, fancy, loaf a loaf pan. I use a fancy vase, but most people don't have that at yeah. home. But if you do any baking, you can just go to your cupboard. That's cool. Pull out it, yeah. And then, but you have a big opening. So you need to build a foundation first. So you can either tape it just mm -hmm. like this into a grid. Think of okay. like an apple pie. You're uh -huh. just doing a yeah. lattice top. Or my favorite is to use some chicken wire and you just roll it mm -hmm. and then tape it in oh. place and you get a little bit more height then. So then you put and a little more stability? A little more stability. Well, stability. Great. Okay, let's go over here. We're okay. going to have some okay. fun okay. with some foliage over here. So first, everybody asks me, it's kind of chicken and egg. Do the, does the foliage or the flowers come first? Okay. It's not always the same answer, but in this one, it's foliage first. Uh -huh. So you just stick so, them in there. So yeah. the key is to grab foliage while it's still on the tree, not the dead stuff on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, unless it looks like this. If it's like just fell, yeah. grab it. Okay. But you can also just grab some branches like this. The greatest thing about this style of arrangement is you have an eight inch loaf pan that you just saw, right. and you can make as big as a 48. Oh. 50 like a oh, because it's stretching so out. Stretching it out. So think of wow. this as like a paint by numbers. So okay. you're going to go left and right with the foliage. Oh, you're so you're take alternating. Alternating. And you're going to leave the center open. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to go, and you can get a lot of a lot of width just by taking yeah. some foliage like this uh -huh. and oh, going on the side grand. like this. And you just put it into the chicken so wire like that. This would be great okay. if you wanted to prune, you some, prune some leaves yes. that are, you yes. know, some branches. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of Kill two birds with one stone. You're going to get, you're going to like deadhead some things. You're going to you know, pick. winterize yeah. your garden. So then what sure. goes yes. in the middle? So in the middle, we're going to put flowers. Okay. Now you're going to start, here's the key. You're going to use heavy flowers first because otherwise it's going to be really unstable. Okay. A lot of people will put them up top. It'll get really top heavy. Mm -hmm. So yes, so the celosia. Okay. Yes. And the roses. If you want to take some of those. I get nervous when there's such a long stem like this to cut it mm -hmm. short because I feel like I'm wasting so much you're of it. You're going to cut it so short. Let okay. me show you. <laughs> Let me grab one. Okay. Here, I'm gonna share. Here. You're going to cut it like. Oh, look at that. Look, like this. Oh, like You're going to cut it short. Oh, really? So short. So short. Every you can Those always cut it shorter too. Chicken is the best mm -hmm. flippers. Um, and you're just gonna put it into the oh, chicken yeah. wire so it's right above the lip of okay. oh. yeah of the pan. 
Okay. Make sure your, your pan is waterproof, too. I forgot to mention oh. that. That's important. Yes. <laughs> so you're going to cut them really short. You can do roses as well. And then we have Ooh. these beautiful synthetic orchids. Ooh. Do you want to try one? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. So this I one. I have to cut it. I'm like, Dylan. Yeah, let me grab. I know. I feel like I'm wasting. It's so okay. do I just do it down. right under the flowers? So now this one I'm going to show you. You're going to do on the right side. I'm going to do the left. Okay. You're going to cut it Gosh, that's not beautiful. as short. This is so you're going to do a tier. So we start low. Right and after right we have some weight on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's great. You're going to then, so you want to go right here. I put it right, right there. there. Yep, and lean it what to the right. That? You're going to go left oh, okay, and right. Oh, so it's like a little V. Yeah, do a V shape. Yep, do a V shape, just like this. I can't believe you're building mm -hmm. all like of that. And then you'll like end up with then something that looks like TV, this. 30 minutes later, after you wow. flower it all up, you can make a centerpiece this large. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yes, with an eight inch loaf pan. Then my favorite wow. thing is to take the little bits that you have left over mm -hmm. yeah. of the leaves, put it around the pan, oh, so oh, around the arrangement, take some persimmons, yeah, and some pomegranates. This is great. Gorgeous. And then, it's beautiful. Okay, so now you know you need to put food on the table, right? Right. right. It's too big. So then you can just take this off, put it on the buffet behind you, yes. yeah. and you still have the leaves and the, Honestly, the fruit on the table. This looks like oh, a billion dollars. Okay. And this is very zen. You know, it you can is. Really, really just. Gorgeous. Yes. Uh, it's, and it it's smells nice. delightful. Oh, Get a little right. relaxation Ooh. before the party. Ooh, what are we going to eat? Thank I'm you, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Wow. Coming up next, it is our first ever superfood super quiz. Joy Bauer going to test our breakfast knowledge, and you can play at home when the third hour of today comes right back. This is mm. Mm. We are so excited because it is Superfood Friday this week. We have our first ever Superfood Super Quiz, complete with our game show it's set so and buzzers. Game show Today, voice. nutrition and health expert <laughs> Joy Bauer is here to put our nutrition knowledge to the test. All right, take Woo, it away, go, Pat Sajak. This, this is going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to find out who the master of the morning meal is. Oh, Got this. So this okay. is how it's going to work. I hope you guys are feeling competitive. Uh -huh. I am going to ask a series of questions, mm -hmm. and after each question, I'm going to give you three multiple choice answers. If you think you know the answer, press the buzzer, okay. and we're going to see if you're right. So okay. we, don't have, we don't have to wait for you to read all the answers. Yes, you want to wait for me to read all okay, the answers very quickly. Just okay. the rules. So Strategy. Here it goes. The first question. Which is the smartest breakfast to buy when you are out and about on the go? Is it A, an egg and cheese sandwich, B, bagel with cream cheese, or C, blueberry muffin? <laughs> Dylan? Egg and cheese sandwich. And you would be correct! <laughs> Why? The egg and protein. cheese sandwich is the only option that provides a substantial amount of protein, which is going to fuel your energy throughout the morning. Right. The blueberry muffin and the bagel, a whole lot of carb mm -hmm. with fat. And if you want to make that egg and cheese sandwich a little bit healthier, what I would say is request, instead of a big fluffy white roll, a toasted English muffin mm -hmm. or whole grain bread, and try to slip in a few slices of tomato. Okay. Right. okay. That's, okay. That's good. That's Dylan good. has that one. That's a doable. Question number two. Which option will add the most fiber to a bowl of cereal? Is it A, chopped almonds, B, blackberries, C, sliced bananas? <laughs> Al? Uh, B, blackberries. Correct. Really? Really? Oh. Well done, so sir. So all of these toppings are wonderful, but if you can imagine blackberries, one cup provides eight 
grams of fiber. It's one of the best either. natural sources of fiber. Raspberries too. Really? So if you're looking to move things along, As it I would say I know. <laughs> you want to like, sprinkle on blackberries, oh. and it could be frozen and thawed <laughs> or fresh. Because I know we're sort of yeah. getting out of the season yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so Dylan has one. Al has All one. Right, come on, we're, Chanel. We're not counting. Question number three. Which food will add heart healthy omega 3 fats to your smoothies? <laughs> Greek yogurt, oh, blueberries, or flaxseed? Well, she, she technically. Okay, flaxseeds. Chanel. That's fine. Omega 3 fats. I'm going to say flaxseeds. And you would be correct. Yes! <laughs> Seeds, just like chia seeds, have these plant-based omega-3s. And omega-3s are great because they ease inflammation, they drive down triglyceride levels, and they promote heart health. And, oh. of course, you can get them, again, in salmon, everyone knows, sardines, flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. I have a and question. We, yeah? Is there a way to put them in a smoothie so that your kids don't notice? Because I feel like my little guy goes... You know, and you can like taste it. Yeah, it's so grainy. Yeah. So what I would say is with the flax seeds, and I'm glad you brought that up, because a lot of times you could buy them ground mm -hmm. like a powder, but a lot of times they'll come whole. You absolutely want to grind them. You can use a coffee grinder mm -hmm. because that's the only way that your body can absorb it all. And when they're very, very finely ground, they also can be disguised in a smoothie. But Got just it. start with a teaspoon, yep. and I don't think that they'll they'll taste they'll it. Notice. And also, you want to store them in a sealed container in the fridge or freezer, yeah. oh. because that's what's going to keep them fresh. I put ground flax seeds into the next pancake or uh, really? muffin. Really? Excellent. Yeah. You can put them in muffins yeah. and oatmeal oh, and yogurt, all sorts muffins. of ways. Yeah. Okay, but last the question. The finer the powder, right. the easier it is to disguise okay. it, Got and it. also the better for your body to absorb the good stuff. All right. okay. So the last question, here we go all about toast. Which toast topper will provide the greatest amount of protein? Is it A, avocado, B, cottage cheese, or C, peanut butter? Ow. Is it Al? Uh, C, peanut butter. Oh, oh. wrong, Dylan. Avocado. B, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese Whoa. has it. Whoa. All right, Dylan wins. Yeah. Really? And so cottage cheese is having such a moment right now. It sort of has this resurgence. It's all of a sudden hip again. It is packed with Look at that. protein. Oh, yeah. And the nice part about cottage cheese, too, when you put it on toast, you could take it in a sweet or a savory right. direction. Sweet, nice. I add a little bit of fruit. Savory, I like to put um, it idea. on top of some tomatoes with I beans. Joy, thank tomatoes. you so much. We appreciate it. And so we Dylan will be is right the winner. Back. Yeah. He's the winner. Yeah. We'll be right back. Oh, look, you got oh, the winner. Oh, got the winner. Yay! Alrighty, let's shout out some of our Start right. Today community Woo. members. First up, we got Christina, who started a walking group in Chicago. In Detroit. Yeah. In Detroit. Yeah. In Detroit. Okay. Christina. Yeah, Christina. In Detroit, yeah. Michelle loves the Start Today community to maintain her healthy habits. Good job, Michelle. Michelle. Oh. Janet from Alabama says the Start Today community is like a family cheering her on. Oh, Janet. And Anne is a nurse in Illinois and loves walking with her pup. Kimberly takes photos on her way to work to stay motivated and get moving. Good job, Kimberly. Kimberly. All right, so get the QR code to sign up for our newsletter or head to today.com slash start today. Monday on the third hour of today, Gloria Stefan will join us live in studio. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Garcelle Beauvais. And we will see you Monday. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on Today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's Today. Like I
I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Anal stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on Today. Today we're kicking off the weekend with actress and real housewife Garcelle Beauvais. Plus, we'll check out the everything shower beauty trend that's taking over TikTok. And music legend Cher embracing the 40 year age gap between her and her latest love. And we're talking about it. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, so up, it's today it right with Hoda right now, and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey, everybody. It is Friday, October 13th. We're so happy that you're here with us to end up your week. I Wrap know. it up. We're wrapping it up. It's going to be a rainy weekend on the East Coast. So you know what? It's time to get cozy with one of your Reba Jenna books. Oh, that sounds good. Maybe go to a movie. Yeah, Maybe it's a go good movie Taylor weekend. Maybe go see Taylor Swift. I'm going to go see Taylor. Are you going to go see Taylor? When are you going? I'm going tonight. You're going tonight. I'm going to go Sunday. I'm going to do a matinee. I asked if it was age appropriate for four and six year olds. It totally is if your kids can sit that long. It's two, two hours and 45 minutes. Okay, okay. So maybe it's you go, what, and you can't leave through in the middle, can you? I feel like leaving in the middle no. of a movie is not, no. that's like one of our social dilemmas. <laughs> if a movie is too long and you need to leave, what do you do? Well, if your kids are melting, you get out. I mean, how once that, took his shirt off? In the theater? He took his shirt off and was dancing <laughs> around. And I was like, should I take him home? But he, and then I was like, you have to put your shirt back on. Yeah, did he? You know? But I think also this will be good because she says, and yeah. you know, we do what yeah. Taylor says, to dance. Dance. So I think oh, you're yeah, going to be yeah. on your feet. Actually, good point. So the kids will be moving around. It's going to be activity. I know. It actually would sitting. be good for the rainy day. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. good. Um, okay, y'all share. We adore her. We we want to, we bow down on our knee for Cher. We she love is, Cher. First of all, there's a million things to love about her. But I think one of the top things is she's always lived her life her way. Totally. And there are very few people who've done that. Yeah. Like Dolly Parton's done. Yes. Certain people have done it. And, uh, you know, this is like her unique path, and it served her in this great way. She's in her 70s now. Yes. Living her best life. Having the best romance, it's all happening in this moment. Yeah, she has opened up to People Magazine about her one-year relationship with music producer A. Alexander A. E. Edwards. I mean, first of all, don't you love that she... First of all, she looks amazing. Yes, yeah, she does. But second of all, she ha is having one of the best romances of her life at this stage of her life. I think the cool thing about... And I don't know if it's love. Who knows what it is? It's amazing, whatever it is. But to know that you are like in your moment enjoying your life. You're not thinking about uh, what's next. Yes. You're not thinking about what does so-and-so think about it. You're living your life. Yes. That's like goals. It to is. live your life just the way you want. Without judgment. Yeah. Okay, so she said this. She said it was really shocking because people don't just get, this is how they met, right? I think she said to a friend, give him my, give number. Him my number is what I think. She yeah. said, because people don't just give my number. Yeah. I had been telling all my friends, we're too old to go out with really younger men, and I will never fall in love over text. So I did what I said not to do. So she's in love. She's in love. I like this one, though. We've been together a year, and if it was just a year, it would have been worth it. I've had the best time. Yeah. Please make that a bumper sticker. That's like the best message in the world. Yes, not everything has no. to be wild. And, it, and it, might, it might go on and on, or it might be a year, but whatever it is, when she's sitting in the middle of it saying, this was the best year, I'm so yes. glad. It's like if someone asked you the question, if you knew you were going to have a great love and you were sure at the end you were going to have the worst heartbreak, would you still say yes? Yeah. If you knew in advance that you were going to have the greatest love but it was going to be followed by a devastating heartbreak. Would you still say yes? Would you? I, th I think yes. Yeah. Would you? I think yes. 
I think yes. And I mean, it also, it's, you know, hypothetical, so it depends on right. so many things, because sometimes heartbreak can really hurt, de- but, but it's the same thing as grief. Yes. If you aren't sad yes. that you broke up, it means you didn't yes. really love him. And also, to know that you could have the best love, and you knew that that was coming. I yeah. mean, that feeling alone, yeah. whatever comes after it. Yeah. You know, and it's you know it's so funny because in our society and like I'm tr- and I've talked about this before. I really want mm-hmm. my girls to know that things can be short. Yeah, not everything. I mean, I was a serial monogamist. Yeah, I am. Yeah, because I'm now married yes, for a are. long time. Yes, and I I want to make sure that kids understand that my girls feel comfortable and confident enough to know that like not everything is marriage material. Yes, you don't yes. need to switch things in or change yourself. Yes. to make you know Tracy Ellis Ross vibes. Yes, learn to choose. Chooser. Yes, you're the chooser. That's what Cher is doing. Cher is the choosing. chooser. I, I just feel like that kind of empowerment. Yes. And also, it's like goals because sometimes you need to see it. Like, that's love and action. Yes. That's what happens when you uh, fall for someone. They have a similar love of so many things. Obviously, music is one of them. They make music together. But it's so funny because I feel like we have to reframe things. Uh I remember being a pudgy little kid singing Matchmaker, Matchmaker, Uh Make Me a Match at a little voice competition where I couldn't really sing. And as a prop, which this was my creativity, I had a bridal magazine. Oh. So I was a third grader being chubby, matchmaker. singing matchmaker, matchmaker. And that I think they liked that I won like second place for the magazine alone. Because you were very clever. But then I would stare at the magazine and dream about like a boy liking me or the wedding as opposed to the actual life. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and I married well, thank God. But yeah. there could have been a couple choices. Yeah, that you would have gone down the wrong that path. That I might have just done just because, because why not? Well, I think people do things because it's time or some people get nervous, all their friends are getting married. Yeah. So it's like, oh gosh, yeah. well, you know what? I actually understand this guy and he's I've been with him long enough. Yeah. It'll be fine. Like if you're thinking it'll be fine. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. And I think, you get comfortable with someone who's kind of like an old shoe. It's like, wow, yeah, totally. that feels fine. And I know what that feeling is. Right? And I know I can deal with that feeling. But also, it's like the the little girl that dreams yeah. of the wedding as opposed to the life. The little yeah, girl that dreamt dreams. Of the oh, I did. You did? Yeah, I did. I didn't have that. Like, I don't. I don't remember. I like, think it's because nobody liked me. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, I had this, it was, that was fantasy. my fantasy is fantasy. that when will yeah. the person like me? When will I be chosen? But even at my w- wedding when I was married a long time ago, I wasn't so concerned even about the dress or the yeah. thing. Like I remember my mom picked one out for me and she said, I think this is a great dress. And I liked it, but I wasn't like, I don't think my brain worked That's good. in that way. I don't. It didn't. Actually. But that's a good. That's a good thing. I guess so. Is it? it I think it is. is. It though? Okay. Oh, y'all, this is a big deal. What? The '80s staple, the shoulder pad, is making a comeback. We've already known this. Why did the Wall Street Journal say it? Well, yeah, so it must be true. Uh huh. We knew it before. Yeah, because it never really went away, guys. All the suits have shoulder yes, pads. Yes, because they make you feel powerful. And they were a trend in the 80s. Everyone wore them in the 80s. Yes. They made you feel. My like... mom actually had the ones you could insert. Yeah. Remember those? Yes. You could put in the sweaters. Velcro. Oh, these are. Oh, this kind of shoulder pad. Look how long and that oversized. You know who wore that? Who? Um, Zana. Me- Zana oh, Roberts. Roberts yeah, she wears those big shoulder pads. Yeah, so evidently, um, Saint Laurent, Stella McCartney. <laughs> I love when you get your accent going when you're talking. Oh, you know what? Saint Laurent. By the way, that was my best blowout day. I want you to know, and my favorite red blazer. It's a uh-huh. great blazer. Yes, it was. It was. That was the day. I, by the way, that was that... my anchor pic. Like that was the picture that I worked really hard for, and I said, "Today's the day." But hold on, really quickly. Uh-huh. The earrings are in. Look at the earrings. Oh my Those gosh, are the, the things. Whole 80s the are back. earrings are in, and the sh- show that pads. outfit would get be it. fab. Get it. Where is it? Did you get rid of it? I'm sure I did. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany Haddish, Haley Bieber. Share all fans of the shoulder pad. Yeah. I love Very a shoulder cool. pad. Whatever. I know. Yeah. We like, like a power suit. You like that feeling? Yeah, it, don't you it? love a suit? Yeah. It feels like, you know why? You feel, it feels easy put together and you can. I love a suit. We both, we're in our suit years. Yeah, we are. This is that time. Yeah, suit all era. Right. Okay, you guys, we just love an animated movie. Uh, so it's time for. Can't wait for that. Okay, Adam Sandler is lending his voice to Netflix's upcoming animated project, 
Leo. This is a great concept, guys. So in the movie, Sandler voices a 74-year-old lizard. That's a class <laughs> pet. So he learns this. He's got one year left to live. So he is going to spend his remaining year giving students little boosts of support and advice. It's really sweet. Take a look. Oh, look at this. You're talking to them. These kids are all benefiting from my 74 years of wisdom. Everyone thinks I'm weird. Kid, they don't even know you. What is so special about this reptile? You made me feel like I could do anything. This is gonna end badly. This is a tough time, but these are the best years, believe me. This is incredible! By the way, it's gonna help kids. It's gonna, because you're not by yourself. He's teaching Remember them. Remember that movie, He's... Vivo? Vivo? Vivo. I mean, we watch, this is what we do, is we watch animated movies. And Vivo, Remember, my uh, kids watched uh, Vivo uh, and Up. Yeah. They watched uh, it Vivo, me. and from 10 minutes in, they, were... they cried the entire time. Because they're you. It's I know, but, but I don't want the lizard to die. Well, the lizard has great, great, great advice. But why does the lizard have to die? <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. He's 74. No, he's 74. That's too which young. Is young. But here's the thing. Cher 77. Yeah, so he's just too, to the context, lizard is too young. Ridiculous. You're right. It's okay, ridiculous. thank you. Let's save the lizard. We're, you never know. I feel like at the end he might not. No, you know, how, you you know, know he's going to die. I don't know that. Coming up next. Didn't you read Charlotte's Web? Oh Old Yeller? Coming. Where the world, where the Coming. red fur grows? Coming grows? up next. Should you get involved <laughs> If your friend's relationship hits a rough patch. Oh, we're starting now girl code after this. I just listed all the animal movies where they die. You know them all. Bambi, what would you talk about? Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Anal stuff with a snap. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The marathon. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. And it's time to help our viewers out with some of our best advice in a segment we like to call Girl Code. Girl Code. All right, first up, here we go. I'm on a girl's trip with a friend, and we have adjoining rooms. She insists on keeping the connecting doors open. <laughs> That's crazy, right? What do you mean, all the time? <laughs> when you want to sleep, I think it's okay. But I... Does I, it, I mean, I would think, well, first of all, why do you have adjoining rooms? Yeah. Okay. But to keep if, the door open. I mean, I would right? think, like, if I was with my bestie and who cares? Karen was over there and I'm here and I'm like, good night. Like, I would, I would keep the door open. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Um, I think it's fine. Me too. We're not sure. We don't understand. We don't know. We but don't if know. it bothers you, just say, I'm going to close the door. Because I cares? need to go to bed. Yeah, I'm tired. Snoring. Yeah, I'm exhausted. And if she's a good friend, she'll understand. Totally. Okay, okay my friend's relationship is in a rough patch. Mm. Her boyfriend reached out to me to try to help oh. out. Do I get involved? No. Yeah. Gavin, are you a girl? <laughs> it's called girl code. Gavin just yelled, I think so. Um, wait a minute. So... <laughs> I don't, I mean, look, I think you're, you're, it depends on what's going on with the relationship. If he's totally baffled, he's like, look, 
I don't know where to turn. I'm totally lost. I, if I were the friend, I think I would feel betrayed if I thought my totally. best friend and my boyfriend were in cahoots. Oh, cahoots. And you'd be like, wait, you guys have been talking about yeah, this? Yeah, come, go, I'm sorry, no. but dude, you need to go to the girl. girl. Maybe go see a therapist and say, hey, I don't know why this isn't working. I'm on, and I'm honest, like, right. you should if be I, doing couple yes, therapy yes. if you feel like your relationship is right fractured. And if you, right, if you are chatting with her, because it's an easy route. Hey, is everything cool with her and me? I mean, I feel no. like it's, no, stay that, stay no. out of it. Sorry, be, Gavin. It's big trouble, big trouble. Don't get involved. Okay, I got my hair professionally straightened <laughs> before my friend's beach <laughs> bachelorette party. Did you write this? I could have. I didn't go in the water, and my friend said I was being a party pooper. Who's right? First of all, <laughs> never get your hair straightened or keratined before a beach <laughs> visit. Never. That's a that's a girl code rule. If you do that, you already have trouble because the minute salt water Hits touches, it. it's boom city. Yeah. And you spent three hundred dollars yeah. getting your carriage. Yes. And you're like, I'm about to blow three hundred. Now it's the bachelorette. It's not even the wedding, right? Is that what they no, said? No, it's the bachel bachelorette. It's a bachelorette. So be wild. You're with yeah. your friends. If it's the wedding, that's you know Although say just based on other girl code moments in my past history there are ways to be non-party poopers that don't include water you know what i mean maybe you don't show up during the day but you better come out at night okay that's not bad advice you know I what mean, i'm that's saying not bad advice but, but i bad. but i agree with don't my girl think, Hoda. You got, look at the, the calendar beach. don't you want to swim look at the calendar i mean the worst feeling in the world is doing this your best bet look at the calendar Pay attention. Book your appointment when, when you get home. When is the best time to get a keratin? Right Winter. after a beach vacation. Winter yeah, but hey, it, it, in February sometimes you like to well, go get some more. Well, if there's, if you got a while, yeah. Look at the calendar. Yes, plan it out. All okay. right. If you have a girl code <laughs> question, tell us about it. Hodaandjenna.com and hit the connect button. Coming up next, the Real Housewives are back in Beverly Hills, and so it's the drama. Garcelle Beauvais dishes on the new season. After this. Marcel Beauvais does it all. She's an actress, a model, an author, a mom, a reality star. Yeah, she is a fan favorite on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which, by the way, just dropped its new trailer. Oh. And we can expect all kinds of drama this season. Take a look. If there was infidelity, would you say? I don't know. Every time I go online, I see something about someone cheating. Where there's smoke, there's fire. But I don't want to talk about that right now. Well, I just want you to know. I don't want to talk about it. Kyle's not wearing a wedding band. Is there something going on in your personal life? Her marriage. Oh, yeah, girl. Her well. marriage. <laughs> 
Garcelle, Leave it to me to just put it out there. Right I like that it. you get you you you've done this hosting gig. You can talk because you got right <laughs> into it. it. You right. did. What's going on with that marriage? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, it's hard. It's hard because I know Kyle. You know, family is everything. Like to most of us. Yeah. Um, and to do it in the public eye, I know I went through it. So I was just as shocked as everybody in terms of like the separation. Yeah. I knew there were some things going on, but the separation was shocking to yeah, me. Yeah. We had her husband on the show oh, in the middle you? of all this, and we knew nothing about. Well, what was he, going on? All he talked about was, was her. how great they couldn't wait to go on vacation wow. and all that. So we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. Did yeah. you see it coming? Um, I didn't see the separation coming. Mm -hmm. I knew they were having a hard time because we sort of touched, you know, yeah. Yeah, on it on the show, as you can see. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to watch. I mean, how do you navigate being putting yourself out there on reality television? <laughs> you have two teenagers. Yes. Yeah. You you know have had relationships. But keeping what's private yours. That's what's really tough. It's mm -hmm. finding the balance between all of it. But, you know, with the boys, they're happy to do it. And then towards the end of the season, they don't want any cameras. They just want to do their own thing. And, and you know, that's kind of tough because I signed up for it. You know, they didn't. But they go along. And then when, they, when I feel like they've had enough, and then I tell the producers... That's an even how out. how has it affected them? Because I think sometimes you think it's cool, yeah. and then weeks later you're at school and someone's making fun or someone's doing something. How they navigated it? Yeah, they're navigating it pretty well. The first day of school, one of uh, one of Jax's teachers were like, "Jax, why does that sound familiar?" Oh. And then she put it together and oh. said it out loud. And said it out loud. Yeah, is that embarrassing? <laughs> yeah. A little no. bit, but I mean, you know, they're they're used to me being in the limelight. That's all they know since they mm -hmm. were born. Yeah. So how do you parent? 15 year old twin boys. <laughs> How does that work? We're very like carefully. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? I like? mean, it's really tough finding the balance. Yeah. What I've learned really through this past season with Jack specifically is that I have to parent them differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom had one rule of parenting. Yeah. You shut up, you listen, you do what I'm what you're told. Yeah. yeah. And now, you know, I'm already obviously raising them differently. I want them to have words and be mm -hmm. able to say how they feel Express and sometimes yeah. be careful what you ask for. Well, yeah. but it is important I think to teach boys, I have one, yes. mm -hmm. that it's okay to to hurt, yeah. that it's okay to cry, yeah. that it's okay to be vulnerable. All of that is okay because yeah. that's how you show and that's how you connect. Yeah. So I'm watching them now navigate like girlfriends, and that's really interesting. Oh my you gosh. know, it's interesting to see you because you're in your mid 50s. Yes. And you obviously have you know your voice, you know who you are. Yeah. When did that come to be for you? You know, I would have to say in my 40s, oh. really. I feel like that's when I got my voice. I was raised to be nice to a fault, mm. that I didn't know how to stand up for myself. I didn't know how to say that's not okay with me. And I'm still working through that and putting up boundaries. Isn't that funny? Because yeah. parents, we were talking about we this We talk before. about this. Parents have the best intentions. You teach yes. your kid to be obedient, and then they get either rolled over or put in some precarious right. position where they can't yes. say no because yes. they, exactly. they don't know how so, to. I'm still a work in progress. I'm still fine. Finding boundaries, and I'm talking to my older son, and he's like, "Mom, you just got to be stronger about this or that." If I'm struggling with something, yeah, and it's like, "This is crazy." Isn't that fun that you're getting yeah. advice from your? I know. I know. <laughs> that is cool. Who, by the way, you're a grandma, which is I incredible. Am. How is Best that? Ever. How's that been? It's amazing. I love him so much, and I can God. give him back. Oh. <laughs> and I forgot how exhausting and, and it is Oliver's to have a child. Three? He's three. Oh my yeah. God. So sweet. He's adorable. Thank can you. we talk dating? Yeah. Yeah. Who has time? <laughs> I mean, that you have only, a lot on your plate. I do. But you're also, as we talked about on a reality show, yeah. is that tricky? Do guys sign, like... Yeah, it is tricky because, one, you want to keep some things private, but yeah. yet you signed up to show your life. But not every guy wants to be on a reality no. show. So it's really finding the balance. And I haven't figured it out yet because I'm well, single. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think, too, it's like you know what's more important to you. The show yeah, is sure. a part of what you're doing, but your life is really it. Yeah. So right. probably if you found the right person right exactly choose that person. and I feel like my window with the boys are closing yeah you yeah, know so yeah. I want to be able to find them. my life yeah you well, know what I mean we talked about you being in your mid-50s yes but let's talk about your thrive at 50 is plus I, I kind of like this the is vibe very, of I do this. Too. yeah what I love about it is it doesn't feel like it's a shameful thing it it's feels not, like yeah. we are thriving we yeah. are living longer yeah why not take care of yourself yeah. and shingles is a big part of the minute you turn 50 you're susceptible to having it yeah, yeah. and every like 99% of people have
have the virus living in their body sure. yeah. if you had chicken pox. So why not talk to your doctor, go to your pharmacist, right. and, get, the, you know, get the vaccine. Well, and, and there's a vaccine. Yes. I don't feel like everybody knows that right. you know, no, that's something that's open. Absolutely, them. there is. And you know, it's just important, like I said, to be proactive with your life. You want to be able to do more. I want to be able to do more with my grandson. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to be around and healthy. Yeah. Well, Anne, look at what 50 is now. Uh, right? no, we're so giving different. the 30s a run for their you life. You sure are. <laughs> That's exactly right. You <laughs> sure are. Well, I'm in my 40s, but I'm oh, giving yeah. the 30s a run there for their life. There you go. Yeah. Um, Garceau, you're lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thanks you so much. We loved having you. Thanks so much. And the yeah. new season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills premieres October 25th on our sis sister network, Bravo. Coming up next, the latest TikTok beauty trend with hundreds of millions of views after this. To today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Yeah, here we go. Well, sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. Time for another edition of TikTok Made Us Try It. New beauty senior editor at large, Sarah Eggenberger, is here to tell us about the latest beauty trend that is taking over the internet. Okay, y'all, it is called the Everything Shower. Oh. Goodbye, the Everything Bagel. It has yeah. more than 400 million views on social media. What exactly is the Everything yeah, Shower? Yeah, we like this it's, concept. I, I do too. I mean, it's really doubling down on your shower. So we're talking about the pre, the during, and the post of a shower. So you can incorporate this whenever you want to. It doesn't have to be an every oh, wait, thing, so this is every the, day these shower. These are some of the posts? This is what you can do throughout the whole process. So like, look All at right. this. You can t completely transform your bathroom into a luxurious spot oh, look, anytime you loofas, want to. Loofas, everything. Candles. All right, go to lines. let's start with Alicia Keys. Yeah. She's got yes. dynamite candles. Oh, they smell so good. It's just mm. this beautiful, like delicate, subtle scent that's just gonna light up your bathroom because mm. bathrooms can actually that. be, you know, kind of institutional lighting. Let's shower warm by candlelight. Up. Let's warm yeah. it up. Have this beautiful, like elegant shower. Shower, an, by shower by candlelight. You know what? Don't you're really speaking Let's, Hoda's language because yes. usually you bathe by candlelight. Shower by candlelight. She I'm done like that. Starting to rethink a bath. You know why? What? Oh, I feel like oh. I stand up all day. Think about when you're off oh. your feet, other than sleeping. Yeah. You're just late. You just, I just was thinking. Have you rethought I'm always, a bath? Because I yes. take a shower in the morning, a shower before bed. I'm always standing. Yeah. Lay down. Lay down. Oh. Relax. Lay down. I believe all Relax. these products could also be used in the bathtub. Yes. 100%. Okay. Okay. Everybody is into dry brushing. Yes. Dry brushing is really important because it helps to increase the circulation. Helps do you do this every flow. day? I do not do it every day. That's a commitment. So what's the I deal? Do How do you do it? So Scratchy. you want to start like, Ow. yeah, you have to be careful. Don't use too much pressure. So Ow. start from your feet, work your way up to your heart. Ow. And here's, I'll tell you why you should do this though. Why? Because the Cleveland Clinic gave us a reason. Okay, they tell said, me. Because you're going to increase the circulation, it's going to help with that blood flow, which gives oh. you a little bit of plumpness in your skin, which diminishes the look of cellulite. So ladies will call that a win, right? It's not permanent, it's temporary, but it still helps. So yeah, Does it get rid of dead it. skin? We don't know where to do it. Cells, we do it on our stomachs, dry. right? Stomachs, yeah, do it dry, or you can also do it with oil, which I love to do with I think oil, because that softens oil. it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be a post, put okay. a little oil on, do your little loofah. Okay. So you should do this before you take your bath? 
You should do this before you take your okay. bath, but okay, if you do what? it with oil, do it after. after. Okay, okay. Now I want to try one of these. What this is it? Is a, a bath bomb? Like, yeah, like a, no, it's a shower it's a bomb. It's a shower aromatherapy. You need this for your chest. Mm. Take it. Oh, oh, yeah. No, not Get your that. chest. chest. <laughs> Don't put it there, actually. No, no, no. She just, she's been Clear having congestion. Yes. Oh, yes. It's like Clear Vicks. Enough. Oh, it is. It's eucalyptus. So put this in your shower. It's activated by steam. And you know what I like this for? Because it just allows you to inhale and breathe, and it helps with the congestion. Jen yes. is right. She's taking care of you. It's yes, like Dr. Hager. Yeah. Okay, um, now what? Okay, now we're going into hair care. So now that we're in the shower, we finally made our way into the shower. Finally, yes. It took a long time. We, it took a long time. Yes. We need to explain our scalp. So this is, oftentimes we forget about the scalp. We don't explain our scalp. I don't. Oh, I never just think do. about your amount of like like dry shampoo and product buildup and product. do you exfoliate your head i do i actually do this does it my make dandruff too. come out it helps with the dandruff it helps does with it like, make it come why out? do you do it for no the no girls? it doesn't like it helps release i do it with my kids because why? they get such snarly gross yeah. gross yeah. hair yeah and yeah. it really helps every sunday this is what we do in our kitchen sink actually so we scrub our hair there's Ooh, charcoal look at it it's dissolvable scrub so it helps to just kind of get rid of everything it smells amazing there's tea tree there's mint in here mm -hmm. it does smell that's like mint okay all right and then you wash and then you and then you condition it. Okay, Just I feel like teenagers shampoo. are going to be into this. So this is huge right now. I mean, if you go to the masses on social media, they're yeah. all talking about Tree Hut's scrubs. They're the sugar scrubs. So many different scents. Oh, mm -hmm. A scent every season. Smell. There's What's so that? many different scents. But it's getting mm -hmm. a lot of fame because it gives its great lather, great exfoliation for those dead skin I like cells. it. We actually have 100 million dead skin cells that we shed a day, so you need to get things. You need to get Wait, them all off where do they go? In the air, in dust. The air. Dust is actually mostly dead skin cells. I don't even really know what gross. this is, and I want it. Me too, because the like bottling. The packaging. Me yeah. too. Is this is why it sells so what well. Is this it? is necessary. This is actually a line it's of body care chic. products. It's so is chic. It oil? It's clean. It's a, um, actually a shower gel. Oh, gel. So you're going to use this on your body because our smell? largest oh. organs mostly from the nice. way down. There's sandalwood. There's eucalyptus. There's unscented, so whatever you Oh, this was fragrance-free. So I lied. I said it smelled nice, but it really smelled you were like just, nothing. There's still, I don't want to be rude. You were trying to be a pleaser. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I, I just <laughs> need counseling. Like but it is mm -hmm. clean ingredients. It's good for you, and you might as well take care of your body like now you take care of your one. face. Now, eucalyptus, I like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, okay. Eucalyptus good. across the board. <laughs> Esker, your sh shower aromatherapy, all my Okay, so now we've done this, and now we got to get cozy. Oh, so let's get relaxed. Let's get soft, right? Because oh. there's means oh, on how the shower can take You like this one better than this one? Yeah, feel it. I mean, if you can't be naked in your house, let's just put on a nice, luxurious bath. Yeah. Yeah. Second to best thing. Yeah, right? or you that can you be can naked. Use, or be naked. But this Jenna is don't care. Like the a, house is your oyster. Thanks. And that's what I say. <laughs> do what you do. You do you, Jen. I sure <laughs> do. Every single day. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Thank you, Sarah. you so much. You can check out these products at today.com slash shop. Coming up next, y'all get into the Halloween spirit from pumpkin planters to creepy candles. Fun DIY decor you can make this weekend. Right after this. There you go. Good morning, welcome to you today. What's shaking eggs and bacon? Hold what? on, I'm just gonna say it. What? Badass. Oh, thank you. So do you think you'll act forever? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're gonna have lots of fun yeah. this morning. Yeah. 
Today is Friday the 13th, Ooh. so we thought it'd be the perfect time to scare up some Halloween decor. Here to help us get into the spirit is HGTV interior designer and DIY expert and our friend, Lauren Mack. Hey! Hi, Lauren! Hi, everyone. Don't you love Lauren's vibe? I love oh, it's Lauren's coming vibe. at us full. First of all, this into... is the best Halloween outfit I've yes. ever seen. Cutest. The color blocking? Cutest. All right. Okay, you. tell us about these really cute what is this? Sir, this is cement? concrete. Yes, concrete. You, anybody can do concrete okay. at home. Okay, guys. tell us what we do. That. So first of all, grab those leftover Halloween pails, and if you don't have a bunch of them, just run down to the thrift store, go yeah. to Goodwill. Look, you just they have tons right of them. Yeah, yes, they exactly. have them in the dollar store. Exactly. And then all you gotta do is just pour in the concrete. It sets in 15 minutes, and <laughs> you just peel the pumpkin off. Don't forget the uh, the cup inside. That'll give you a little space to put something in. Oh, a that's void. smart. Yeah. So then you just peel it all off. Oh my god. You have gosh. a cool pumpkin. Wait, Look can I? Can I ask you a question? Where, yeah. How do you mix this? Oh, the cement. Right. It's so easy. You just mix in water right into a bucket at the house, and it just it just sets. I mean, I you can use a little uh, adapter for it, or you can just. And now look what she's done. She's you made, made a, it a pot. Arrangement. Yes. Oh, and look, look, it's so cute. Isn't that you can fun? Paint it if you want or not. Yes, leave I, it I love this. a candle for your for your uh, walkway or flowers for your it's home. It's adorable. Okay, cool. this is good for a okay. nice little yes. creepy house party. Ghost. Yes, I love these ghost candles. They're so easy. Now there's a little. There, here's the pro tip for this. You want to set these candles in some hot water mm -hmm. uh, for about 10 minutes and then they start mm. to get a little more pliable. I want you guys Ooh, to get fun. in there. And then you just yeah. make you, them kind do of you do it while it's in the water? You do it while it's in the water, but while I'm going to do it out, because I'm a pro, I can do it out. These have been sitting a minute, so they're, they're really ready for action. And do you kind of want to just make them squiggly, squiggly? Yeah, give them a squiggle. Yeah. Do something fun with it. Are you happy with this squiggle? I am. Are you? It's yeah. your candle, girl. We I'm just live it. here. I love Listen, it. You actually can do them outside of the water. Oh, uh -huh. I like. Uh -huh. Fun. Isn't that fun? And now do we make a face? Yes. Grab your paint pen. Oh, okay. These are paint pens right here. And then you just make a little squiggly face. Isn't this easy? So, they're, you do, right so you're top? telling me these are friendly ghosts? Yes. They, well, they can be whatever. They can be scary, friendly, whatever. You know what I love? I love saving money. These candles, <laughs> you can use some old candles from your drawer, you girl. You don't have to spend anything. That's the biggest tip here is don't go out and spend a lot of money. Just take these things for you They're already cool. Had. I'm Isn't into mine. Great? Yours is smiley. Yeah, yeah, here's mine. Who? Oh, mine is nice scary. Oh, I love it. Hey. Oh, those are so <laughs> Oh, very I love fun. It. fun. And even we can do them. We yeah. like DIY yes. that's really doable. Me too. Okay. Because I'm a mom. I'm a busy mom. I don't got time for a lot of things. Lighting is such a big way to really get a big impact for, mm -hmm. for Halloween. And these are just some sticky bats that you can cut out of um, felt. felt. Like oh, sticky back felt, you can get this at your craft store. Just peel them on off. You can download an image of a bat uh, on the internet, or you know, just kind of free. Also, it. not that I'm trying to cheat, but I did just decorate my house for Halloween because um, Mila shamed me saying I never yeah. decorated for anything. Oh, girl. And um, we found these bats on yes. the on the. Yeah. Amazon.com? Yes. That are just paper bats like this that we yes. put up on our wall. Look yeah. how easy See, you stick it right on the here, inside. Right? I love it. Isn't that Those great? Cool. And if you can't do a uh -huh. bat, listen, you can also do like a spider. You can do a pumpkin. kitty cat, a pumpkin, whatever. But, a kitty cat. Ooh. Oh, I love it. And you can peel those right off when it's uh, over. Very cool. Isn't that great? It's addictive. Okay, now, okay. this is for the people that have a Roomba. This, okay. is, this is the Roomba turned Broomba. Okay. I like that. Oh, look oh at it. Oh, my gosh. Ah, shot. Get the shot it's before it's last. over. Before ah. it's over. Roomba. Come on, Roomba. You know what you're doing. This is this is a double-decker deal, because DIY, because you get your house cleaned and you got a spooky effect. By the way, it's so cool. How'd you do okay, that? Okay, so this is so easy. I took a, a broomstick. Yeah. I took a, uh-oh. Plunger. A plunger. Okay, this is just a plunge tip. Try I got to use it. not like a this. used one. Ex Please, that's a most important you, part. Thank you, miss. And then beyond that, I took a hula skirt, like from a leftover costume. So yeah. smart. All you got to do is add the broomstick to the skirt with a zip tie. Okay. So easy, right? You just do a little wrap around. Okay, zip it up. Uh, I actually did, I, I kind of did a little, just as a designer tip, I did it the opposite direction so I could fold it over later. So uh, Again, that you're sense? a designer. Well, I mean, you know, I want to finish, I want a Pinterest-worthy result. Yes, we know girl. what you want. Okay. So you do a little wrap around. Ski. Then you take these these zip tie, just assemble it like this. Look at your this. nails. They're Carol. fantastic. You don't have to come find them. Come see my ready. nails. Pan. Okay, once that's all done with that, you flip it, it over. Let it, uh, it. Uh, uh, it's like in Harry Potter. It is like 
the hairy bright. Oh, and then you just let it zip around your house? Yes, and then you just do this, uh, tie it with some twine. Ours is mad because it wants to get out of what that cage. We put ours today. in a cage. It wants to be free. That's what my kids do when I put them in a Let's cage. Free up. Just kidding. How old are your kids? I have a three-year-old and a seven-year-old. Oh, she's like us. And I am trying, uh-oh. Well, we are, I think it got sucked well, in. Um, you know I what? I get the before. We'll show. unpack it after. <laughs> okay. All right, coming up next, Jen and I go head-to-head -head in a sweet competition. Can't Catch wait. This. We're coming up. Great job. Oh, it's so cute. So Good job. <laughs> it oh, means what happened. You could try to clean the hula. Yeah. We love a national holiday around here. We also love sweets. So, of course, we had to celebrate National, national Dessert Day. Day. Okay, it's officially tomorrow, <laughs> and it is official that every day has a holiday. Yes. But our girl Donna is That's challenging true. us to a dessert -y yes. day duel. Okay. So ladies, I don't know about you, but every time I see a dessert in a TV show or movie, I immediately have to have it. Yes, That's what's about to happen to you guys, okay. because I'm going to give you a question about dessert and pop culture. And if you get it correctly, buzz on in, and you just might get a sweet treat yourself. Oh, you get the okay. dessert? Oh you my might God. just get the dessert. Okay. Please let me finish the question. Okay, we're not going to buzz in. Okay, here we go. In 2003, singer Khalees' hit song about what dessert brought boys <laughs> to the Oh, car. milkshake. Yes. Oh! Come on, Mikey. And then, Hoda, do you know what you say? The milkshake brings all the boys in the yard. And but I like, like it's, it's better than yours. Okay. Right? It's, it's better, better than yours. I could teach you, but, but I have to no charge. Okay, here we go. Number two. In the movie Matilda, what dessert is Bruce Bob Trotter forced to eat? Cake. Yes, and thank you for waiting. That is indeed chocolate oh. cake. Chocolate cake. One yes. four, come on, chocolate Mikey. Cake. That is my favorite scene in that movie. Wait, okay, let's see. number you three. No. Are you having a bite of everything? No, yeah, go okay. for it. I had a sip. Okay, I just ate breakfast. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, this dessert is the title of Mandy Moore's 1999 debut single. Oh, is it candy something? Candy cane? Candy it's something? Candy. candy. Oh, candy. candy. Good job. Simple, Simple and sweet. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Will you What's share? Will you yeah. share? Make her treat, Mikey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, number four. Homer Simpson's absolute favorite dessert is a pink sprinkled what? Homer Simpson? Pink sprinkled. I see it. <laughs> Ice cream cone? No. Oh. Interesting. Soda. Donut. Donut. <laughs> no. Donuts. That's like we the both only thing I, I know thought somebody was Simpsons. trying to cheat and I thought they said ice cream cone. Donuts. I actually Look looked at up that. You know that. Yeah, yeah, you know, know, been know there. that. And yeah. how perfectly mimicked are those donuts in front of you? Okay, yep, here perfect. we go. Okay. In what coming of age film does Jason Biggs have an encounter with a fruit filled dessert? What is American Pie? You are correct, Jennifer Good America. Job. Oh, this is the best ever. You want a bite? Yes. Okay. okay. All right, this is the tiebreaker, Lee. Wait, hold on. We hold gotta on, be serious about it. Okay, I'm ready. Wait, okay. the tiebreaker? I have three desserts on my thing. Well, no, I, one, no, was, because... one was because they felt bad, I think, because no one got the Homer mm -hmm. Donuts. All right, ready? Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's do what? Next. Okay. The Golden Girls were notorious for splitting what dessert together at the kitchen table? Cheesecake? Yeah. Oh my God, oh. you got it! You got it! You got it! You got it. There we go. Mikey. Now, Hoda, because you have the most desserts, your prize is? What is that? please. Pepto-Bismol for later. <laughs> you all are crazy. The good news is Thank she's you. not lactose intolerant. Thank That's you. True. That's all true. Good.
Thank All right, you, I'm Donna. glad we got to sing Kalisa's milkshake. That, that was, was fun. That was great. And we'll be back right after this. <laughs> y'all tonight you can watch hoda's one hour special jada story with jada pickett smith on 8 7 central here on nbc and jada will be live on our show next tuesday or that also next week actress Issa ray and naomi watts will stop by plus our girl maria shriver oh, have a great weekend guys bye everybody bye. On today's food, yes, chef, I'm lucky to get to go behind the scenes at some of the hottest restaurants here in New York. The idea behind the show is not just my love of food, but my respect for the chefs who pour their hearts and souls into it. So while we hang out and eat and drink, we get to learn a lot more about what inspires the chefs. We also get to take a little peek back into the kitchen, of course, where the magic happens. First up, wraps from the team of the famed musket room north of Houston Street is now co-owners and chefs at Raps just down the block. It's a century old space where the famed Parisi Bakery used to be, but now they're going for an Italian French vibe while paying homage to the rich history of the place. Take a look. Today I'm gonna to take you inside exclusive access to a place where two powerhouse female chefs are absolutely killing it. And they're doing it with the help of a nearly 100 year old oven. This is Raf's, come on in. Baby, only How did you guys meet? We met at Musket Room three years ago when I was hired as the executive pastry chef. Executive chef Mary Atia and executive pastry chef Kamari Mick worked so well together at the famed Michelin starred Musket Room restaurant, they teamed up again with Raps. How did your guys' sort of relationship in the kitchen work? It was just the two of us. We would be listening to true crime and Broadway and we just bonded outside of food. You guys bonded over true crime we, and Broadway? <laughs> yes. Bread, Broadway, <laughs> and true crime. And true crime. Raff's serves up French Italian cuisine and fresh baked goods in a location with a rich history. Even brick ovens called hearths from the 30s are still used today. They put these ovens in the back that we have running now. These same ovens that are same here? Same ovens, yeah. I've been here almost 100 years? Yeah. Yeah, what it's makes incredible. It? Knowing that the hearth was the heartbeat of the neighborhood, they were here making bread. We wanted that to be the first thing people saw when they walked in the restaurant. The chefs co-own Raffs. They partnered with the owners of the Musket Room, twin sisters Jennifer and Nicole. Raffs is named after their grandmother, Raffaella. The sort of, you know, empowerment that's happening with women in this space, you know, not just your partners that are sisters, but elevating women, that's a really cool part of this story. How important is that to you? I think it's really important. I think that we come to work every day not thinking, oh, we're women doing this job, but it would also be irresponsible for us to disregard the role we play and the example we set for younger women wanting to do this and, and see that we can be successful and accomplish our goals, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important. I'm a girl dad, I, mean, I got three yeah, girls. We, you can do anything. These stories are important. 
They really are. How did you get into cooking? And in your sort of Lebanese background, how has it influenced what you do here? Well, the I think the, the career of, yeah, I think I grew up always and loved eating. I grew up in a family where we celebrated food. My, my background was Lebanese, so I was always eating, you know, pita and hummus, which were unique at the time, but now obviously everybody enjoys those. I would go to lunch with grape leaves in my lunch bag and, uh -huh. and tabbouleh, and people would be looking at what I was eating. And, you know, I felt a little bit like an outcast, but also very proud that I was enjoying this great food and able to teach, you know, my friends about it. So you weren't like 10 year old super chef? No, no, I just think it was never, taught to me that it could be a career. Uh -huh. I would watch, you know, food shows on the Food Network and be enamored by it, but not ever think, well, I could go do that. Right. So I think when I moved to New York, it really, it, it spawned this interest and it was like, oh, people actually do this as a career. Right. And you didn't even like, I mean, there wasn't a pastry chef in your family, right? I mean, where did that come from? My parents are really great cooks. My mom is from Brooklyn. My dad is Jamaican. Amazing cooks, terrible bakers. My mom would only buy like the roll-up cinnamon rolls. I know them and have them. <laughs> um, like the proof and bake, and then she would overproof them and then underbake them. So it was, it was a little bit of a mess when it came to baking in my house. And then I decided to ask her. I was like, "Hey, can we bake together? I would love to learn." Number How old one, were you at this time? I was twelve. Even, even, if even that. So we started baking and. I got really good at it. We went from cake boxes to from scratch, and then I started selling things in school. Um, cakes, cobblers, really? pastries, yeah. <laughs> to not only students. You're hustling. I was hustling. I was always an entrepreneur. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Made fresh today, yeah, perfect, I can tell. Perfect. <laughs> fresh out of the oven. God, that's good. <laughs> what are we going to eat today? Because you work on a morning show, I've brought you out a candied orange only croissant. It looks too good to eat. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Not too orangey. That's delicious. For our croissant, we use a Karen Spring flour, which has a really nice caramel note to it. So details. It goes into it's, the details and the trial and error it's and the, the work. Yes, yes. We, we ate a lot of croissants. Right. Yeah. That's the tough work. It's the hardest part of That is the of hardest job. part of the gig. Yes. Do you ever just Somebody's eat one bite and just go, oh, that's just garbage. That's, <laughs> that's terrible flour I'm, there. I'm at this point now where I cannot look at a bad croissant. <laughs> This is our carte de musica, French ham, jambon de Bayonne, and some Parmesan, rosemary, Sicilian olive oil. Very crispy, flat cracker from Sardinia. We cook in the oven as well to give it a little char. It's one of our popular dinner time snacks to start the meal. Oh my, my god, that was crazy. Yeah. Right. I could eat this the for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Yeah. Be honest, to it. does it bother you guys when people come in like me and, and they just, like, they're not paying attention to detail? And they're just ordering food? Because every detail obviously means so much. You drove through Sardinia and here it is. Like, <laughs> you know, it pierces the heart a little <laughs> when, when, when you see somebody not. Yeah. <laughs> Right. The pastas hit the table and then you don't see them eat it yeah. for 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> this is our spinchone. On the bottom, as you can see, this crispy, nice crust is our house-made focaccia, tomato sauce, anchovies, and cacio cavallo cheese. It's a Sicilian pizza, more okay. or less, and we believe they were probably cooking these in the heart 100 oh, years ago. It's a little bit of homage years. to yeah, yeah. the flour. You need another log in the fire, Chef? I love it's behind <laughs> <Okay>. you. <laughs> And your spidey senses tell you that the 1935 oven is down a log. <laughs> mm. wow. yeah. Can we cook something together? We will. We'll light you by the fire. We're going to show you the spinchone. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. So Mine's we'll not finish. so bad. No, I think. James Beard nominee. I, I think you're actually hired. I think it's huge in there. Oh yeah, it goes 14 goes feet back. 14 we... feet back. So then we do one more layer of cheese. Okay. You just like practice boxing here. Yeah, we, <laughs> we can only hire shorter people. <laughs> hey, it's a beauty. <laughs> can I get a doggy hired. bag, please? Keys. All right, on to my croissants. All right, we got a croissant. A croissant. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Ooh la la. Roll like the wind. How are you with piping bags? Ooh, you 
might have exposed my new fly zone. <laughs> so I've we... never done a piloting bag in my life. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. C'est magnifique. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Mm. Appreciate it. This is incredible. Of course. You guys are doing here. Come back soon. Tell you what, their food really does taste better out of that 100-year-old hearth. Next up, C is in Charlie. Three Korean-American guys who grew up in Atlanta opened up their dream restaurant. The food's fantastic, but their story is even better. I headed downtown to find out why it's so hard to get a table there. You are in for a good one today. Taking you behind the scenes. They're closed right now. See as in Charlie's name of this restaurant. And they're doing stuff, man, that nobody else is doing. Come on in. So David, if I walked into this restaurant and I've never been here before, what's the vibe? So as soon as you sit down, even before you get a water, you get a sake shop. Let's go! <laughs> so that's our little gesture of saying, let's be friends. In Korean, there's a saying, um, which literally means let's have a drink. Are we going to be friends? Right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> hey, cheers. cheers. Thank you so Someday. much for having me. Well, that's a great way to start your experience oh, at yeah. Ciaz and Charlie. An experience quite unlike any other. The guys describe their food as part Korean, part Southern, a reflection of themselves. All born in Korea, but raised in Atlanta, Georgia, where brothers Steve and Eric met David and became lifelong friends. So. After high school, you guys all had jobs in the food business, different types of jobs. What did you do? So as soon as we graduated high school, we came to New York for college. And okay. we actually all worked in the restaurant as a part-time job to me. Okay. Right. Um, so we were a server. At the time, also Eric was a server. So we all started out as a server, but eventually went At to different the restaurants, or you guys worked together? So we started off at a different restaurant, but first, like, manager job, we ended up at the same place. So he was, at, he was a line cook. We were like assistant managers, like captains. So mm -hmm. we worked together. At the time, it was difficult to work with friends because it was our first time working with friends. Mm -hmm. But uh, we that's when we actually had, had a shared dream and shared thoughts that, oh, maybe we should open up a restaurant one day. And tell me about those early conversations of what the three of you thought if you had an opportunity to open up a place like this. What did you want to achieve? What was important? We definitely wanted to uh, show our identity through our restaurant because we thought we were very unique in the sense that we're partially Korean, but partially from Southern states. So we really wanted to bring in th that to our, our restaurant. So at Sears and Charlie, what we do is that we serve uh, Korean tapas with a little bit of Korean and Southern flair. The guys grew up in the food industry. You can taste the foods and flavors from their childhood in their cuisine. Most of our dishes ties into our like history or like childhood memories. We wanted it to be like us, like us right. three. It's friends. like you're meeting you when you come in here. Right, yes. Yeah. So for example, Salisbury steak, 
our childhood memory of our parents used to bring like leftover hamburger patties to home and cook us a Korean food with it. So Chef wanted to kind of infuse that memory into and develop and make a dish out of it. Seoul's very steak, mm -hmm. like Seoul as in Korea Seoul. So with that, right, be nice play on that. Yeah. We usually do it with rice, but because we wanted to have a little southern kick to it, we serve it with the grits on the bottom instead. Oh, and let's it. try some. And there was food in your family. You we were always sort of in the food business. Yes, uh, our parents used to own a diner back in Atlanta. So we were always exposed to this kind of like a restaurant industry. And, you know, we we're always, I mean, he was always cooking because he's the big brother. So yeah. I was always cleaning the dishes. <laughs> what do you remember about that diner? Diner, uh, just being very hard. <laughs> the work? The work, yeah. Our parents used to always come home really exhausted and yeah, one of the things he, uh, Eric used to do was just cook, cook, you know, just a small thing for them to mm -hmm. make them happy, like, you know, cheer them up a little bit. Right. <laughs> Chef, did you always want to cook food? Yes, uh, I mean, I was exposed to just cook for my brother while my parents were working, so at that time, and then I was kind of getting interested in cooking and also being a chef, and in that sense, I always want to take my path to being a chef. Do you remember the cooks at your parents' diner? Did you have an interest in the kitchen? Did you go back there and watch, you know, short order food get made? Yes. What does C as in Charlie <laughs> stand for? Where'd that come from? So as an Asian immigrant, uh, letter C and R is really hard to pronounce. So back in the days, our parents would always say C as in Charlie, R as in Romeo over the phone or when they make communication. So, we were debating between the two, but R is in Romeo, I don't know, it kind of sounds like Italian restaurant at that right. point. So it was going to be R is in what? R is in Romeo. Oh, Romeo, yeah. Yeah, and I, we thought that sounded Italian, a little like yeah. an Italian it's New York, restaurant. you don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we decided to take C as in Charlie, so that's the name behind it. Everyone that comes in, they ask us, oh, so which one of you is Charlie? No, no, right. no, Charlie. It's such a cool name for a restaurant. Thank you. <laughs> Their recipe for success includes a cool vibe, fun dishes like popcorn chicken, and a dessert shaped like a bagel. You know, usually bagel is the first thing you have in the morning, but at our restaurant, bagel is the last thing you're gonna have. It literally looks like a bagel, but it's actually a monaca wafer uh, filled with cream cheese gelato and a homemade strawberry jam inside. I love that. Yes. Can we try some food? Oh yeah. Yes. So, These are fluke ceviche. Beautiful. Fluke and Clementine from Jeju Island, which is like the Hawaii, of, Hawaii of Korea. Korea. Yeah. Steve's parents are in Jeju Island at this moment. Right. Um, so it's so like they're, they're sending you Clementines in the mail? <laughs> <laughs> so this is like one of the ways to kind of express our feeling yeah. of missing them. Instead of a FaceTime call, you get eat dinner. <laughs> yeah. Put you right with them on that island. It's known to drive men's stamina. Um, oh, <laughs> kind of a straw, please. <laughs> All right, what's that? Nice. This is a sake that I share with my favorite guests, my regulars usually. Right, let's go. Cheers. Let's drink the whole thing, huh? Oh my god. This is like discovering long lost relatives. <laughs> oh. Chef, you're missing out. <laughs> oh wow, look at that. So this is the popcorn chicken? Yeah, yes. double fried, so it's extra crispy. But I've never had anything like it. It's like your version of a fried chicken. Yeah. But it tastes different. It's unique, you know, it's delicious. We call it KFC cream fried chicken. Next, we have the shrimp toast roll. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, I could see you doing 400 of these a night. Oh, yeah. These are one of the very popular ones since we opened. It looks like a carbonara, right? Wow, I can smell it. Wow, that's delicious. Yep. This is going to win you a Michelin star. Chef, delicious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do you have here? This is our Salisbury steak. And on the bottom is our Greer cheese grits. Oh my gosh. So we swapped out the rice for the southern connection. Yeah, sure. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Wait, what's the cheers again? Sorry. Kumbay. 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 On the menu, a popular kid-friendly Korean dish. They say it's a staple, like PB&J. Ooh. Here is our mushroom bibimbap. Whoa. Wait, this is the childhood yes. peanut butter and jelly play? Of course, now it's more than a peanut butter and jelly, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's magnificent. So we'll make that together? Yes. All right, let's cook, chef. Oh, right. All right, we're going to make some bibimbap. 
Uh, you have fancy mushrooms. Pickle shallot with dill, butter, minced garlic, and a poached steak. Great! I mean, that looks beautiful. And now, crack the egg. Very gentle, so you don't pop the egg yolk. Wow, that's like perfect timing. Thank you so much. It's like five to go. <laughs> oh, man. Was that good or what? Coming up next, an old school Italian eatery with a huge wait list, and this place is beloved by celebs. We are in Greenwich Village, and we're gonna see the Pope of Greenwich Village food. That is Mario Carbone. We're gonna sit, we're gonna talk, we're gonna cook. It's like a time portal when you walk through this door. I can hear Sinatra already. Come on in. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. What's it like to sit in here after 10 years? You know, where did this start? This started um, with the idea that what if Italian American food, this food that I grew up eating, loving, um, being me, what if I took all of my training and my knowledge from being a kid and my love for this and put it towards refining it a little bit? Take all I have um, and, and really bury myself in the theater of it all and, and make it something that's a really beautiful work of art. Do you ever sit back and go, God, I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to refine those meals that I remember as a kid, but like now you've done it at the highest of levels, you know, in the country, certainly here in New York with this spot and all the other spots. Do you ever sit back and go, God, I can't believe I actually did it. Sometimes, sometimes you, you get, you get some, some moments where you're just like, wow, I, that's, I can't believe it, it's going like that. Or, or you're sitting in the dining room yourself and you're watching you know, the, the theater, the, magic the, the show, the show take place in front of you se seamlessly, beautifully. Um, and, and like, wow, this, this thing really worked. It feels like a movie in here. And I feel like I'm immediately transported into a scene of Goodfellas or into an era, into a time, especially in New York City, in Greenwich Village. That was the whole idea. How do I take basically Ray Liotta's 42nd scene in the back of Copacabana? Yeah. From when, when they open the front door, they get hit with the music, right. they smell the food. The waiters are coming by, the waiters it's chaotic. Are coming by. There's like a random flambe happening in yes, the corner, yes. it just happens to be happening. People are yelling, they're bringing in a table, making yeah, way. Yeah, excuse me. Like the, the, the tray of desserts is way too big for the size of the hallway, so you just gotta kinda, excuse yeah. me, like, and it's it's all part of it, right? The bar is way too small for the number of people we have, so, so then you're compressed in this little environment. Right. You wanted to take that vision and make a cinematic experience in a I restaurant. Needed, I needed to extend it for six hours. 
right? You get a perfect 40 second scene that they spent all day right. working on that lives forever. I need to give that to 250 people over the course of six hours. Wow. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Right, it's a lot more than just the food. I yeah. Mean, you're, now you're concerned with the textures, the, the everything on the walls. It's a, it's a play set, it's, mm -hmm. it's a theater set, right? We are, we're the actors, the customers are the changing element of it, right? So every night we put on the same show, the exact same show for a different audience every right. night, right? We're cats on Broadway. Right. Like that's how we think about it. That's how you have to yeah, think about it. Yeah, but you care. It. Not saying that the Broadway actors don't care about the people in the seats, but you care about these patrons that are here. That's why they keep coming back. That's why they're uber famous. You've created um, a home for uh, at least, or, or this is the best play running, like, you know, well, as you with know, the tender love and care. As you know, the Italian table is a consummate home base, right? Whether it is your family or it's someone walking in the door, it's, hey, can I get you something? You know, like the Italian table is home for everybody. And I think that, that this is the extension of the Italian American table. You know, we, I want this to be a functioning museum of the Italian American food culture, right. home culture. Right. So you can witness the, the woolly mammoth that was the Italian American in 1958. Chef Mario Carbone opened his celebrity hotspot 10 years ago. Now, it's nearly impossible for mere mortals to get a reservation. There's this whole celebrity factor in here. Jay-Z sitting in the corner any given night. I mean, that's part of New York and it's part of the uh, allure of it all. But how do you feel about all of that? It's hugely flattering, right? I mean, because the people that we're talking about can make a call right. to go anywhere right now and get in the door, right? Like, th their people will call somebody and they'll get in anywhere. So I think that for me... Why like, do they want to come here, do you think? Anonymity is really important to us, like that, that everyone kind of has, gets their own experience and nothing's interrupted and we, something we preach here and make sure that you know, each table, whether they're a celebrity or they're, they've saved up to have, spend their anniversary here, are treated equally. But there's a million Italian restaurants right even around here. What makes Carbone stand out so much? I think it's the sum of all its parts, right? Like it, there's, there's so many people and parts that make up a restaurant, right? It's, it's an old business, you know? It, it takes a lot of hands, a lot of buy-in. We have an amazing group of people that have basically been here since day one. Um, we put a ton of care into the food. We buy the absolute best ingredients. We try really, really hard to give you dinner as the show every night. Mario's vision comes from his upbringing raised in a traditional Italian-American family in Queens, surrounded by home-cooked food. Who was cooking for you growing up? My mom cooked every night. She's a fantastic cook. Her parents were born in Italy, and they were sort of amongst my first babysitters. So I would be with them and invariably in the kitchen where they were cooking all day long. I was always in the mix. Carbone's magic has spread to Miami with a restaurant and star-studded pop-up called Carbone Beach. So we got a plot of actual sand on the beach in South Beach. We put up this huge tent, made it as luxurious as possible, and really turned the, the, the show of this restaurant that we've been talking about. I was about to say, about. are you thinking cinematically when you set that, you know, yeah. what is it like when you walk in? Is it like, a, is it cinematic in a movie and yeah, a script? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an over-the-top Carbone meal that takes what we do at Carbone and just amplifies it. It's Frank of the Copa in the 60s. You sound like the Martin Scorsese of food. <laughs> Ricky Tonelli is Carbone's day-to-day -day face, a larger-than-life personality. Ricky takes care of everybody. Can America meet Ricky? Like AKA the, the face. How long have you been here, Ricky? Since day one, yeah. Can, can you whip up a things? little something, something? You know, we'll bring out a couple of classics. How's okay. that? Carbone classics like spicy rigatoni, Oh, come on, Ricky. The world famous Look spicy rigatoni rice. Beautiful. You don't see, you don't. Look at that. Buon appetito. Grazie. That's delicious. Sausage. You get the sausage, I, right? Of course, you get the bite of it. With the tortellini, there's a pinch point. You have to pinch them together. All right, let's learn how to cook it. Let's do it. You are going to get a special pass today. At the Carbone Kitchen, where a few people can say they've been and actually cooked in. About to rock it. All right, chef, what's the first step to the tortellini? Okay, first step we've already done for you, which is Thank baking. You. <laughs> you're welcome. Baking the dough. Sheeted super, super thin. These are the things that people at home can make. They can make a touch of carbone by baking this. 100%. Here's our filling. Two different ricottas. This is sheep's milk and cow's milk. Salt, pepper, 
thyme, nutmeg. Put a little dollop here, drop of water to adhere it. And then you're gonna pick it up, pull it into a half moon, give it a little pinch. Bring the two ends together here. This art, they're so thin, it's crazy. Just right in the water. Right in the water. How come you don't ask Siri to set a timer like I do at home? <laughs> and then the sauce is just melted butter and water. This is our Sunday sauce, bolognese. Same mix as the meatballs. That's one order. I think a couple of these are mine. How, how, do, how do they look to you, Yeah, chef? I think maybe that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. Uh, the one that's like, uh. That is literally the perfect bite of food. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank so excited to get started with cooking and today food but before we do before we do that we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes, producer Talia is in the house we just want to say hey welcome happy to today first day. it's her first day of school go we're, Talia we're so happy you're well. here she's here and you know who else we're so happy to have oh. if, well she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit food network show Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy and delicious meals for you and your family Reed's the star of the pioneer woman and a best-selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. Oh, we're so happy you're you here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I love it. Yeah. We, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh my gosh, oh, thank you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, oh. it, it was. we did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We <laughs> sort of built this huge tent out there, but it was fun. And the, the great thing is it was a lot of work, but the day of we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you and do any, did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good. You just no, relaxed. No, no, no. I, know. Sure. I was going to say, who does sure. rehire as the no, That's why I was able to relax and have fun. Yeah, right? And to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It must yeah. have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, that's my favorite picture of the two oh, of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's he's doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything okay, is great. Back We're on the horse. Very, very lucky. All right. What are we going to cook? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate I know. cake you know today, um, it's really good. Why is everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I think I you would have supported me. It you. was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> But you I, should see what she does to chips. Oh, I, well, you know, <laughs> you know it's morning. It's happening again. You have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So you will. after the cake, I thought it'd be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheet pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook, really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So 
My favorite ingredient is this is store bought gnocchi. Oh, so and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you just buy just it. Throw it in there? Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just did? Out. You just dumped everything on the sheet everything pan? Everything on the sheet I pan. thought you had to boil oh, it. Oh, no, 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 because we're going to roast it. Oh. So then What's I've that, got. Pesto? Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh. Did I'm trying not to get pesto on you, so I moved it away from your beautiful. Marie, can you buy the pesto or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. See, I like everything. So yeah, she's speaking happened. our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah, so they, that's it. Because pesto is so flavorful, it has garlic and, and you know, And do you need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, just mix it all around mix like it all that. Around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh, my gosh, Jenna. we have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So. I like to do a little balsamic Do you want us to help oh, you? Yes, glaze. Yes, help me and grab some go. Parmesan shavings. So do you just, that? I love balsamic glaze. Yes. I do everything I do. on anything. And you know what? I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what, what is that doing? smell? This is so, kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this, but. Wait. We could do this too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven, is dress this basil? it. basil? What did you I tore that? basil. Oh, I tore just, basil. Yep. And I, I'm so lazy, I don't even want to chop basil anymore. You just chop it. By the way, I, I like it on exactly. oh, Should we go around the back? Yeah, more? we have another recipe. Okay, okay great. Right. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're, they're just, I, I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept mm. because you basically roast. Any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Oh, so yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata what squash. What is that? I'm what obsessed is with it. Do. do you ever so put it on it? toast? Oh, Wait. yeah, mash, mash yes. it up. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just a squash. At, this is what it looks like. And oh, it's in basically the store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. So ah. butternut, it can be a little bit tough, Should not I do, very tasty. Add yes. Some? Drizzle and then we're salt gonna do pepper. another roasted vegetable situation, salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. This is so brilliant. Wow. And this then is just so toss. brilliant. But here's what's fun about what? it. So roast it and it's like 450, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And look how gorgeous. So that's delicious on its own, but I build a salad oh, out of this. Thank you. So basically, you make your own dressing too, don't you? Well, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes I doctor up bottle dressing. So but I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. That's delicious. Mm. Isn't it good? Yes. How about and the dressing mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And this then, is isn't it pretty? 10 okay. plus. 10 plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. These? Yep. Mm. Yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranate seeds. Mm. So I love pomegranates. It's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Great. doesn't love. Great. Thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's a thank lot of TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. <laughs> anyway. Bree, <laughs> thank you so much for these recipes. Head today.com slash food. And for Bree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head today.com slash shop. I predict a bestseller. Me too. Okay. <laughs>
And we're back with today's food. Thrilled to say good morning to our next guest. Finally, after all of those teases, the pioneer woman herself, <laughs> Reed Drummond, has made it all the way from her ranch in Oklahoma. Are you near Blake's ranch in Oklahoma? Not so much. Not so much but, you know, we're in the sta same state. Yeah. So, you know, we, we know each other. When I was there marrying him and Gwen, I would have stopped by your ranch Seriously, instead of the Seriously, next time. Or yes, your 25th yes, wedding yes. anniversary. I could have you, you renewed can... your vows. <laughs> oh, well, Reese also out with a brand new cookbook. It's called Super Easy. It features more than 100 mm. shortcut recipes, which we like the sound of that. Actually, lots been going on in the ranch in Oklahoma. You look absolutely stunning. You've got oh, a daughter who just got married, right? Yes. Hard to believe. Yeah, and you're about to celebrate your 25th anniversary, and Carson's going to do your renew your vows for you. <laughs> that's that's hard to believe too. I know I'm only 29. I don't know how I can <laughs> get married. You for look 29. Years. What happened you do. To you? during COVID? All I did was eat and drink and not work out. And well, listen, same. I I was wearing pandemic pants this time last year. I don't know if you remember, but. But uh, yeah, I just, you know, the wedding was a great inspiration and motivation. But then once I started kind of uh, exercising more and getting healthier, it felt so good yeah. that I just kept going. So I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm over that hump. And now it's about just maintaining and, and yeah. enjoying. Well, I don't so. know if these delicious recipes are going to be uh, on any maintenance, but they are really smell good. Uh, speaking of my wellness journey, yes. let's eat some tots yes. Yes. Uh, with cheese let's. all over them. So, yeah. It starts with chicken. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so, I'm going to make tachos. Now, do you know what tachos are, Carson? No. No idea. You need to know. So, <laughs> tachos are just like nachos, but they're made with tots. Oh, Yum. So, oh. I, baked, I baked some tots with a little we cumin and chili powder. We have the gang eating already. Oh, Cook right. some chicken. Add some celery. So, these are buffalo chicken tachos. Yum. Celery, garlic, and green onions. Did you and make up tachos or is that a thing? I never heard of tachos. It's kind of a thing, but it hasn't okay. swept the nation yet. Yeah, it's going now to. Well, I'm yeah. kind of hoping. Uh, It'll but be trending by the end of the segment. You can put on nachos, you can put on tots okay. and call them tachos. So Love it. Then, of course, buffalo sauce, and then you just let oh. this simmer. Mm, I started delicious. with raw no. chicken, but you can do rotisserie chicken to okay. make it easier. Yeah. Mm. So simmer that until it's luscious. Have you and changed saucy. what you cook now because of your sort of wellness journey? Is it? Is it Put you no. on a different path? Or you <laughs> no. And, you know, the thing is, is I have I have teenage boys, college students, uh, lad. Right. A, mm -hmm. Ranchers. You know, yeah, cowboy. And so I have to make food that everybody loves. Right. And yeah. I don't, I'm not good when I deny myself, yeah. you know, whole Butter categories of food. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of learning to eat. I like to say I, I eat a Rhode Island-sized piece of cake instead of a Texas-sized piece <laughs> right. of cake. That's the best way you get the flavors in the taste. It's, it's that just taste. It's delicious. Really good. So Everything's good. good. So, yeah. good. so yeah. you, you pull the tots out of the oven. Mm -hmm. They're seasoned, so, so. so they're a little bit elevated. I mm -hmm. kind of push them into a pile. Yeah. Pepper jack cheese yeah. all over. I okay. mean, this this is what life's all about right Oh, here. right here, yeah. And then you spoon the saucy chicken all oh, over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can do ground beef that? and that's a hit, you know right? black beans and do sort of. Is a the chicken mix. gonna because it's hot melt that cheese or are you putting this back in the no, oven? No, it's going back in the oven. Okay, yeah. Because so, so. okay. you want to melt the cheese like uh, nachos. So mm. all the cheese you want melts. Mine. It. Oh, here we that's go. That's okay. yeah. the cheese. Actually, Pepper jack cheese, the buffalo yeah. sauce. Mm. It's, it's hearty. It's, it's got a kick, huh. but oh jeez! Did you know redheads can tolerate uh, spicy food more than anybody really? else? Really? Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. So this is good. Is that true? You love it. That's we'll delve great. into what? the genealogy of that some other time. But, wow. but basically, you garnish with. Uh, Blue cheese, mm -hmm. and to make blue cheese dressing, I just take ranch dressing mm -hmm. and add blue cheese to it. Oh, oh and clever. It's very shortcut. easy. You can Who do knew? bottled ranch or you can make your own, but Brilliant. nice little shortcut. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, wow. this is why my teenage boys love me. Oh, I can see I mean, that is delicious. Hey, Carson, really, yeah. really good. Hey, this is gone. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wham. What happened? Oda. Oda's eating a whole bunt cake already. Oda, we have wow. not started the cake at, segment yet. Hey, take a breath. No one's missed these eating segments more than Hodes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Remember, Rhode Island, not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> She's going state by state. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that does bring us to our case. chocolate cake. Now, this is your secret recipe, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, confession, my, my top secret ingredient in my top secret cake is dark chocolate cake mix. Oh, okay. And what? listen, I had my house full of humans during the pandemic yeah. and large six, you know, six foot five humans yeah. and football players. And I had... I was making so much food that I was about to lose my religion. I mean, <laughs> every day I was just like, I can't do it anymore. So I'm not afraid to whip out the chocolate cake. I doctored it with 
you know, bittersweet chocolate chips just to make it a little bit more uh, rich. Wow. But the thing <laughs> is... This is the secret. It's a box cake. Well, it's what, oh, yeah. Okay. But the thing is, I'm topping it with ganache, oh, which is Ooh. heavy cream wow. and good oh, well, quality go. chips. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. all, two ingredients. Yes. And then it turns into this Here. luscious. Ooh. And are these oh, inside this becomes, or is this like a topping this thing becomes, situation? So, well, you can just eat one if you like. So you just made, okay, yeah. So you made the, the we cake. We gotta go. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, I really want to understand this. And then drizzle. Drizzle. Uh, I do sprinkles on top, <laughs> but after Halloween, you can take Beautiful leftover cake. candy, chop it, it up, and top. put it on top. So hold up. Hold oh, on. my God. Happy plate. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Show it. Clean Literally. plate club. Clean plate club. Clean plate Done. club. There's, you left a lot. And she's going to eat owls. And also, she's going to move in with you. And she's she's giggling. She's giggling a lot over there. Congratulations on everything. Love your show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, of course, you can find all these recipes at today.com slash food and pick up a copy of Super Easy at today.com slash shop. This morning on Today Food, lasagna two ways with layers of pasta, meat sauce, and creamy cheese. Lasagna is one of the ultimate comfort foods. But get ready for something a little new this morning. Reed Drummond a.k.a. The Pioneer Woman, has created two recipes. They're going to become your favorites. Her latest book is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier. Wait, good morning. Hi, Savannah. It's good to see you. Now, I, I can't, you're doing something really different with lasagna, which is risky. Well, it's a little risky, but when you see these recipes, you will totally understand. I like to mash things up, and yeah. you know, you don't want to make lasagna over and over and over. So we are going to make shrimp scampi lasagna roll-ups. I like it. Which mm -hmm. are as good as they sound. So okay. I cook some shrimp in butter, onion, garlic, a little thyme, and... Um, Chopped it up. Okay. So I'm going to make a sort of a shrimpy, cheesy filling, and this is cream cheese, ricotta, egg, and parmesan. I mean, what could you, what could possibly go wrong? I know. So I mean, good. it's all right. Sign me up. Yes. So I'll let you stir this together, okay. and I'm going to start on the white sauce. Um, my new cookbook has. Lots of fun recipes like this. Yeah, where, I like that it's different. Yeah, and buffalo chicken quesadillas, for instance. Mm -hmm. I have two teenage boys at home. Yeah. Um, my girls grew up and left me. <laughs> so so you've got those brutes at home. So see. rude of them. You still got Charlie the dog? Well, Charlie's not with us anymore, oh, but I have I have Walter. Okay. Oh, Walter. And I have a couple of other little bassets running around. Look so. at the whole crew over there. It's like, Savannah, oh my how could you ask Hi. that? But, oh, no, it's okay. Charlie lives on in his books. Yes, and, he does. We read his books all the time. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, so I, I stirred it. So that's all stirred together, and I am making just a beautiful white sauce, and okay. it's, I started with the roux, and it has cream and milk, mm -hmm. and so you cook and cook and cook until You're this You're trying to thick. thicken it up, right? Thicken it up. Is that thick enough pepper. or not really? This looks great. Okay. This isn't quite there, but right. I have, I have some already television. finished. Yes. So I'm going to have you help me build a oh, roll-up. Okay. So this is the filling you just stirred together. Mm -hmm. Take about... A generous third a cup. Okay. And put it on the end of the... Oh, this has the... Okay, the whole thing is in here. Our yeah. shrimp, our everything. And these are cooked lasagna noodles. Mm -hmm. I cooked them about half the time mm -hmm. that the package says. Okay. And then just roll it up. Yep. That's the name, lasagna oh roll-ups. They're so cute and pretty. What do they you think? They are so cute. Oh Amazing. God. Are you dying? Oh, yeah, my goodness. Not. Between bisque and a lasagna. Oh. Uh, good oh. point. That's exactly what it is. Oh. And then I always put the seam side down. Yeah, of course, to make it look pretty. I poured the white sauce in the bottom of the dish. Oh. And then I'll let you pour and the then rest gonna, of it. Am I pouring over. or am I drizzling? No, pour. Okay, pour, pour that get sucker. in there. Okay, yeah. Why not? Look at that creamy yummy. It is Isn't so that gorgeous. Good. Yes. And then top it with mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And you can see the finished dish right here with parsley on top. That doesn't look crazy difficult either. No, it's not. And my daughter who lives in Dallas now uh, saw my new cookbook and she said when I come home, will you make me the shrimp oh. scampi lasagna roll-up? So I mean, why not? Look at it. It's okay. gorgeous. I want to taste that. So that's lasagna one way. And the now this shocked way, me. Lasagna soup. I mean, it's it's really earth-shattering. Okay, it's, tell me, tell me. I'm gonna have a bite. It's beautiful. So started with ground beef, mm -hmm. sausage, uh, onion, oh. garlic, yeah. thyme, oregano, and I just cooked it, and then added. Mm. Oh my God! Try it. Let's try that. Savannah, just take your Delayed time. reaction. So good. <laughs> take okay. Your time. And just turned it into a really delicious uh, whole tomatoes, tomato paste, mm -hmm. uh, parsley, and you can see the whole tomatoes. I actually like to let them cook down a little bit. Yeah. And then break them up because oh. they're a little softer. Mm -hmm. Anytime I try to squeeze them with my hand, it winds up in my eye. Yeah. Or, <laughs> That's not fun. Or on my shirt, which is even worse. Even worse, exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of, you ground up the the uh, beef and then. Oh. Yes. Then you put in the drain the tomato. excess fat and then turn it into a beautiful soup. Mm -hmm. And then I cooked some 
broken up lasagna noodles. Oh. So this is that, and they're down at the bottom. Mm. It's like a hug. In. It is. Oh, <laughs> so really wait, what about point. the cheese? Where's the cheese? Okay, so okay. once you simmer away the soup yes. and the noodles are perfect, I make this little ricotta dumpling mixture. Oh, wow. Soup. And all it is is ricotta, Parmesan, salt, pepper, basil, and oh, parsley. Mm -hmm. Stir it together. Mm -hmm. mm. And then... When you serve up the soup, you just put little dollops right in the middle, oh and God. it's just, mm -hmm. if the soup is really piping hot, the yep. ricotta dumpling Starts just kind melt. of melts Can I come over it. to your house, mm -hmm. Reed? Yes, Is this yes. what we make there? Because it sounds fab. <laughs> Bring your kids, and uh, Lad will put them to work on the ranch. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. I love it. Thank you so much. We, how do you like Fantastic. the soup? It's amazing. 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 Which one do you like I better? Love the, I love the oh. soup. Yeah. It's crazy. We, we're torn. Can you I, tell? I, I like vote for soup and. Uh -huh. Well, you know what though, and then you get a piece of shrimp, shrimp on this yeah. one. That's the thing, oh. and all that shrimp scampi oh. flavor is in there. You really redesigned healthy. lasagna. Yeah. Like, that's, that's next level. Yeah. Your wife I, loves your shrimp. I get bored really easily. <laughs> so I, I have to have some fun in the kitchen. Thank you so much, Rhea. I know you're coming back for the fourth yes. hour. More food. You can find all of these recipes at today.com/food. And for more on Rhea's book, go to today.com/shop. You can buy it there. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Drummond is busier than ever. Not only is she a mom of four, she's a New York Times bestselling author. She has three million Instagram followers, and she's a star of the hugely popular Food Network show. It's called The Pioneer Woman. And somehow she's also managed to find time to put together a new cookbook called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier, which features a couple of recipes that we're going to be making today. And she took all the photos for the book. Of course, she you does did everything. That too? She did that too. My Please. camera's a mess. My camera's sticky. I threw it all over it. So she's got roast chicken for us. Look at this. Yes, I, I'm so happy to cook we're, with you both. So I'm a big happy. fan of both of you. We so love thank you. you for having me. So wait, I can't cook. Yeah, me either. But wait, you're based in Oklahoma and you just do your sh everything from your home? Is that Pretty much. We, we film the show at our guest lodge. So yeah. at least they don't have to trip over my teenager's laundry, <laughs> yeah. you know, dirty socks at our real I house. I was telling but. her that my daughter, Christina, is like, she is the most incredible woman. And I, her oh, voice puts me to sleep. I watch her. Her life is oh, idyllic. Yeah. My voice puts my husband to sleep, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're making chicken today. Yes, I just want to show you my favorite way to roast chicken. Okay. Uh, I'm wearing gloves just for the spatchcocking. Yeah. So do you know what spatchcocking no, a chicken is? No, no, so no. Spatchcocking. It's super no. easy. Basically, okay. you have to put on gloves, cut okay. the backbone out, which is yeah. just snip on either side. Okay. That's the unpleasant and part. it out. But then you splay it out, and the whole point is to kind of... <laughs> The whole point is right. to get it as flat as possible. You can use your palm and uh -huh. kind of push, mm -hmm. but that way a chicken that would normally take 
um, a lot longer to roast. Yes. Just takes uh, really a fraction of the time. So then you wind up with uh, a beautiful roasted chicken. So what I like to do is make sort of an herb dressing, Ooh, and it's just uh, simple olive oil, mm -hmm. herbs, cut some baby gold potatoes in half and just toss them in the herb mixture. How long does this take you to make? You want to help me oh, just sure, kind of scatter sure. them around and then you'd brush the same mixture on the chicken. Now is this Good a job. greased pan or is this not? It doesn't have doesn't to be have because to be. the chicken has so much, so much uh, beautiful grease as it cooks. Okay. So just really about 30 minutes total. You start with a high heat and then lower it and then look what you wind up with. <laughs> wow. Halfway through I add cherry tomatoes mm. and zucchini and then put it back in and finish it up. And you have this beautiful roasted chicken, which I like to serve as roasted chicken, mm -hmm. but I also like leftover roasted Can chicken. Can we try this? Yes, of Maria, course. this is like your perfect meal, of by the way. That's right, that have is. Have a bite. Yeah. Chicken. I mean, oh. I like French fries, but yes. that, we're not having that. But I'm sorry, Maria. No. <laughs> I should make no, we're fries. Not, we're not allowed to eat that. I think mm -hmm. roasted chicken is the perfect mm. food. And that is yummy. It's good for weeknight family mm -hmm. meals. But Are you surprised at how your cooking, your passion, has turned into this incredible success? Well, you know, I think you nailed it. Just passion. If you if you are passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. it can you take you in directions you never thought you'd you'd go in. And that's um, I've had so much fun with Pioneer Woman because it started as mm -hmm. blogging. Mm -hmm. So come around. Um, and I want to show you what you can do with the chicken okay. if you don't want to slice it up and right. serve it as roast chicken. So you can shred it, mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a beautiful chicken and wild rice soup. Soup? Oh, Onions, yum. celery, and carrots. Okay. And then I'm going to deglaze with some white wine, okay. which I love in any soup. It just adds mm. beautiful flavor. And it's okay. getting to be soup weather out there. It's, yeah, it's getting to be. Finally, did you have a hot summer here well, like we did? We had, we had a scorcher. <laughs> it seemed to go on forever. And then add some flour just to thicken it okay. up. And then you'll cook this for a bit. Do all and your then, kids cook? No. Oh, <laughs> Sadly, no. My daughter Paige loves to cook and she's a great cook. The rest mm. of my kids love to eat. So, uh, welcome to my plight. But I love to cook and so it's, it's, uh, What's it's that? chicken stock. Chicken stock okay. and then water. Mm -hmm. And this is so easy what is wild that? rice. It's, oh, I didn't know it was that color. Yeah, it's not the mix that you buy in a box, oh. it's real wild rice. Um, Minnesota has that. has wild rice. Okay. That's kind of, it comes from Minnesota, and then you basically cook it until the rice is done. And mm -hmm. look how beautiful it looks. That's gorgeous. Oh. And then you add the chicken in, obviously. Um, and I like to kind of cream a it up cream. a little bit. Yeah, you got I to. Mean, I mean, I can't think of many dishes that I make that aren't made better with a little cream. <laughs> exactly. So you can add a little or a lot, and then let it simmer some more mm -hmm. with some aromatics, sage, and rosemary and thyme. Yes. And then I love to add Ooh. kale also. To at the, the soup? To the soup, oh, yeah. At the end, is that kind of the Kind last of at touch? the end, you yeah. just let it uh, and, simmer in the last few minutes. Tell us what this pasta situation yeah. is. Okay, so again, what you can do with the leftover chicken yeah. is make a chicken spaghetti casserole. And it's, I think casseroles are just the ultimate comfort food. And mm. this has mushrooms and mm. a little bit of wine, mm. of course. So mm. if you can spatchcock a chicken, you can do anything in life. <laughs> you can batch cock a chicken. We need a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> yeah. But really you can make soup and casseroles, enchiladas. Marie, so. this was these were all delicious, awesome meals. I and mean, they seem easy enough too. Very easy. Thank if you. it's not easy, I won't do it. Awesome. Oh, that's good. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. And for more about Reese Cookbook, go to today.com slash shop. <laughs>
everyone. Welcome back. We're back with Today Food. This morning's guest, you know her, you love her, Ree Drummond. She is known as the pioneer woman, and today she's showing us two easy recipes for a family feast. You've got a, a simple, easy pasta recipe. What are we cooking? Yes, so I am so into shortcut homemade ravioli. And what makes it shortcut is that I use wonton wrappers. So these are just in the store. And I made a little mixture of ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, lemon zest. Wow. And I just put a little, I mm. can't get too close to you guys, but put a little dollop in the middle of the wonton wrapper. And then I just take my clean finger mm -hmm. <laughs> and rub a little egg wash around the edge. Mm. And then take a second wonton wrapper and put it on top, line up the edges. And then you just want to press it together. Oops, I grabbed three. That's okay. It's, I'm doing this on the fly. And then just force all the air out. And honestly, if you can't make, make homemade pasta dough or you don't have time, this is such a great shortcut. I like that. And then you just can get an assembly line with your kids, make as many of these as you want, and then just drop them into salted water one by one. And look. All right, I love those. Little pieces of ravioli. Just Delicious. Fresh hey, and ready to go. Hey, Ree, can we, we only have a minute, but we want to get to that dessert. That, what is it? Ice it's box a, Ice box yeah. cake. Oh, yeah. Blackberry ice box cake. So the frozen pound cakes that we all know and love, I shave the top off, crumble it into crumbs, pour in butter. Very easy. And then just put this on the stove top, toast the crumbs. Mm. And then the cake that's left, you slice the cake into three slices lengthwise. I already started a layer, and it's cake, a mixture of jam, blackberries, and lemon juice, Yum. and lemon zest. Yum. It's so fun to use a frozen pound cake because then you cut that whole well, step. Oh, my gosh. Of, you know, it doesn't even look hard. Ree, Ree, it looks delicious. Something Savannah so, and I could make. We're happy. Yeah. All right. We you just layer it kind of like lasagna. All right. Cake, jam, cream. Ree, and then you wind we up. love you. We love you. We can't wait for your book to come out. Thank you for cooking for us. Uh, you can check out Thank her you, recipes girl. at today.com slash food. This morning on Today Food, we're so excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. 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 So Hi. great to be here. 99th. I can't Book, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been baking every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. Yes. Can you imagine a riff on the chicken pot pie? I love it, but it's, it's sweet, not savory, it sweet. right? It's a Can dessert. I ask you first, though, how's your leg? Did you my hurt, legs you all better. Yourself? You had a surgery? Yeah, my Achilles. Yeah, okay. Don't ever hurt your Achilles, please. Okay. Yes, but you're all good, okay. <laughs> yep, I'm all good. So, the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces. Mm -hmm. Add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm. three kosher salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon, and allspice, which okay. has a very nice flavor. Half a teaspoon. You can stir that up, Savannah. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan. Add two tablespoons of flour. Mm. Oh, yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. Mm. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, wow. Yeah, well, you. A little bit more won't hurt. And you cook <laughs> that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. really and then add yeah. this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah. yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to knows. get it like a thickened up sauce well, kind it'll, of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up in yeah. the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can and I stop then, Okay. Off. Mm -hmm. And then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Oh Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> he just added more. Spoon, Spoon those into a <laughs> pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. You see this kid? And this okay. is one okay. serving. So uh, You didn't put the pastry under, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on <laughs> oh, top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You no. Know? So here's a square of puff pastry, just like that. Can you pre buy that or? It's store oh, yes, yeah, it's okay. a store bought. You can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen, frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two. Mm -hmm. 
and put that easy. like that. And then egg wash. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, wow, just a softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs, really, really great. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. You not don't want to do okay. because you want this to to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. Okay, yum. And so delicious. A really cute uh, single-serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha, actually. Oh, my gosh. I would never these would make are that. awesome, by This is my happy place oh, right here. That's no, very impressive. You can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what that is? The Granny is? Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid to, an apple? This is a quince. It's oh. kind of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's yeah. not edible it's uncooked. Down. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Half yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm and about a quart of water. Watch Carson's gonna try to put bourbon in a that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is, you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean, and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, see? And you leave the thing in But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look the color they Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you no, put them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince, just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid. Mm -hmm. And is that the one, the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down, yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices, so you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, this, <laughs> <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. <laughs> That's a good bourbon too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know, yeah. my people. Okay. So now this goes right <laughs> into your baking dish. Mm. Okay. And all that will thicken up, and this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal, and you can just oh, I love that. Put this it's all just a crumble. Over the top. Yeah, oh. sort of a crumble, mm -hmm. all over the top like this. Had a quince yeah. in your life? You know, taste oh, it. You're gonna love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think, guys? This? So good. Yeah. Someday yeah, my quince will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, it is so good. We're having our first quince. Have you had a quince before? I, I grew, oh, no, you oh, I have not. Quinces. I've never I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year, too. Oh, really God. beautiful. Really Put good. this all oh, over gosh, the top yummy. and sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pick up Martha's book. It's yeah. fantastic. We and ran out of time. Book number, book number 100. Have you written your tell-all yet? It's coming. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be a good one. Uh, Thanks, <laughs> Martha. Then it'll tell some tales, Martha. And cranberry. So don't, don't forget the cranberry skillet cake. That looks so good. And the recipes are on the website. And fruit desserts is out right now. Delicious. Thank you, Thank Martha. You. Thank you. Mm. Great Martha Stewart. She's making one of her favorites. It's a classic fish burger. And with more than 50 cookbooks full of recipes, for you to say this is one of your personal favorites, I mean, it's got to be good, Martha. Well, I, I really like the fish hake. It's an inexpensive fish compared hake. hake. Huh. And uh, it's a member of the codfish family. And, and it's a wonderful white fish. And when you cut it up into nice little cubes like this, it comes like that. That's a, uh -huh. that's a fillet. Mm. Um, just is it like a halibut? I've never heard of hake. No, no, it's it's lighter than a halibut. Okay. Mm. Uh, and and as I say, less expensive. Breadcrumbs. Uh huh. Nice fresh breadcrumbs. So just mm. take a white loaf and grind it up in the food processor. Okay. Two eggs. Yeah. Mm. Really easy. Are those eggs from your farm? Yes, they are. Of course they are. <laughs> yes, they are. The, oh, the hens are laying really well right now because of the warm use, like, weather. By the way, can you use the boxed uh, uh, Italian breadcrumbs or panko or something like that? Uh, work, yes, or? you could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. I, but, I know you make uh, everything fresh. Though. But so this is a delicious and a little bit of cayenne pepper, which is very mm -hmm. nice. Did you catch the hake in your little lake out there? <laughs> no, no. Hake or? is a saltwater fish. Okay. Not a fresh How come you don't have a saltwater pond? Um, well, I'm so sorry, but in Maine I do. <laughs> okay. In Maine I do. In Maine you do. Oh, of okay. Of well, then don't apologize if you have one. Incredible. A teaspoon of salt. Yep. Some fresh.
freshly um, ground ch uh, chopped chives. Right from the garden, no oh, doubt. Yes, and uh, don't forget capers. Yeah, capers. Ooh, about are those crushed capers? A quarter of a cup okay. of chopped capers. Chopped mm -hmm. capers, okay. Rinse them in, out of the jar and then... Uh, How about some and, mayo? Are you going to bind this thing? Definitely. You're making like a crab cake, basically. It here. is. It's like a crab cake, but it's a burger. This because is amazing. Gonna, and here's the mayo. We have so our just, taster. Chanel's already finished. Oh my gosh, I'm almost finished. Oh, this is almost, phenomenal. What do you, what do you so good. think, guys? It's perfect. So good. So oh, Carson, wait until you try this. Why don't we eat more fish burgers in America? I don't know. Oh, it's, it's not that hard to make. No, no. it's not hard at all. And it's all. a nice alternative to red meat. Uh -huh. exactly. It is. Or chicken. Uh -huh. It is. And, or turkey. Right. Turkey burgers are good, too. They're one of my favorites. So this is a very nice mixture. Um, make the burgers. The nice way to make them uniform in size is to use a little ring like this, yep. like a biscuit ring. Okay. And uh, just take some of the nice mixture mm -hmm. and put mm. it in here, pack it. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to put this on parchment paper and chill it before I oh. um, oh, actually that, cook mm -hmm. the burgers. Look at that perfect burger. That's ideal. See how nice? Yeah. So I have, some, see it at home, I have some that are already chilled. Okay. Yum. And they're going to go why, right Why do we chill a, it, Martha? Why, why? A little olive oil. Why do you chill yeah. the burger? They hold their shape. Just hold oh, it, it together a little bit. Yeah, because the breadcrumbs and the mayo, it, it all Got it. gets mm. a little bit uh, firmer. It's a cold plunge. It's all the rage. And then just brown these. Yeah. Uh, and it takes oh, about eight minutes or ten minutes to cook. I gotta go back to the hake. How come I don't see hake well, at the, my you. local market? Is but it, you're not asking. You haven't looked. Oh, you have to it. ask for it. Yes, ask for it's it. It's there. What do they hold stuff in the back? No, no, they have the salmon. They have the cod. Right. They that. have the halibut. That. And that. Some of these. Just are asking for the halibut. Just asking for the halibut. Pound now. For the halibut. Just for the halibut. And now this is this one of the one of the garnishes is pickled onions. Yeah. So this is Japanese rice wine vinegar. Okay. A little bit of sugar and mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. It's like a sake. Almost. A red, a red mm -hmm. onion, sliced, mm. peeled and sliced, you make and it. just let that stay for oh a day or two, and look what happens. It pickles right up. Pickle. Wow. See how pretty. What other sort of toppings you like to put oh, on your fish? Oh well, burger? I like I like the onions. First, a little mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. They're not yeah, ready. Yeah, I'm just kind of. So you're not how ready. They really aren't. I thought they'd be no. sticky. This is a mustard apart, mayo, a, a mustard. buttered a buttered brioche bun, Ugh. mustard mayo. So add about a couple tablespoons of. Dijon mm. mustard to your oh, of mayo. Of course you would. It's so good. And the brioche get that bun. ready, and Carson, then put a couple Perfect. pickled onions I'm on. Idea. Carson, how pretty these are. Let me, while I have you, let me ask you just two quick business questions okay. here. Uh, book number 100, I believe, is in the workshop. <laughs> on biography. I'm, I'm running home right after this to to take more pictures. My hundred favorite recipes will be my hundredth wow. book. Wow. Oh, and we learned a little bit about you too in your uh, past. And oh yes, and a lot of a lot of historic you were a pictures. Never a Marine. Okay. <laughs> no. Always a Girl Scout. Okay, right. <laughs> yes, definitely a Girl Scout. And how about the Roku show, Martha and, Cooks? Oh, my gosh, we're doing that. Um, we have so many wonderful shows on Roku now. We They have my whole library, yeah, too. Yeah, that's uh, nice. On Channel 448. Mm -hmm. I live at 48. <laughs> Right. I lived at 48 well, Turkey Hill Road. Well, don't and tell I people your at, address, Martha. Well, I live at 48. She's, she's I'm not currently? Like, I'm not, yeah, two houses, both numbers. I'm going to edit that out. Yeah. So, like, don't edit ridiculous. it out. 448. Well, they don't know question. where it is. I'll take care of it on the West Coast, it's, but we're, you're in, in trouble now. It, it, it's, in, it's in Hudson, New York. No, no, it's all right, just keep telling people. <laughs> Has Snoop Dogg moved in yet? You're going to need his help uh, here. No, not yet, but he, yeah, his bodyguard, Tiny, is the Tiny, Tiny, of course. Martha, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you enjoying it? This is
Here to help us kick off the outdoor cooking season, who better than America's favorite lifestyle maven, Martha Stewart. She's out with a, a new book. It's a guide to all things grilling. It's called What Else? But Martha Stewart's Grilling. Yes. The 95th cookbook. Yeah, well, 95th book. 95th yeah. book. Lots of those are cookbooks. But grilling, it's its the season. The weather has finally gotten beautiful. Yes. And uh, and people really like to cook outdoors. I enjoy cooking outdoors as yes. well. Yes. Do you have a grill like this, a charcoal? I, or? I'm a gas guy. You're a gas guy. Because it's you? faster for me. Okay. I've got small kids. I'm just trying to get in and get out. Right. But I know you love charcoal. I love I love real hard charcoal, the kind the jewelers use. It gets up to 900 degrees. I like it really hot, and I really like pure. So I don't want use any starter. Don't use those starter fluids. Okay. You know, start with you know. But how do you keep your grates clean? I well, mean, your... first, of course, put your grill away clean. Every okay. time you use it, use a brush like this. Scrub that grate so it's nice and clean. Okay. You can use a little bit of oil on a piece of paper towel and a and a tong like this and yeah. clean your clean your grill. And then you cook. Now, this chicken has been cooking for oh about 20 minutes. You want chicken this is for the first the first recipe, you want the chicken 165 degrees. 165. Yes. You need your outdoor thermometer. Yes, you, yes. you have your little th instant read thermometer, and you just use that. All right, let's get then, cooking here, Mark. Okay, let's so this, this chicken. is chicken with green chili dressing. It is so delicious. Once it's cooked, you make a dressing of cilantro, uh, zest of lime, juice of one lime, olive oil. And we can make this dressing ahead of time. Oh, yes, okay. and you can say it gets, actually gets better ahead of time some scallions, some serrano peppers. That's your dressing. That's pretty simple. And, oh, it's so simple. How long do you marinate? Uh, no, you don't marinate. This is cooked on the grill, just oh. salt and pepper. Okay. And then you put the dressing on after it's cooked. Oh. And there it is. And everybody's going to have a taste. You're going to have a taste of this. You're going to love it. They're already this. tasting now. Oh, yeah. What's the verdict, now, Carson Daly? What do you think? Oh, I mean, come on. Chicken, Martha. good. What can't you do? It's amazing. Good. The next thing is the Korean uh, skirt oh, yeah. steak. That's the best. And now these are, it's sort of like a skirt steak, but it is a uh, short rib cut in the flank style. See this? See how beautiful I love this ribs. Is? They're my favorite to yes. cook on the grill, but so traditional ribs. Instead of the long forever. ribs, yes. This is cut in a, a, the opposite direction, and boy, is it good. This is marinated. And the marinade is soy sauce. Not marinade, no, no, marinade. Ma marinade. Marinade. <laughs> and it's, uh, it is rice vinegar, sesame seeds, white or black, soy sauce, scallion, a little bit of light brown sugar, and freshly grated um, ginger and garlic. Okay. You want to grate a little ginger? Yes, ma'am. How, uh, how much ginger do we use? Well, you just just grate it like that, yep. And it's you know, a lot. Go back and forth, yes. And then you Don't be afraid, it. Melvin. Just grate it. I'm grating it. Yeah. I'm grating it. Martha, is that enough? <laughs> yeah, that's good. And okay. put that all in there, yep. And then your short ribs go right in here. Those short ribs go right in here. And you put them on the grill. How long? How long? I do this overnight or okay. a couple hours before. So if you're if you're a late night, you know, if you you want to come home and cook, yes. these should be marinating overnight. What's the verdict on the short rows? Yes. My favorite. Yes. Really right. There they are, all Very marinated. Nice. Clean plate club. And then you just put these three minutes aside. I'll do that for you, Yep, Martin. you do that. I'll make myself useful here. Three minutes aside. Oh, yeah, nice and flat. Uh, yes, ma'am. And you can also use these protective oh, gloves. These have a little bit of silicon on them. So if you want to pick oh, stuff look up. Look at Guthrie helping out there. That's oh, right. Good. Do the we, got a, we got a burner over Five here. Five minutes aside. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got okay. about 20 minutes on this. Okay. Yeah. The others, yeah, do it that way. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah, I, that's I got pretty, there just in time. Pretty well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is served on lettuce leaves oh, with kimchi and the, um, the wonderful um, fermented chili sauce. Do you like that? And scallions and cucumber. It's and really this is one. so, so delicious. That's how you serve it. All right. What so do you think? I'm a big fan of uh, Korean And then grilled there. salmon is oh. my favorite because I love light salads in the summertime. And a grilled salmon, this is a salmon that's been overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. That's, that's, fine. that's That fine. is so beautiful. Look how nice. Use one of these baskets for doing fish. Cooking fish can be a bit intimidating on the grill. It, it, I yeah, find that it falls apart. Yeah, or, but this is this great, that's why you this have one great of those. basket. Yeah. Use one of your this yeah. is Martha Stewart basket. It is, but uh, but uh, you can find these in, uh, other brands too. What's in the salmon salad and really quickly? Salmon salad is the is the uh, salmon that's been cooked with a little bit of lemon zest. Always squeeze wow. fresh lemon juice over it. Flake it up. 
You want to flake it up or you can stir. I'll stir. I'll yes, there. And there's a great dressing. Do you like anchovy? I, I do in oh, moderation. Good. So there's, there's a dressing with olive oil, anchovy, a little mustard, salt, and pepper. Just pour that all over the whole thing. Whole thing, whole bottle? Yep. Okay. And then flake the salmon into big flakes. Al, oh, what's the verdict? This is terrific. Delicious. Like okay. a salmon dish yeah. Where'd you get here? these eggs, Martha? Martha those you those are eggs those right are fresh. at... You can find all the recipes today.com slash Martha Stewart for Martha's book. Yep. Today.com slash shop. We're back today, food. We're heading to this 4th of July weekend. We have called in the expert to sweeten the celebration. Martha Stewart's here. She's going to show us how to make a sour cherry pie with three different spins on the crust. Is that right? right? Exactly. Sour cherries can be hard to find in the grocery store, no? Well, they're, they all, it's a very short season. Okay. So maybe two weeks, three weeks at the most. All right. And most of them come from places like New York State or Michigan, and they're beautiful. They're like little rubies, oh. and but you have to pit them. Okay. Because otherwise, your family or your friends will break their teeth. They have already. These have already been. Yeah, pitted, this is so. this is a silly little pitter. Okay, that there's is a not better, the pitter you want. No, because there's a better pitter that I don't have with me, and it, it does multiples at, at the okay. same time. So, oh. this is but aren't they good? Today show pitter. We won't be. Using that. <laughs> okay. And so here is. The f it's the pits, exactly. <laughs> so this is the first crust with a nice fluted edge. Always make your pastry cold. Cold butter, cold flour, okay. cold water, and then uh, roll it out, keep cold it chilled. Heart. Fill it with the filling, which is sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of butter, and this is the crumb topping. Mm. This is, is this the easiest of the toppings, Martha, the crumb topping? Yeah, very easy. It's just butter, flour, uh, brown sugar, and a pinch of salt. And so you just crumble the crumble over the top of the pie, bake it hot, like in a 400 degree oven. It is so good. I love Let's a crumble. See. Yeah, isn't I love it great? So yeah, yummy. crumble, crisp, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But it put a lot on because it really does yeah. enhance the sourness of those delicious cherries. Okay. Now, here is a very cute topping. This is the solid crust pie. Okay. And this is, you cut the, you cut the a little, if you have a round cookie cutter, you can do that. Yeah. But you can also use a pastry cutter like that to cut the rounds. This lets the steam escape. Oh. And your crust will get nice and crispy. Do you have a favorite? Top, a favorite crust top? No, 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 I make all of these. Okay. All You're of agnostic these. when it comes to the And now okay. this is the most complicated. You roll out your dough and you uh, lattice top. Mm. The lattice top. Lattice top. Now, that looks intimidating. So you can fake it and oh, just put it over, put them one way and then the other way. But if you're very particular, you can actually oh, weave wow. the lattice, see? What's the hardest part about it? The weaving or getting the pieces to be Rolling uniform? it out, rolling yeah. it out, and then cutting it with a little pastry wheel like this. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, how's that? Would you like that pastry wheel? No, not so. No, there's no. no. Why'd you ask? Because you, you knew what she was going to say. Because Martha and I have been together a long time. There are, I there are, better, there are better pastry wheels. I'm just wheels. stirring the pot. Yeah. But, it, a but it food. works. It works. Yeah. Don't, you know. And so now remember, this one has to go way under here. Okay. So Because you're going to weave it. And do you bake, bake the pies off for the same amount of time regardless of uh, the, the crust topping? No, some of them take a little longer than okay. others. Like the solid crust will take a little longer than the lattice. But look how pretty when you really weave it. It's okay. really good. This lemonade is what this this Well, this is sour cherry lemonade. Oh. Very so you sour. can put your sour cherries make a make a uh, syrup a of, of the sour cherries. Well, that's good. And, and that's you mix it with lemon and orange and a little bit of mint and that is so good. Sour cherries are just one of my favorite fruits. Martha Stewart, you're one of our favorite people. And here, this is for you. Oh, Martha oh, made me cherry pie, y'all. Martha, these cute napkins. So cool. Did you make these uh, too? Yes, these are these are bandanas and then you can stencil the names on them. That oh. is so you cool. got your Martha, thank you. you go. Recipes to today.com slash food. <laughs>
And, uh, and then, of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered. Uh, before you put them on the grill, oh, and yeah. make sure roll, yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah, you know Al Roker, he's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a a little spray bottle. But get your your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm -hmm. And the condiments, oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here: bread and butter pickles, French mustard. Mm -hmm. um, this is the uh, you know the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite, mm. sour cream. Uh, you have um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic—a a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. So and bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? I wish you were here, Martha. Maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good for idea. one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so there let's it goes. Let, let that hey, Martha, cool down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog what what are your condiments what do you like on yours oh well let's let's get one right here here's a hot dog and on a buttered bun and I would put first I like French mustard so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on oh, I love relish mm -hmm. and I would put relish do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand it's called a Martha dog what? And, uh, and every place is a little bit Different from yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog, uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog, uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California in L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh yeah, Pink's yeah. I have. A, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not. I do not. I got Martha oh, Stewart. Well, uh, Come on. I think I think I think you should be working on that one, Al, because <laughs> those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have: pickles, and I love bacon on my. Too. Oh, wow. I'm put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. A good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call them when it gets really crispy, when your dogs get really crispy? Oh, snappies. These snap. snappies. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And I right. love those. Yeah, um, Raleigh's is famous for snappers as well as Rut Hut, Rutt's Hut is also uh, famous for snappers. Okay. Really? That you get, you know, snaps, snappers you put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, you fry right. it a little What's bit. What's happening to that then, grill? Martha, that's that's right. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, I just <laughs> opened it a little flame going on. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. All, right. All right, Martha, okay. thank you so no, much. No, this is good. <laughs> okay. Our guide this morning, the one and only Padma Lakshmi. Hi, everybody. Uh, Padma, of course, host on Bravo's Top Chef. Tonight is that hit show's 19th season finale. Chef's getting one last chance to compete for the grand prize. Padma, you've been there from the very beginning with the exception of that first season. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and it's been a really long, long, great ride. Yeah. I never thought that it would last this long, but I mean, you know, we're doing well, the show is better than ever, and yeah. the critics still like it, so I'm very lucky. And not to give away too much, but the scuttle, but is next season, you guys are going to do something you've never done before, is that right? Yes, we're gonna go international for the whole season. We have been international for finales. Okay. Uh, we've but the whole season to Singapore and Macau and everywhere else, but the whole season, is outside America. Don't ask me where yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's let's cook. Let's let's eat. What are we making this morning? Uh, we are making the healthiest dish possible. So I'm going to make a sauce, and it's a Balinese baked fish. I first had this dish when I was in Bali okay. over 20 years ago, and it's so simple. And the reason I like it is because it's very low effort. Okay. You'll see. We love that. It's very healthy. It's very high protein, and it's easy to make. Okay. You know, people always ask me how I stay. Lean, yes. as, you know, when I do all this eating on Top Chef, it's not easy, but it's eating like this okay. that helps after I finish. So we're going to start with onions in the blender. And to the onions, we're going to add garlic, ginger, okay. a little bit of tamarind paste. Now, tamarind, tamarind paste. paste 
is wonderful. You can get it at any good supermarket. It'll last in your pantry. It's going to add like a, a, ta a tart and sweet tang to it. Okay. Also, I'm adding toasted sesame oil All right. and cumin powder. Cumin powder. And a little salt to taste. That is really it. Okay. And about a, two or three tablespoons of water. Okay. Go ahead. We'll mix that up. You're going to mix that up. I'm not going to do it because of sure. the noise. But this is but what, what it, it looks, looks like. like. And what kind of fish are we using here? We're using red snapper, but honestly, you could use cod, you could use flounder. Any white fish. Any white fish. This is so easy. And, and they're already digging in over there. What's what's the verdict? How is yummy? it? It's yummy. Got a lot of umami to it. Oh, it's you love the umami. And love then the umami. I'm, all I'm doing is pouring this. That's and it. this is going to go into an oven at 350 degrees for 20 or 25 minutes. And that's all. Foil? And then we'll, no foil. Foil. Okay. Foil. So you cook it covered. Cook it covered. Right. And then when it's done, I know it doesn't look very appetizing, but it's so delicious. <laughs> all you're going to do is take fresh mint, uh -huh. oh, mint. And, and garnish, garnish. Okay. and a little bit of lemon juice. And, and this has literally like less than 250 calories a wow. serving. Yeah. And you're going to pair it with protein. bok choy? I am. I so. find cooking bok choy intimidating. Why? I, I don't know. It's probably because <laughs> I'm not a very good and cook. so good. So you want to get bok choy <laughs> and you just want to quarter it like this. Depending on the size, you can cut it smaller. Okay. And all we're going to do is dump this bok choy and That's blanch it, it literally bok for 90 seconds. And why okay? do you blanch it? So that it cooks evenly and you don't get weird spots when you're sauteing it. Okay. But you don't want to cook it for that long. Like, this is going to cook for literally 90 seconds, two minutes. And then you take it out and you immerse it in the cold. You don't even have to. Oh. I mean, look, if it's a week night and the kids are hungry and you okay. got to go, don't worry about immersing it. So you're not in a restaurant. It's, it's got fine. a little kick. So Yummy. this is what it looks like when it's blanched about 90 seconds. I have butter melting here. This is so easy as well. And again, all I'm doing is adding some Asian ingredients to it, which is the toasted sesame oil. What? See a theme emerging. Soy sauce. Well, it's going to go with that fish, right? Onions. Garlic. No onions, sorry. That was garlic. Garlic. That was ginger and a little bit of red chili. There's your bite. It's There's really your bite. Good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you just saute this up. And I mean, I literally made it in real time. I made this whole meal in real time, except for the 20 minutes that the fish took. Right. That's yeah. how easy it is. That's and really good. Yeah. I love it. I like the flavors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never yeah. thought I liked to do this choice. recipe. Yeah. 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 We don't cook a lot. Wow. She has a cooking even you, show. Savannah, I okay, have confidence that I can do this. Mm -hmm. So good. I can eat a whole plate of that box. Oh, that is yeah. Yeah. Really, good. really good. That's Thank really you. Good. Thank Thank congratulations, you. by the way. Yes. Thank you so Folks much. Folks who tune in tonight for the finale, what can they expect? Yes, they can expect a lot. We have three contestants who all have different styles of cooking. And we're in Tucson, which is a UNESCO food heritage site. Tucson? So I'm very excited. Tucson? Yes! 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 People. I loved it. That's my whole day. It was Yay, so Tucson. nice. Bob Lakshmi, thank you so much as always. Thank Congratulations. You. Today, food, summer does not have to be all burgers and hot dogs, you know, and it can still be delicious. If you are looking to bring more veggies into the rotation, 
You're in luck all the way from the Butcher's Club at Palm Beach's PGA National Resort. We've got Top Chef Season 13 winner, Jeremy Ford with some veggie recipes to spice up the dinner. Hi, good yes, morning. Hi, I'm I such guess a we huge should fan. change. I'm a yes. fan. <laughs> all right, veggies. Now look, I'm a little skeptical because I'm a carnivore, but this all looks delicious. But all this goes with carnivore stuff. Okay, so you're great. Good. So show um, me what you yeah, got. Yeah, this is one of my favorite dishes from the Butcher's Club at PGA. And we basically take these beautiful sweet Vidalia onions. Yes. Um, and we put them in a pot, okay. skin on. Oh, skin and on. And we have a little bit of milk, water in there. Mm -hmm. uh, some aromatics such as thyme, a little rosemary, some black peppercorn. You just put it in sprigs and Whee! all. I love that. Uh, yeah. How easy can that be? I mean, I'm into the ease <laughs> of that. Okay. And the reason we do this is because we're, we're basically poaching the inside of the onion mm -hmm. slowly. So we'll bring this up to a boil and let it cook for like five or six minutes. Okay. And then we'll just check it by, you know, pulling it out and doing a little squeeze. And what do you want it to be kind of soft? Just a little softer than a, a raw onion. Okay, so like great. five to seven minutes. All right, we got our tasters over there. Wow. So we'll get the oh verdict. Hey. Oh, we already got an OMG. This is wow. it's so good. Okay, yes. so now what happens? So basically now we take off the root end mm -hmm. um, without taking off my finger. Yeah, right? oh my, that's always tricky. You need those. And then we just pull the center out. So it's really, really oh, easy wow. once it's soft Yum. to pull this out, right? Oh, Take off you're the outside. Because we're going to stop. There what? we go. I know, right? So we'll pull all these layers off and okay. leave the outer two. Wow. And if you want to make it look cool, you leave the little top yeah, on. Yeah, that's neat. A little hat. Okay, and then we're going to stuff it with this yes. like potato salad yes, of some yes. sort. Yes, so, so in here is a little bit of horseradish, mm. some heavy cream, that's potatoes, you know, a light lunch. Oh yeah, I know. My goodness. <laughs> you said We didn't say it was a low fat. We just right. said it was vegetarian. We just said it was going to be easy and fun. Mm -hmm. So Yum. we stuff our gratin in okay. here. Yeah. Oh, it's a like gratin. Yeah, gratin. Oh my God. Or gratin, as we would say, Hozi. Exactly. Yeah. Hozi. I actually learned this from my mentor, <laughs> Dean Max, taught me this years and years ago. It's so. a beautiful recipe. Okay, yeah. then what, now what do we do? So now um, that that's stuffed in there, are you trying to stuff some? Well, I feel like this guy needs you to be get stuffed, okay, doesn't he? I don't right. want to waste my time here. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, I don't want you to oh, you know, so waste you, the onion. Not my time. I meant to say I don't want to waste this beautiful onion. I have all the time in the world. Oh, okay. love um, it. All right, let's do it. So then what, we roast it? So then we just pop this thing in the oven, let it get oh all crispy goodness. and delicious oh like that. Is and it then, so yummy, you guys? Oh, this is so, so yummy. Good. Fun, right? Like there's gratin, but you never had gratin in oh, an onion. Oh, horseradish. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. And then we bake that off and we roast it. So okay. So we can move on. And then you can serve it with this cream spinach. So how do we make that? Yes, the cream spinach is my so claim good. to fame. Uh, at the Butcher's Club and PGA, mm. this is our top selling dish. Oh, okay, wow. Everyone loves this dish. It's amazing. Even at Sovereign Seed in my other restaurant in uh, mm. South Beach, we run this dish. Okay. So everyone's had cream spinach, right? So simple, shallots, Usually garlic. Usually from a box, but... to be honest. <laughs> no! Yeah. I will come to your house and cook it okay, for you okay. so you never do that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to learn from you okay. right now. Okay, okay. good, good, So good. what are we sauteing there? So that's shallots, garlic, and onion. All right. Wow. Right? So you'll get that nice uh, base, oh which is kind of like the base for most cream spinaches, mm -hmm. right? We're adding a little flour. We're adding a little is flour. Is this a roux? This is a roux. <laughs> okay, you're hired. Second French word, <laughs> roux and gratin. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then we cook that out for like five minutes. Now it looks sure kind of dry and crumbly. Is that it's all dry right? and crumbly like until we go. Ta da! Mm. We add the heavy cream and let mm. that cook for a little while. Okay. What makes ours so cool though, yes. right? So typically you have your spinach and your cream, okay. oh which is this cooked down. Yes, and you already cooked your spinach. We already cooked our spinach in boiling water, shocked it in ice water so we keep that beautiful green color. But mm -hmm. what makes ours funky and cool funky. is tarragon, basil, and dill herb. Ah. So it gives you this all she, she knows. I mean, I mean, we're about to be finished over here. Oh. oh my gosh. But wait a minute, you take these herbs and you just put them in the blender of the food processor? Yes, and then also ice it. So yeah, so I forgot okay. to tell you, you gotta ice it before you oh blend it, that way it doesn't continue to turn brown. Oh, Because okay. you want nice bright green spinach like this. Okay, right? we're gonna put all these specifics. You're gonna share this recipe. It's of right? course. Okay, yes. The secret has been revealed. Mm. So the it has world that will know. You guys have a kit? Does it's that great. Have a kit? How do you make it so it's not too soupy? It's got perfect yeah. texture. The right amount of flour into your heavy cream mix. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna give you the perfect consistency. Okay. So I was like a little bit more just in case so it doesn't That's get great. too runny. Right? Okay. This is amazing. I'm glad oh, so you're enjoying. You're cooking it up, and then here's a dumb question. Do you then put it in the oven after this step? Yes, okay. if you want to. You could serve it hot out of this pot right here okay. onto a dish, but I like I like these little casserole dishes to get it really hot. Yeah, you know? hot, and then does it like brown off on the top or something? Could you put a little cheese on top? You could put a little, hey, you mm -hmm. know what? Let's put some cheese mm -hmm. on top. Oh my gosh. Let's go. 
Yeah. Listen. And then you bake it and off. Bake it off a little bit. Bake it off. Oh. It, yeah, maybe even put the broiler on. Yeah. Why not? The broiler. Yeah. Now we're talking. So, Guys, so what's underused. happening? Clean plate club. This is, I was just about to say. It's like, <laughs> I can't yeah. even miss the meat. Yeah, no. I was about to ask you, does anyone it, it, miss no. the meat? No. That onion is insane. Yeah. I've never had anything like it. Yeah. Okay. It's such a fun reiteration of our classic favorite two things, right? Graton, creamy spinach, but just done a little differently, right? Yeah. Wow. Phenomenal. Say yeah. Graton again. Graton. Graton. Sure. Graton. Mm. <laughs> Gracias <laughs> for yes. the Graton, <laughs> Chef Jeremy. Thank you so much. If you want to find these recipes and a lot more, go to today.com slash food. And we are back with today's food. This morning's guest, Kwame Onwachi, a James Beard Award winner. You may have seen him as both a contestant and recurring judge on Top Chef. He's also, by the way, opened five restaurants, all before turning 30. And now he's out with a follow-up to his acclaimed memoir. It actually is his first cookbook. It's fantastic. It's called My America, Recipes from a Young Black Chef. Kwame, so good to see you. Man, I'm, I'm so curious about how you, in this book, have taken your whole history, like from Nigeria to mm -hmm. the Caribbean to Louisiana to the Bronx, and how have this book has been just basically your lifeline. For sure. You know, it's my version of what... I found American cuisine as a kid. When you're a kid, you're not asking like, what ethnicity is this when you're eating food? You right. know, I know I'm in America and I'm eating something, so that was American food to me. So it shows a lexicon of how diverse American What do you remember is. about being in little Jamaica in the Bronx eating food that you're about to make for us today? Jerk chicken. I remember sitting on the side of the road with my father, getting jerk chicken out of a barrel um, and getting sauce all over my face. What is jerk sauce? What is jerk? So uh, jerk sauce, you know, it started as an act of like preservation, but it's a, it's a sauce that has so many different layers of flavor. Um, it, it starts with a marinade, yeah. and you marinate this, this chicken or pork or, or vegetables in this sauce, and then it's smoked and let's grilled. Get, let's get to it. So the, the jerk sauce, I always recommend making this from scratch. So I have a pepper sauce here. It's mm -hmm. pretty much a scotch bonnet puree. Um, we have thyme. We have... Um, a little bit of tamarind, we have scallion, ginger, garlic, and soy sauce, and then allspice, cinnamon, and bay leaf and clove. We're gonna put that in the blender, act yep. like this blender's yep. going. No need to do that. <laughs> well, then the, the sauce comes out like this. So I like Is it in make, like the barbecue sauce family? Is um, it? No, but you can make a barbecue sauce, which we're gonna do now. Okay. So we have ginger and garlic and onion sweating. You know, you add some ketchup to this, you add some brown sugar and then you add your jerk paste, and then you let this simmer for about 30 minutes until it gets nice, 
deep and dark like this. I was saying when I went to uh, spring break on MTV, we flew into Montego Bay and there was the weather was so bad, I had to drive to Negril and uh, we stopped on the street along yeah. the way and I had my first jerk chicken. And it's like a culinary thing I'll never forget. Your first real jerk chicken, Is it a right? street food? Is yeah, it's actually, it's actually a street food. Um, there's a lot of history in it and that's the beautiful thing about My America. It gets into the history of the dishes and why they stood the test of time. Perfect. So you got your jerk barbecue. You can blend it if you want um, to make it smooth. I like mine a little bit chunky. The difference between my jerk chicken recipe is I like to brine the chicken. Yep. I like to infuse the flavor deep into it. So like I got an overnight brine sort of thing? Overnight brine. Uh, you have your flavors of your jerk uh, paste in the brine mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then you'll marinate it, throw it on the grill. I love it. We're in the studio. You like to outside cook this, though. Yeah, because you got to add some smoke to it. You know. What kind and of wood chips do you like? I like to use pimento wood. Wow, never comes, heard of that. that. That, you know, grows the allspice berries, right. so you accentuate those flavors. Let's see our little chefs over there. What do you think of the jerk chicken? Plates are almost empty. Are you serious? Oh, now you don't. Come on. We, we, we got plenty. Oh, my plenty. God. Oh, my right. gosh. We need more. You know what's interesting? A lot of times jerk chicken, it's just, there's, it's too wet. There's too much jerk sauce. Yours is perfect because mm -hmm. it's just a little bit, mm -hmm. and it gives you that hit, you know? Well, so good. It, when you do it properly, like, it's such a refined dish, you know? What is doing it properly? What are the cooking tips on the chicken? How does it differ you from gotta, chicken? You got to smoke it. You know, you got to cook it in the grill. You gotta let it marinate. You got to make your jerk seasoning from from scratch, mm -hmm. and that's how you build those layers of flavor. Is this what you're gonna make it? You got, but we have to plug the family reunion because it's so yeah. Cool. The Just family say reunion. what it is, everybody. So the family reunion is this, uh, you know, four day food festival at the Salamander Resort and Spa. We get some of the best chefs together in the Ooh. country and food professionals mm. and, and entertainers as well. So um, it's it's really exciting. Tickets drop today, everybody. Okay. Of course they I want to see all of you oh at the God. family reunion. <laughs> oh, gonna be good. What is the side dish, by the way? The side dish is sautéed uh, cabbage and carrots. Oh my God! How's that, guys? Good. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. Amazing. You know what we need? We need rum punch. <laughs> a little rum punch. Oh, I got well, <laughs> well, congratulations on everything, man. Thank Looking you. forward to Thank the family you. reunion. The book is beautiful, too. Yeah. So much. Uh, great writing, great recipes, and this looks delicious. So there's a good lesson on jerk chicken. Kwame, thank you. That recipe, Yum. by the way, is on our website, today.com slash food. And for the cookbook, check out today.com slash shop. It is awesome. Hello. Dawn Burrell oh made a name for herself competing in the long jump at the Sydney Olympics. Look at her. Back awesome. in 2000. <laughs> and the next year, she won gold at the Indoor World Championships before she tore her ACL and decided to turn to another passion, which was cooking. Well, yes, as I... a chef, Dawn's been nominated for a James Beard Award, wow. a finalist in season 18 of Top Chef, and set to yes. open her restaurant late August Yay. in Houston <laughs> later on this year. But first, she's here to show us how to eat like an Olympian. Hi, Dawn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, I guess you're just a star at everything you try. <laughs> I mean, I've been told to do the best that I can in every endeavor, so. Nice. Oh. Try to do. Okay, yeah. just like you do. We are not Olympians at anything except for eating. <laughs> eating yeah. We actually excel at that yes, sport. Yes, we do. So awesome. what, we want to start the day with breakfast. Right. You say there's three things we have to have every single day. Um, so I like to say that you should have some nuts for, for really rich proteins mm -hmm. um, and nice proteins and good fats, okay. you know, for your body. Mm -hmm. um, raw fruit and um, and some grains that are also rich so um, and will this? help you. This is a chocolate granola. Chocolate Ooh. granola. Um, yeah, and so this is granola? sort of fun on mm, on sure. vanilla, yogurt, mm -hmm. or, you know, in, you know, on top of a, maybe oh, like wow. a little mm. chia seed bowl mm. or something like that. That's great. Beautiful, mm. yeah. And then this is a power smoothie. Delicious. This mm. power smoothie is filled with protein, antioxidants, and good fuel for your workout in the morning. Okay. okay. Um, and it's a good grab and go, like breakfast, uh, the, the, you know, that you can take to the track mm. with you or too. you run with little banana. Whatever. Yeah, some bananas Blueberry. in there. Dates, uh, blueberries, and, um, and almonds. Love mm. it. It's delicious. That's oh, when you good. use the protein. And then mm. avocado, you say start your day with some good fat. The, exactly, so if you are a savory breakfast, person um, this is a way to go as well because you have some nice protein from the this is a chili paste with um, oh, almonds yum. in it yeah and so, Al swears by yeah. this is this it, the paste it, you the, love that's the Trader Joe red yeah. chili yeah yeah yeah. yeah and then you add a little bit of um, almonds in there and then yum. you have some oh, wow. a protein packed uh, breakfast for for yourself mm. with, oh, with, with some nice fat have a little avocado yeah, toast, have a little avocado toast. 
Now, okay. once we move to lunch, uh -huh. one of the things we, we never had when we were in Tokyo were some greens. Oh, I haven't, had a, <laughs> I haven't eaten anything green in three weeks. <laughs> help us out here. Well, well I'm going to help you out with that yes. because we all need them, right? Um, so here we have um, a vitamin-rich salad um, with um, great antioxidant qualities also because it's a turmeric and vinegar dressing. Mm, I mean, it's ginger dressing. Mm. And um, what you'll do is so. you'll... I'm gonna top this off yeah. a little bit. That looks beautiful. Um, um, there, this is a versatile dressing. You can use it on chicken or fish. You and know, you it put has seeds on your salad too. Mm -hmm. Yes, which I think it's interesting. Seeds are also like rich, rich oh, fats, wow. good fats for the body, Yum. and um, and also some fiber. Some yeah. fiber that's, that's great delicious. for uh, That looks digestion. so good. Let me let yeah, you do thank this you, thank one. you. Yummy. Sorry. And for um, dinner, you swear by this chutney. This is, um, yeah, this is a go-to chutney. It is Trinidadian um, as far as culture is concerned, but you can also puree it and make it into a glaze that is functional for, like, roasts and things like that. Mm -hmm. What we did here is we just used it um, as a chutney or a relish on this chicken. It's called cuchilla. Oh, wow. It's made, it's a little bit spicy. It's made mm -hmm. with mangoes um, and ginger, this amchar, um, amchar masala, which is a um, mm -hmm. very lovely peppers. spices, oh, this garlic peppers lovers. and everything like that. Dawn, thank you so much. Oh, my thank pleasure. You. Thank you. You can find the recipes at today.com slash food, and she's back on the third hour uh, to tell us how to turn an athlete's cheat meal into a breakfast of champions. Oh, by the oh, way, right. speaking oh. of champions, yes. our champion weather person, Dylan Dreyer, a uh, little birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, I will, uh, we have a special uh, bubbly drink. Oh, yes. Here. You get cider. So, Thank, you for, you Thank you for the cider. There you as go. I, You're going to drink in, while you have apple cider? Yes. yes. I bring in 40. Wow. You're only 40? Big, that's 40? it? Wow. <laughs> I was Hinode wanted to when I say happy birthday, too. But... <laughs> How old are you, Hinode? Are you 21? No, you better not. No, no. <laughs> I can't drink. Hinode's just a baby. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Happy birthday, Dilly. Happy birthday, Dilly. Happy birthday, Dilly. Happy birthday, Dilly. Dilly. We love you. So much. Wow. You guys are so sweet. Cheers. Cheers, Dilly, Dilly. We love you. Yeah, like like they need a, a reason to drink. <laughs> I know. are back with today food and it is inspired by a trip to London so we thought Nicholas Holt would like to stick around <laughs> plus he said he's never had a popover so we've got Gail Simmons our not culinary a, expert not as you know it as a that's popover that's right. right food writer permanent chef, judge on top chef now in its 20th season 16 former competitors from all mm. around the world head to London facing off for the ultimate world all-stars title. Gail joining us now to make a traditional Sunday roast using lamb. Gail, good yes, morning. That's right. Good, good morning. morning. Good to see you guys. That's right. So London. So London. Top Chef, this is the first time in 20 seasons that we did our entire season overseas. We lived mm -hmm. in London for two months shooting over the summer and fall. Must have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Okay. <laughs> and most of all, I have to admit, like, I, I love British food. I think it gets a bad rap. But first of all, London is an incredibly global city. <laughs> yes. But I really love Sunday roast. What was the Sunday Roast is a beautiful tradition, I Isn't think. Isn't it? And I'm Some, very excited about yes, this. Yes, and it really goes well with Easter, obviously, mm -hmm. coming up, or Passover, right. or whatever you may be celebrating right now. Um, this time of year, spring, so I decided usually it's done with a big beef roast, right. but I'm making a leg of lamb. Okay, okay. so this is a boneless butterfly leg Boneless and butterfly. Can you ask Thank your butcher you. to get this? 
You like absolutely this. can. Yep. It's very standard. Okay. And I'm going to start yeah. with making the marinade for right. it. So you're um, doing mint, which usually people uh, you know pair with lamb. Exactly. Mm. It goes so well. I'm using lots of fresh mint. I'm going to throw it in a bowl with lemon juice. And okay. Ali, you're going to help me out okay. here. So in the bowl, I'm going to dump. You can dump in lemon zest, okay. garlic, and a little Aleppo pepper. You can use just chili flakes mm -hmm. if you have. Let's season it up. Is that spicy? Mm. They, they are spicy, but Aleppo has a beautiful, mellow chili okay. flavor. And then, Alex, you want to whisk. Okay, I'm going to pour in some olive, olive oil. oil. Yeah, okay. I got salt. This is absolutely delicious. Yeah, oh, good. I'm glad you like, dig in. Like, got to yeah. eat it when it's hot, especially Thank the you. popover, which, Nick, you will know as Yorkshire pudding. Well, is it is it the same, essentially? As exactly what? the same. Okay. But they just cook them in these crazy tins that we'll get to in a minute instead of in one big dish. Okay. okay. So Perfect. you've got your, your marinade. So I've got my marinade. Now, pour it over my leg lemon, but not all of it. Save a little bit of it, which will act as the extra sauce later. That's okay. gorgeous. All Thank right. you very much. You've done this before, Once sir. Once or twice. And how long do you let it sit in the marinade? At least four hours. Hours, you can put it in the fridge, you can leave it overnight and okay. cook it the next day if mm -hmm. you want. You're going to toss it around and make sure that it's nice and coated. Okay. Leave it, cover it, and then you're going to take it out, pat it dry, and throw it right on a very she, hot oh, this grill. Is heavy. Gail, should it's you let, big. Should wow. you let the, the meat get to like room temperature before you throw yes, it Yes, you want to take it out at least 45 minutes and actually you want to season it because there's no salt in that marinade. Uh -huh. But we'll do that as we go. Right. Um, Season with salt and okay. pepper. Mm -hmm. You want to pat it dry after it's after it's come to room temperature, and then you're gonna let it grill. I've never cooked lamb. Do you want a little redness uh -huh. inside, or do you? A you little, but I find, I think and this is personal, that unlike steak that I like really medium, mm -hmm. rare, rare, like totally pink inside, lamb can be a little tougher, a little chewier. So I like to cook it slightly more medium right. than okay. medium rare. So now we're and gonna then make I make my popovers, pop exactly. Which so is important. In one bowl, I have flour and oh. salt. In mm -hmm. the other bowl, I have four eggs. I'm going to whisk with, I like to add a little maple syrup. I'm oh. traditional, but I'm Canadian. This is ah. what I was excited about, because I took a bite, and I, I love Yorkshire pudding, but this has got a nice sweetness to That's it. That's right, a little crust. bit of sweetness. I like this Some addition. melted butter. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Cook, so he's taking notes. I am. I oh, love oh, that, I love that. I, I feel it's very, um, oh. it's serendipitous that we yes. have a Brit to eat my, uh, my Sunday roast. Usually you make <laughs> it with beef fat, but this is a, a yes. wonderful. Yes, I'm thing. using melted butter here. Um, mm. And then I'm just going to oh. put my dry ingredients whisked in it's like a very moist this pancake. Is like, that's yes. exactly it but like when they pancake. come out of the oven they're actually oh huge gosh. as you saw earlier um they and they deflate a bit but there's so much tell them about the shrinkage jerry <laughs> <laughs> like a precisely <laughs> all right so i mixed that all up put it in a pouring tin now here's the key to yorkshire pudding okay. the key to popovers is you want to preheat this pan this is a fancy popover pan you don't mm. need it you can use a muffin tin okay but you can see that there's already sizzling melted butter mm. at the bottom because i preheated it take it out of the oven and immediately while it's still hot oh. pour in three quarters of the way because you don't want to pop over too batter much that's over. right because they so get huge over. yeah <laughs> and that's that is the name um so you pour it in and then you put these in the oven about 15 to 20 minutes at 425. This and they delicious. come out so puffed up and, and serve huge. Immediately. Serve immediately. I mean, already they <laughs> have. They I mean, but yeah. they are so good. and I'm delicious. And they go with the <laughs> Are you happy, I'm, Nicholas? I'm very happy. I'm glad We're I stuck around. And then you have the extra Much better than the crickets. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yes. Yes. Mm, mm, this mm. is. How's my Sunday right. roast? It's delicious. incredible. Oh. Is this the best interview you've ever had? <laughs> it, it certainly is. I'm very happy. It's oh, taking the bad taste of the crickets out of my mouth as well. Nicholas came to play. I like that. All right. Gail, thank you so much. Nicholas, thank you so much. And thank for you. these recipes, head to today.com slash food. On today's food, yes, chef, I'm lucky to get to go behind the scenes at some of the hottest restaurants here in New York. The idea behind the show is not just my love of food, but my respect for the chefs who pour their hearts and souls into it. So while we hang out and eat and drink, we get to learn a lot more about what inspires the chefs. We also get to take a little peek back into the kitchen, of course, where the magic happens. First up, Wraps from the team of the famed Musket Room, north of Houston Street, is now co-owners and chefs at Wraps. 
just down the block. It's a century old space where the famed Parisi Bakery used to be, but now they're going for an Italian French vibe while paying homage to the rich history of the place. Take a look. Today I'm gonna to take you inside exclusive access to a place where two powerhouse female chefs are absolutely killing it. And they're doing it with the help of a nearly 100 year old oven. This is Raf's, come on in. Baby, How did you guys meet? We met at Musket Room three years ago when I was hired as the executive pastry chef. Executive chef Mary Atia and executive pastry chef Kamari Mick worked so well together at the famed Michelin starred Musket Room restaurant, they teamed up again with Raps. How did your guys' sort of relationship in the kitchen work? It was just the two of us. We would be listening to true crime and Broadway and we just bonded outside of food. You guys bonded over true crime we, and Broadway? <laughs> yes. Bread, Broadway, Broadway. And, true crime. and true crime. Raf's serves up French Italian cuisine and fresh baked goods in a location with a rich history. Even brick ovens called hearths from the 30s are still used today. They put these ovens in the back that we have running now. These same ovens that are same here? Same ovens, mm -hmm. yeah. I've almost, been here almost 100 years? Yeah. Yeah, what it's makes incredible. It? Knowing that the hearth was the heartbeat of the neighborhood, they were here making bread. We wanted that to be the first thing people saw when they walked in the restaurant. The chefs co-own Raffs. They partnered with the owners of the Musket Room, twin sisters Jennifer and Nicole. Raffs is named after their grandmother, Raffaella. The sort of, you know, empowerment that's happening with women in this space, you know, not just your partners that are sisters, elevating women, that's a really cool part of this story. How important is that to you? I think it's really important. I think that we come to work every day not thinking, oh, we're women doing this job, but it would also be irresponsible for us to disregard the role we play and the example we set for younger women wanting to do this and, and see that we can be successful and accomplish our goals, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important. I'm a girl dad, I, mean, I got three yeah, girls. We, you can do anything. These stories are important. They really are. How did you get into cooking? And in your sort of Lebanese background, how has it influenced what you do here? Well, the I think the, of the, the career of, yeah, I think I grew up always, I loved eating. I grew up in a family where we celebrated food. My, my background was Lebanese, so I was always eating pita and hummus, which were unique at the time, but now obviously everybody enjoys those. I would go to lunch with grape leaves in my lunch bag and, uh -huh. and tabbouleh and people would be looking at what I was eating. And, you know, I felt a little bit like an outcast, but also very proud that I was enjoying this great food and able to teach, you know, my friends about it. So you weren't like 10 year old super chef? No, no, I just think it was never, taught to me that it could be a career. Uh -huh. I would watch, you know, food shows on the Food Network and be enamored by it, but not ever think, well, I could go do that. Right. So I think when I moved to New York, it really, it, it spawned this interest and it was like, oh, people actually do this as a career. Right. And you didn't even like, I mean, there wasn't a pastry chef in your family, right? I mean, where did that come from? My parents are really great cooks. My mom is from Brooklyn. My dad is Jamaican. Amazing cooks, terrible bakers. My mom would only buy like the roll-up cinnamon rolls. I know them and have them. <laughs> um, like the proof and bake, and then she would overproof them and then underbake them. So it was, it was a little bit of a mess when it came to baking in my house. And then I decided to ask her. I was like, "Hey, can we bake together? I would love to learn." Number How old one, are you at this time? I was twelve. Even, even, if even that. So we started baking and. I got really good at it. We went from cake boxes to from scratch, and then I started selling things in school. Um, cakes, cobblers, really? pastries, yeah. <laughs> to not only steal- You're hustling. I was hustling, I was always an entrepreneur. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Made fresh today, yeah, perfect, I can tell. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> fresh out of the oven. God, that's good. <laughs> what are we gonna eat today? Because you work on a morning show, I've brought you out a candied orange only croissant. It looks too good to eat. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Not too orangey. That's delicious. 
for our croissant, we use a Karen Spring flour, which has a really nice caramel note to it. So details, it goes into it's, the details it, and the trial and error it's and the, the work. Yes, yes. We we ate a lot of croissants. Right. Yeah. That's the tough work. It's the hardest part of That is the hardest of part of the gig. Yes. Do you ever just Somebody's eat one bite and go, oh, that's just garbage. <laughs> that's, that's terrible flour. I'm, there. I'm at this point now where I cannot look at a bad croissant. <laughs> This is our Carte de Musica, French ham, jambon de Bayonne, and some Parmesan, rosemary, Sicilian olive oil. Very crispy, flat cracker from Sardinia. We cook in the oven as well to give it a little char. It's one of our popular dinner time snacks to start the meal. Oh my, my god, that was crazy. Yeah. Right. I could eat this the for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Yeah. Be honest. To it. Does it bother you guys when people come in like me and, and they just, like, they're not paying attention to detail? And they're just ordering food? Because every detail obviously means so much. You drove through Sardinia and here it is. Like, <laughs> you know, it pierces the heart a little <laughs> when, when, when you see somebody not. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. The pastas hit the table and then you don't see them eat it yeah. for 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> This is our spinchone. On the bottom, as you can see, this crispy, nice crust is our house-made focaccia, tomato sauce, anchovies, and cacio cavallo cheese. It's a Sicilian pizza, more or less, and we believe they were probably cooking these in the hearth 100 oh, years ago. So a little bit of homage years. to yeah, yeah. the flour. You need another log in the fire, Chef? I love it's behind you, <laughs> and your spidey senses tell yes. you that the 1935 oven is down a log. <laughs> Mm. Wow. Yeah. Can we cook something together? We will. We'll light you by the fire. We're going to show you the spinchone. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, mine's not finish. so bad. No, I think. James Beard nominee. I, I think you're actually hired. That thing is huge in there. Oh, yeah. It goes 14 goes feet all, back. 14 but we, feet back. So then we do one more layer of cheese. OK. You can, like practice boxing here. Yeah, we, we can only hire shorter people. <laughs> hey, it's a beauty. Can I get You're a doggy hired. bag, please? Can All right, on to my croissants. All right, we got a croissant. A croissant? No? No. No, good job, good job. Ooh, la la. Roll like the wind. How are you with piping bags? Ooh, you might have exposed my new fly zone. <laughs> so I've we... never done a piping bag in my life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. C'est magnifique. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Mm. Appreciate it. This is incredible. Of course. I guess we're doing here. Come back soon. Tell you what, their food really does taste better out of that 100-year-old hearth. Next up, C is in Charlie. Three Korean-American guys who grew up in Atlanta opened up their dream restaurant. The food's fantastic, but their story is even better. I headed downtown to find out why it's so hard to get a table there. You are in for a good one today. Taking you behind the scenes. They're closed right now. C as in Charlie's the name of this restaurant. And they're doing stuff, man, that nobody else is doing. Come on in. 
David, if I walked into this restaurant and I've never been here before, what's the vibe? So as soon as you sit down, even before you get a water, you get a sake shop. Let's go! So that's our little gesture of saying, let's be friends. In Korean, there's a saying, um, 한잔해, which literally means let's have a drink. Are we going to be friends? Right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> hey, cheers. cheers. Thank you so Come much there. for having me. That's a great way to start your experience oh, at yeah. Ciaz and Charlie. An experience quite unlike any other. The guys describe their food as part Korean, part Southern, a reflection of themselves. All born in Korea, but raised in Atlanta, Georgia, where brothers Steve and Eric met David and became lifelong friends. So after high school, you guys all had jobs in the food business, different types of jobs. What did you do? So as soon as we graduated high school, we came to New York for college. And okay. We actually all worked in the restaurant as a part-time job to me. Okay. Right. Um, so we were a server. At the time, also Eric was a server, so we all started out as a server, but eventually went At to different restaurants, time. or you guys worked together? So we started off at different restaurants, but first, like, manager job, we ended up at the same place. So he was a, he was a line cook. We were, like, assistant managers, like, captains. So mm -hmm. we worked together. At the time, it was difficult to work with friends because it was our first time working with friends, mm -hmm. but uh, we that's when we actually had, had a shared dream and shared thoughts that, oh, maybe we should open up a restaurant one day. And tell me about those early conversations of what the three of you thought if you had an opportunity to open up a place like this. What did you want to achieve? What was important? We definitely wanted to uh, show our identity through our restaurant because we thought we were very unique in the sense that we're partially Korean, but partially from Southern states. So we really wanted to bring in th that to our, our restaurant. So at Sears and Charlie, what we do is that we serve co uh, Korean tapas with a little bit of Korean and Southern flair. The guys grew up in the food industry. You can taste the foods and flavors from their childhood in their cuisine. Most of our dishes ties into our like history or like childhood memories. We wanted it to be like us, like us right. three. It's right. like you're meeting you when you come in here. Right, yes. Yeah. So for example, Salisbury steak, our childhood memory of our parents used to bring like leftover hamburger patties to home and cook us a Korean food with it. So chef wanted to kind of infuse that memory into and develop and make a dish out of it. Seoul was very steak, mm -hmm. like Seoul as in Korea Seoul. So with that, right. nice play on that. Yeah. We usually eat it with rice, but because we wanted to have a little southern kick to it, we serve it with the grits on the bottom instead. Oh, and we get to try some. And there was food in your family. You were always sort of in the food business. Yes, uh, our parents used to own a diner back in Atlanta. So we were always exposed to this kind of like a restaurant industry and you know, we we're always, I mean, he was always cooking because he's the big brother. So yeah. I was always cleaning the dishes. <laughs> what do you remember about that diner? Diner, uh, just being very hard. <laughs> the work? The work, yeah. Our parents used to always come home really exhausted and yeah, one of the things he, uh, Eric used to do was just cook, things. cook, you know, just a small thing for them to mm -hmm. make them happy, like, you know, cheer them up a little bit. Right. <laughs> Chef, did you always want to cook food? Yes, uh, I mean, I was exposed to just cook for my brother while my parents were working, so at that time, and then I was kind of getting interested in cooking and also being a chef, and in that sense, I always want to take my path to being a chef. Do you remember the cooks at your parents' diner? Did you have an interest in the kitchen? Did you go back there and watch, you know, short order food get made? Yes. What does C as in Charlie <laughs> stand for? Where'd that come from? So as an Asian immigrant, the uh, letter C and R is really hard to pronounce. So back in the days, our parents would always say, C as in Charlie, R as in Romeo over the phone or when they make communication. So, we were debating between the two, but R is in Romeo, I don't know, it kind of sounds like Italian restaurant at that right. point. So it was going to be R is in what? R is in Romeo. Oh, Romeo, yeah. Yeah, and I, we thought that sounded Italian, like yeah. an Italian restaurant. It's New York, restaurant. you don't want to do that. <laughs> so we decided to take C as in Charlie, so that's the name behind it. Everyone that comes in, they ask us, oh, so which one of you is Charlie? No, it's right. Charlie. It's such a cool name for a restaurant. Thank you. <laughs> Their recipe for success includes a cool vibe, fun dishes like popcorn chicken, and a dessert shaped like a bagel. You know, usually bagel is the first thing you have in the morning, but at our restaurant, bagel is the last thing you're gonna have. It literally looks like a bagel, but it's actually a manaka wafer uh, filled with cream cheese gelato and a homemade strawberry jam inside. I love that. Yes. Can we try some food? Oh yeah. Yes. Really? So, These are fluke ceviche. Oh, beautiful. 
Fluke and Clementine from Jeju Island, which is like the Hawaii, Hawaii of, of Korea. Korea. Yeah. Steve's parents are in Jeju Island at this moment. Um, right. So it's so like they're sending you Clementines in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like one of the ways to kind of express our feeling yeah. of missing them. Instead of a FaceTime call, you could eat this. <laughs> you put you right with them on that island. It's known to drive men's stamina. Oh, can I have a straw, please? <laughs> All right, what's next? This is a sake that I share with my favorite guests, my regulars, usually. All right, let's go. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Let's drink the whole thing, huh? Oh, my God. This is like discovering long-lost relatives. <laughs> oh. oh. Chef, you're missing out. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. So this is the popcorn chicken? Yep. Yes. Double fried, so it's extra crispy. I've never had anything like it. It's like your version of a fried chicken. Yeah. But it tastes different. It's unique, you know, delicious. We call it KFC cream fried chicken. Next, we have the shrimp toast roll. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, I could see you doing 400 of these a night. Oh, yeah. These are one of the very popular ones since we opened. It looks like a carbonara, right? Wow, I can smell it. Wow, that's delicious. delicious. This is gonna win you a Michelin star. Chef, delicious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do you have here? This is our Salisbury steak, and uh, on the bottom is our Greer cheese grits. Oh my gosh. So we swapped out the rice for the southern connection. Yeah, sure. Wow. <laughs> that's incredible, <laughs> Chef. Wait, what's the cheers again? Sorry. Kombe. 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 On the menu, a popular kid-friendly Korean dish. They say it's a staple, like PB&J. Ooh. Here is our mushroom bimbap. Whoa. Wait, this is the childhood yes. peanut butter and jelly play? Of course, now it's more than a peanut butter and jelly, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's magnificent. So we'll make that together? Yes. All right, let's cook, let's chef. Go, right? All right, we're gonna make some bibimbap. Uh, you have fancy mushrooms. Pickled shallot with dill, butter, minced garlic, and a poached egg. Great! I mean, that looks beautiful. And now, crack the egg. Very gentle, so you don't pop the egg yolk. Wow, that's like perfect timing. Thank you so much. It's like five to go. <laughs> oh, man. Was that good or what? Coming up next, an old school Italian eatery with a huge wait list, and this place is beloved by celebs.
We are in Greenwich Village, and we're gonna see the Pope of Greenwich Village food. That is Mario Carbone. We're gonna sit, we're gonna talk, we're gonna cook. It's like a time portal when you walk through this door. I can hear Sinatra already. Come on in. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. What's it like to sit in here after 10 years? You know, where did this start? This started um, with the idea that what if Italian American food, this food that I grew up eating, loving, um, being me, what if I took all of my training and my knowledge from being a kid and my love for this and put it towards refining it a little bit. Take all I have um, and, and really bury myself in the theater of it all and, and make it something that's a really beautiful work of art. Do you ever sit back and go, God, I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to refine those meals that I remember as a kid, but like now you've done it at the highest of levels, you know, in the country, certainly here in New York with this spot and all the other spots. Do you ever sit back and go, God, I can't believe I actually did it. Sometimes, sometimes you, you get you get some some moments where you're just like, wow, I, that's I can't believe Great. It, it's going like that. Or or you're sitting in the dining room yourself and you're watching, you know, the the theater, the, magic the, the show, the show take place in front of you, se seamlessly, beautifully, um, and and like, wow, this this thing really worked. It feels like a movie in here, and I feel like I'm immediately transported into a scene of Goodfellas or into an era, into a time, especially in New York City, in Greenwich Village. That was the whole idea. How do I take basically Ray Liotta's 42nd scene in the back of Copacabana? Yeah. From when, when they open the front door, they get hit with the music, right. the smell of the food. The waiters are coming by, the waiters it's chaotic. Are coming by. There's like a random flambe happening in yes, the corner, yes. it just happens to be happening. People are yelling, they're bringing in a table, making yeah, way. Yeah, excuse me. Like the, the, the tray of desserts is way too big for the size of the hallway, so you just gotta kinda, excuse yeah. me, like, and it's it's all part of it, right? The bar is way too small for the number of people we have, so, so then you're compressed in this little environment. Right, you wanted to take that vision and make a cinematic experience in a I restaurant. Needed, I needed to extend it for six hours, right? You get a perfect 40 second scene that they spent all day right. working on that lives forever. I need to give that to 250 people over the course of six hours. Wow. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Right, it's a lot more than just the food. I yeah. Mean, you're, now you're concerned with the textures, the, the everything on the walls. It's a, it's a play set, it's, mm -hmm. it's a theater set, right? We are, we're the actors, the customers are the changing element of it, right? So every night we put on the same show, the exact same show for a different audience every right. night, right? And we're cats on Broadway. Right. Like that's how we think about it. That's how you have to yeah, think about it. Yeah, but you care. It. Not saying that the Broadway actors don't care about the people in the seats, but you care about these patrons that are here. That's why they keep coming back. That's why they're uber famous. You've created um, a home for uh, at least, or, or this is the best play running, like, you know, well, as you with know, the tender love and care. As you know, the Italian table is a consummate home base, right? Whether it is your family or it's someone walking in the door, it's, hey, can I get you something? You know, like the Italian table is home for everybody. And I think that, that this is the extension of the Italian American table. You know, we, I want this to be a functioning museum of the Italian American food culture, right. home culture. Right. So you can witness the, the woolly mammoth that was the Italian American in 1958. Chef Mario Carbone opened his celebrity hotspot 10 years ago. Now, it's nearly impossible for mere mortals to get a reservation. There's this whole celebrity factor in here. There's Jay-Z sitting in the corner any given night. I mean, that's part of New York and it's part of the uh, allure of it all. But how do you feel about all of that? It's hugely flattering, right? I mean, because the people that we're talking about can make a call right. to go anywhere right now and get in the door, right? Like, th their people will call somebody and they'll get in anywhere. So I think that for me- Why do they want to come here, do you think? Anonymity is really important to us, like that, that everyone kind of has, gets their own experience and nothing's interrupted and we, something we preach here and make sure that you know, each table, whether they're a celebrity or they're, they've saved up to have, spend their anniversary here, are treated equally. But there's a million Italian restaurants right even around here. What makes Carbone stand out so much? I think it's the sum of all its parts, right? Like it, there's, there's so many people and parts that make up a restaurant, right? It's, it's an old business, you know? It, it takes a lot of hands, a lot of buy-in. We have an amazing group of people that have basically been here since day one. 
Um, we put a ton of care into the food. We buy the absolute best ingredients. We try really, really hard to give you dinner as the show every night. Mario's vision comes from his upbringing, raised in a traditional Italian-American family in Queens, surrounded by home-cooked food. Who was cooking for you growing up? My mom cooked every night. She's a fantastic cook. Her parents were born in Italy, and they were sort of amongst my first babysitters. So I would be with them and invariably in the kitchen where they were cooking all day long. I was always in the mix. Carbone's magic has spread to Miami with a restaurant and star-studded pop-up called Carbone Beach. So we got a plot of actual sand on the beach in South Beach. We put up this huge tent, made it as luxurious as possible, and really turned the, the, the show of this restaurant that we've been talking about. I was about to say, about. are you thinking cinematically when you set that, you know? Yeah. What is it like when you walk in? Is it like a, is it cinematic in a movie and yeah, a script? It's, it's, yeah, it's an over-the-top Carbone meal that takes what we do at Carbone and just amplifies it. It's Frank of the Copa of the 60s. You sound like the Martin Scorsese of food. <laughs> Ricky Tonelli is Carbone's day-to-day -day face, a larger-than-life personality. Ricky takes care of everybody. Can America meet Ricky? My AKA daughter. the face. How long have you been here, Ricky? Since day one, yeah. I can you whip you up a little things. something, something? You know, we'll bring out a couple of classics. How's okay. that? Carbone classics like spicy rigatoni. Oh, come on, Ricky. The world famous spicy rigatoni. Ride. Beautiful. You know? Look at that. Buon appetito. Grazie. That's delicious. You sausage. get the sausage, right? Get, of course, you get the bite of it. With the tortellini, there's a pinch point. You have to pinch them together. All right, let's learn how to cook it. Let's do it. You are going to get a special pass today. Hit the Carbone Kitchen, where a few people can say they've been and actually cooked in. About to rock it. All right, chef, what's the first step to the tortellini? OK, first step we've already done for you, which is Thank making. You. <laughs> you're welcome. Making the dough. Sheet it super, super thin. These are the things that people at home can make. They can make a touch of Carbone by making it. 100%. Here's our filling. Two different ricottas. This is sheep's milk and cow's milk. Salt, pepper, thyme, nutmeg. Put a little dollop here, drop of water to adhere it. And then you're gonna pick it up, roll it into a half moon, give it a little pinch. Bring the two ends together here. This art, they're so thin, it's crazy. Just right in the water. Right in the water. How come you don't ask Siri to set a timer like I do at home? <laughs> And then the sauce is just melted butter and water. This is our Sunday sauce, bolognese. Same mix as the meatballs. That's one order. I think a couple of these are mine. How, how, do, how do they look to you, Yeah, chef? I think maybe that one. <laughs> you can tell. Uh, the one that's like, uh. That is literally the perfect bite of food. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Thanks for having us.